mug, guys. <laughs> Bang, and we are right. in. Let's go. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome in to Poker House of Dallas. We've got an epic live stream for y'all tonight. So happy you're here to join us. We are getting started right off the bat right here with Kitty Kuo taking down the first pot of the night. And guys, we are here in the booth. It is me, Mr. Nick Morgan. I am joined by Hayden Fortini. Hayden, how you doing tonight? Doing great, man. Really excited for this game. Uh, I'm excited to see these players mix it up. We got special guest Kitty Quo in the house. Really excited to see her mix it up with these players and um, yeah, see what happens. Oh yeah, and I don't know if uh, if our viewers heard me a while ago, but Kitty met Frankie out in Vegas playing the WPT 2550 live stream. They talked about coming out here, and she said we got to play big. She said if I'm coming to Texas, we got to play big. <laughs> And uh, Poker House has obliged. They put together an epic lineup to play some 10 quarter tonight. This is going to be a crazy game, I think. For sure. She's uh, she's raising the stakes. Um, a lot of these players, though, do regularly play a 10 quarter 50 stream. So some of these guys are custom to the stakes. Some might be taking a shot. So it's going to be, you know, I don't think anyone's going to be shy. I'll say that. It's probably oh, yeah. putting the chips in the pot. You love to see it, and I'm wondering about our table mic here. Should be good. Are we getting it? And I'm thinking first hand of the night here, or excuse me, second hand, I guess, would have been would this be an open from Mustafa and a defend from Jaywin and Yao? And let's leave a check through on the flop. And now Mustafa is going to lead on the turn with his bottom pair. Not a great card for Jay Wynn. He was probably feeling pretty good about his nines on the flop, but decided to let it check through and then takes a bad one on the turn. And interesting to see Yao raise here. No doubt. He likes his 10. Probably thinking Mustafa would have bet a lot if he had a jack on the flop. Yeah. Um, yeah, he might think that Mustafa most likely picked up some type of draw, straight draw, or flush draw. So he's trying to punish those hands and get get the max value no doubt i'm with you and i feel like that's one of the reasons poker has gotten so much tougher in recent years these hands used to feel like a very natural call just based on the strength of your hand mm -hmm. and now people are thinking way more about how their hand compares to what their opponent likely has and then try and control the action by for example putting in a raise there puts mustafa in a really tough spot yeah for sure you definitely get value from from draws and um and also if you're going to call a bet on the river then you know you can you can um, put the raisin on the turn. No doubt. We'll get our, get our full screen going here for you, and we are ready to rock tonight, guys. We've got 38 of you in the chat. Welcome in. Shout out to everyone in the chat. we got some regulars here. Knock, Jack Peterson. Oh, yeah. I saw Jim Coyle, Poker Monkey, Captain Underpairs. Tammy, what's up, everybody? Thank you for being with us. Look for this evening to be fun and action-packed. We got a nice little crowd. So did you know how Jay Wynn, uh came to be in the lineup? It was super last minute. So I met him a couple weeks ago. Uh, I went down to the lodge post-Christmas, played, played some poker down there, and then met him. He said he was going to come in a couple weeks. I said, hey, you know, we stream big on, bigger on Fridays, you know, maybe a little smaller than what you're used to. And then I saw him at Choctaw yesterday, and he said, I said, hey, we may have a seat open because the guy may have to back out. And then he said, uh, if I back tonight, we'll see. So I said, okay. So a guy didn't end up showing up, whatnot. And then I texted him this morning. He's like, no. He's like, it's a long drive. I didn't, get enough, I didn't get enough sleep last night. And then all of a sudden, Jose Montes came through, and then a couple other people came through. And then he texted me all of a sudden. He's like, I just got convinced to drive an hour and a half. Seat's still open. I'm like, <laughs> yes, let's go. So, so here he is. Yeah. yeah so here he is. Shout out to, uh, to Jose for Jay Wynn, another well-known name. I think I remember seeing a YouTube video pop up recently about him quitting a high-paying job to try and play poker for a living. 
I do remember seeing that. Did you watch that one? Yeah. He, I he remember was, watching part of it. I can't mm-hmm. really remember. It was several months ago, but definitely seen his name floating around in the live stream game. Yeah. he. I know he's, uh plays a lot in Austin on the streams down there. And um, apparently he has his own vlog. He's uh, looks like he's affiliated with Poker Coaching. Dot com, so definitely making a name for himself in the poker world. And we're happy to have him here. I don't know if they're playing the seven deuce game. I've seen it folded multiple times. Uh, they have played it the last few Friday streams, so I'm going to guess that they're not playing it. Yeah, that's a little strange. I'm kind of surprised by that. Yeah, because Yao uh, would definitely not fold seven deuce. I'll (laughs) tell you that. (laughs) He goes for it every time. Yeah, from what I hear about Yao, I'm kind of surprised that he's folding it even if they're not playing the seven deuce game. You know, maybe he's coming (laughs) in. He's just feeling out the players. Okay. Yeah, but I definitely see Yao get in the mix. Um, Interesting hand here. Looks like Kim limp call blind versus blind. OFC ISO raised, and she's check calling this flop. It seems pretty normal so far. It's kind of a huge raise by OFC. Did it go twenty to one or twenty-five to one fifty there? So I think that the fifty straddle was on. Oh, so okay, I think he gotcha. Just three X'd it. Okay, she called for twenty-five more. That makes sense. Um, that makes and sense. looks like the turn's gonna go check check. Surprised to see OFC stab here in the river. Um, I think that Kim has played has a lot of check calls here. She's gonna have, um, you know, fours, fives, and deuces, and she does check call. She's gonna win a nice pot. Yeah, a little bit surprising to not see OFC continue on the turn, though. Yeah, maybe he didn't do it um, because he doesn't have a spade in his hand. Yeah, I mean, he does improve this hand, though, and he has literally no showdown value. Seems like it could be a reasonable time to keep trying to represent those spades. And it would have put Kim in a tough spot there with her four. Yeah, and also after it folds to Kim and the the big blind there and she just limps and then calls, she probably has less suited hands. I know she had one this time, actually, but she's probably raising most of those and then calling with some more offsuit hands. Yeah, but Kim will mix it up. Um, Sometimes she does play stronger hands more passively to trap aggressive players like OFC, so she's definitely capable of having a lot of different hands, but I agree with you. And I saw someone in the comments asking, which one is Kitty? That is Kitty right there. <laughs> yeah. Game messer. She dressed up for tonight. She did. Looking sharp. I, I was following uh, some of her updates on social media. She was flying out from Vegas. Yeah. Looks like she just got a new place in Vegas, too. Pretty oh, sweet. Okay. Nice. Yeah, maybe somewhere around the Palms place, and it's overlooking the Strip. All right. Pretty cool spot. That's awesome. So it looks like uh, Jay wins opening up with Kings here on the button. Kim calling in the the, the blind with uh, Ace-9 suited, OFC. Playing the seven deuce. Here we go. I guess we still can't make a final decision about whether the seven deuce game is on. <laughs> I'm gonna guess no because Kim's folded it twice and Yao folded it. So <laughs> fair enough. I would say no seven deuce game. So he's just taking a flop here. Yeah, OFC likes to get in the mix and play a lot of hands. Um, doesn't surprise me at all to see him in the spot. And what a turn here for OFC. This is a really bad turn for Jay Win. He can't think that this turn. Man. This turn helped OFC at all. Yeah, exactly. Super disguised. And if Jay Wynn knows anything about OFC, um, he would know that he's very aggressive, very capable of check raising this turn with a lot of different hands. Um, and he's going to be in a really brutal spot here with this Kings. Yes, he is. I have a feeling this might not go well for him. Yeah. Welcome to uh, welcome to Dallas, Jay Wynn. No doubt. He <laughs> knows that OFC is capable of having a lot of draws here. Yeah. Probably also thinks that OFC would be likely to check raise the flop with a lot of those front door draws. Right. And also a lot of like two pairs and sets on a draw heavy board. I think he would expect OFC to check raise. Mm-hmm. So very. Um, yeah, that's actually what I meant to say. I'll just break there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he might think that maybe OFC, you know, check call the flop with hearts or picked up some type of draw, maybe even picked up some type of straight draw on the turn he is going to make the call i don't blame him at all yeah he so didn't really, even hesitate very long there it's, if the river comes like a brick it's going to be a really brutal spot for uh, for jay win yeah big card for him right here yeah and this is a really rough river it doesn't really change anything at all all the draws miss um i mean if i'm if i'm jay win i'm i think i'm just going to pay ofc here every time he he deserves the money yeah <laughs> this spot OFC, very tough player to play against. Um, 
he makes a lot of great bluffs, a lot of uh, great calls. He's made. I've seen him make some great folds. He's he's definitely a feel player, um, but he has a very good feel for his opponents and situations. He's extremely difficult to play against because, you know, he mixes up his range well. He has a wide. He plays a wide range of hands. He's just a really difficult person to put on a hand. Um, and this is a perfect example of it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you can and just have randomly have seven deuce here. Oh, and Jay Wynn is in agony. Yeah, and I would not blame him for paying off here at all. Yeah, I don't either. I think that's what's most yeah. likely to happen. And just a really good board for OFC to go for it. Yeah, and we're getting going here already. We already got a over 6K pot. Yeah, and if he makes this call right here, it's going to be up close to $10,000. Yeah. That's got to be one of the biggest pots in live stream history here. Yeah, it's it's up there for sure. Oh, yep. Jay Wynn is in agony. The look on his face thinking, did I really just drive up for this? Brutal spot <laughs> for Jay Wynn. 10K pot right off the bat. Yeah. But he's got to be thinking, like, mo I think most players check raise the flop there if they flop two pair. Mm -hmm. And then there's just no way he thinks the deuce, like, connected with uh, exactly with OC, which is... I'm with which you 100% really, really right brutal. there. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm paying him here. And then OFC is also the type of player, if he check raise the turn with, like, say maybe a hand like queen jack of hearts he could even j shove this river for value mm. so i think you potentially beat like a few value hands oh he and he fold. lays it down oh my gosh wow what a hero sick fold there from uh absolutely very impressive very surprising very impressive um i guess he just thinks a lot of people a lot of players aren't taking that line as a bluff but oh, he wow. doesn't know ofc OFC is definitely capable of it. That time he happened to have it, and uh, it was a good fold for uh, for Jay when it worked out. So classic case of not knowing your opponent, paying off yes. big time. <laughs> I think if he did any study on OFC, he's going to pay him there. <laughs> what an epic spot, epic and, fold. And you know... You couldn't hear the table talk, but he said, I want to call because I know you're capable of bluffing right now. Mm. Oh, so he does know OFC. Wow. Well, what a fold. Um yeah. Props to Jay Wynn for finding the really tough fold there. No doubt. Chat going nuts. He yeah. will fold, no doubt. No doubt. Jay Wynn, well what a play. play. Yeah. I think he lost the minimum in that situation. I mean, mm -hmm. that's a tough, tough spot. And we got um, seat three is uh, Joe Sebring in the mix. He, From what I know of him, I've only seen him play PLO. Um, he played the, um, the last PLO stream here. I think he had a pretty good session. Um, he plays a lot of PLO games around town. Um, definitely likes to give action, play big pots. So I'm interested to see how he's going to play Hold'em, how he's going to mix it up. Um, yeah, it'll be fun to watch him watch him play, but I definitely, you know, he's not scared to put the money in. So another action player in the mix here. Kings? Yeah. What? Not a bad point. And we got action. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Nock was just telling us that... Uh, we needed a table mic on, and we have got action. Eric was here in the booth, working his butt off, trying to get that fixed for us. Yeah, shout out to Eric. Wow, it's and so much working. better to talk with a backtrack. It is, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you can actually hear what they're saying. Yeah, it feels like we're just talking into the ether when there's <laughs> nothing going on. No doubt. What seat is Frankie in? I actually I haven't he's got to seen... be in seat nine. Yeah, he I hasn't made an appearance yet, has everyone he? Everyone has sat down. Yeah, apparently he, he ran into some traffic on the way here, so... He should be here shortly. I read a book on body language, and then you know when you were counting your second look at you, you had all the symptoms of positive body language. Oh. So oh wow. <laughs> and Jay Wen, apparently, coming down in his decision to body language as the deciding point. I want to know that book that he's reading. No doubt. <laughs> it's obviously uh, paid for itself there. Yeah. And I gotta That's think fine. that if he has, if he's implementing that into his game, this speech play right now is also a part of the strategy. Yeah, for sure. And maybe he's, <laughs> he could just be trying to get into OFC's head a little bit, you know, which is definitely, which is funny that he's doing that to OFC because it's usually something that OFC is very good at doing to his opponents. And um, Frankie has arrived, sitting down in seat nine as we speak. 
Ready Let's to go. get into the mix. Which means he actually arrived 15 minutes ago. Yep. Right. So very interesting here. Uh, Joe, first hand, he's playing. He's defending the straddle with queen seven off, and he's leading three ways on the 3 3 8 flop. That is pretty interesting. Yeah. His opponents have nothing, but that doesn't deter Yao, who makes the call. OFC lays it down. Oh, looks like maybe Joe check raised the flop. Looks like the graphics might have been a little off there. Interesting. Well, I really like that play. Joe's getting in the mix already. Yeah, no fear. Yeah. Probably well, thinking with him being the defender of the straddle, he's going to have way more 3x than these guys. Absolutely. Yeah. If he knows anything about Yao, which he's played PLO with Yao, he knows that Yao's aggressive. He's probably C betting very wide. It's a good spot for him to just put in a small check raise and take the pot down. Love the play there. Yeah, no doubt. Not only does he get Yao off the best hand, he's, he gets him off of a hand that has like a ton of... Oh, maybe that's OFC. That had the ace five suited? Yeah. So OFC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he gets him off of like a ton of backdoor equity. Yeah. There's so Love many it. cards that he wants to continue and make a play on. And if you just, let's say, reverse float because you're thinking, I've got more 3x and I'm going to make a play later. Right. You give him a chance to make a play on you instead Absolutely. of just doing it right now. Absolutely, yeah. Love the heart coming in first hand. Check raising. Sounds oh, like I think j has got a nine-month-old. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's we fun. got an 18-month-old ourselves. Nice. Yao getting right back in the mix with the 6-3 suited. Yeah, Yao flops j -Win here. j -Win does have a, a hand that... That's a lot of good turn cards. Yeah, interesting to see him check here. Um, curious to see what he's going to do. He does just check all. A lot of good turns for him. Mm -hmm. That's one of them. Yeah, great card for Jaywin to represent. So it's kind of an example of what we were just talking about on the previous hand, though. He didn't. You know, he didn't take that opportunity on the flop to do something tricky, either C bet or check raise. Right. And gets, then allows Yao the opportunity. Yeah, he allows Yao to check back his three on the turn. Yeah, but this is a great run out though for Jaywin in. For sure. If I'm Yao, I I'm really having a hard time finding any bluffs for Jaywin. Yeah, for sure. It's a great Just, run out for yeah. him. If the river comes a brick though, really it could go check check or it could go lead hero lead call. call. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And you just kinda give him a chance to get to showdown. Yeah. It's only three struts of excuse me, three streets of batting post flop. Yeah. And if you give up one of them, you know, you allow him to check back the turn and now he's only got a hero call once. Right. Yeah, I agree with him. Interesting, I probably would not have taken that line, but it worked out. Yeah. Worked out really well. For sure. And I think it's nice to have a handful of of um, speculative combos like that in your check float range, but I don't do it very often. Yeah, I'd rather make yeah. a play right now when I have the chance. Right, either check raise or just C bet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Bet the king turn, you know. Exactly. The over cards, a lot of, but it's just it's it's cool. There's so many different ways a poker hand can be played and played out. So, I think we're gonna see a lot of different examples of that tonight. No doubt. Yeah. And Yao getting right back in the mix here. And I think we're gonna see. Yep. See OFC raise it up. And we get our first good look at Frankster there. There he is. Next gen poker. The hot commodity here in Dallas. Some of the largest poker social media accounts in the world. Yeah, very impressive what they've done the last couple of years. No doubt. They hadn't even YouTube channel. They didn't even know how to play poker a couple of years I ago. I know, it's incredible. Now they're all very solid players. Yeah, they're yeah. great. They're playing ten quarter games, yeah. making videos, moving up in the world. Crushing, crushing everybody. Inviting Kitty to come play on Yeah, shout out to Frankie with the connection there. So Habib is coming off a really big win um, I don't know, from a previous stream, and he's uh, he's excited to uh, to be here, get in the mix tonight. Love Habib; he's one of my uh, favorite players to play with. Always has a good attitude, win or lose. Mm. Definitely, it's not afraid to mix it up, make some aggressive plays. And here he's going for really thin value yeah. with his nine. This is epic. And Yao might look him up. All the draws missed. Um, I think Yao does not like that ace. He did just get bluffed, but he mm -hmm. does lay it down. 
Nice hand for Habib. Yeah, unfortunate to see him fold that one because then you think maybe the value bet's a little thin. Yeah. <laughs> He's not going to call with that. Yeah, he thought about it, though. He did. He, he did it, think about it. <laughs> and Habib definitely capable of blocking there. see several players with those yellow wristbands on, which means they are, are partaking in a little drink drinking, tonight. Yeah, we got a few on too. Yeah, yeah, we're having a good time. <laughs> we're having a good time, time here at Poker House Dallas. Friday night, biggest stream yet for Poker House. Got some special guests here, Jay Wynn um, and Kitty Quo. And some local legends here. No doubt. Did you notice that I was getting trolled in the chat? I did not notice that. You see this person you. commenting under my name, Nick Morgan, local legend? <laughs> <laughs> that is not me. That is That's someone who decided to make an account with That's... my name. Wow. I always shout them out, too, because it's an epic troll. I think they deserve credit for it. That's when you know you made it. You know, someone is impersonating you. Impersonating you, you yes. <laughs> It's so probably you know, a buddy or something. When you know you're big time. <laughs> It may or may not be me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so you're just right here next to me. <laughs> no, no, it is a little suspicious that they said local legend and then you immediately said it yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Gave it away. <laughs> so interesting hand here. Uh, Jay Wynn turning a double gutter after Limp calling the 7 5 suited. Um, OFC is done checking with his, with his six. Goes out and bets a turn. I'm um, interested to see if Jaywin is going to check raise here with his equity. He does just check call. Very interesting decision. <laughs> and he's really engaging in the table chat with uh, with OFC. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. He loves getting in the mix. I think we'll probably see OFC check back here. It's hard for him to get called by much worse. And uh, Jaywin definitely has some nines in his range for check calling turn. Yeah, it looks like gonna he's going to lead. lead. Rep the nine. Yeah, nice play. And OFC is going to snap call this. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell already that he called. <laughs> Maybe the wrong player to do yeah. that too. <laughs> yeah, OFC is like the, all the draws missed. So I actually watched a really um, epic hand between OFC and uh, Chris Cashman, where Ooh. Chris Cashman led the turn with an open ended straight draw. I want to say the board was like. Uh, the flop was like nine six nine five three turn ten. And Chris Cashman led the turn with Jack ten, or Jack eight. I'm sorry. So he's open ended. OFC raised with Jack ten after turning top pair. Chris Cashman three bets the turn mm. to set up the river shove, the pot size river shove. And OFC, before he calls the turn, he goes he goes you he goes you're raising to set up the river shove, and he calls. Oh and, the, and the turn the he does make trips on the river, which makes the call easier, but. The river's a Cashman 10 goes and for Cashman it? rips it. And oh, he snap calls. man. So he literally told him that he knew what he was doing. <laughs> and then and Cashman he does it. it anyways. And he it's just like one of the funniest hands I've yeah, seen. Yeah, that's epic. Yeah, very epic. Cashman is uh, quite the prodigy. He's a prodigy. Chess uh, chess prodigy. Oh, um, was he really? Yeah, apparently he was like grandmaster level, like 2,500 rating. What? Yeah, that's what he told me. Um, oh, my gosh. He said he's retired from chess. <laughs> <laughs> that is epic. Yeah. Honestly, when I hear someone that had that kind of a rating in chess, that's way more impressive to me than like being a high stakes poker player. Yeah. I mean, very... in poker, there's just so much um, mystery surrounding like how good players actually are. Mm -hmm. It's hard to get like really accurate results. It's, you know, so much variance in the game, obviously. And then even at the high stakes, sometimes the games aren't that tough. Yeah. You know, exactly. but in chess, as you move up, it becomes intense and oh, insanely yeah. tough. You know you're competing against other players who are studied and, and just as good as you are. Right. Wow, that is so impressive to me. Yeah, I always say that's why people don't play chess for money is because you know you usually know right away if someone's better than you. Exactly. You know, so. I always poker. say that games that are like that are hustle games. You yes. can only get action from hustling someone. Ex exactly. <laughs> I enjoy the fact that poker is it's not necessary to hustle to get action. Oh no, because everyone yeah everyone thinks they're the best. It's yeah. natural you know natural human ego. Yeah, and everyone has a chance. Yeah, absolutely. And there's people that believe that they're luckier than you, even if they know that they're not better. Mm. <laughs> Great point. Yeah. 
So we got some some really big hands here. Uh, Habib and Joe uh, limped with suited aces. Yao picking up the king. Uh, OFC calling with the king 10 suited. So really surprised to see Joe fold ace seven suited on the button here. After it goes raise, call, call. That's a hand I'm definitely always calling with in position, closing the action. Mm. Was this a squeeze here. from the blind? Yeah, it looks like Yao uh, ISO raised from the blind to 500 um, after after Habib and Joe limp for 100. Oh, they both limped. Oh, yeah. we got double straddle on. Double straddle, yes. Oh, wow. We're already up oh, to the 5,100. Yes. Oh, we'll my see, gosh. We'll see plenty of that tonight. I'm There's going to be a lot of that tonight. Yeah, Big game, we'll, boys. We'll probably get to 200 tonight at some point. Wow. Yes. Yeah, I ran the tracker for like four hands. There's a couple of interesting hands. Oh, boy. All right. <laughs> Big pot energy, and boys. Yeah. Oh, just open ripping 2x pot here on this flop. Yeah, wow. That is so bold. Yeah. What do you think about this play? Um, I mean, I think it is extremely ambitious. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Both of my opponents could easily have two pairs or straights on this board. He does block the straights. So he blocks the king. He blocks them. That's true. Yeah. He's almost. He's protecting he's almost, his hand too. He's almost never drawing dead. He's he's got the king of diamonds though. Um, I mean, he could conceivably get called by hand like queen jack. Maybe. Yeah. And I think he's going to get, yeah, Habib's can't not call here. So, yeah. Nice hand for Yao. It was a big pot to take down. I would think the main hands that he's looking to get called by that are worse than him would be like nut flush draws. Maybe like yeah. an ace jack, jack of diamonds. diamonds. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. which has a lot of equity. Yeah. yeah. For sure. It's definitely um, a little bit high risk to put your entire stack out when your opponent can have so many combos that can beat you. Yeah, two opponents, but. Yeah, for 2x the pot. Two opponents, exactly. Yes. <laughs> but in fairness, they are two opponents that do play a wide range, so it's an interesting, interesting spot. What would you do in that flop? Do you lean towards checking there against two players, or would you like that small? Kind of depends on the opponents. Man, I think I'd probably lean towards checking. Yeah. That's a yeah, tough spot, I, really. I like checking, but I also think it does depend some on your opponents. Yeah. Um, if you feel comfortable navigating... I think betting small can make sense. I agree um, with you, but yeah. I would be worried that these kind of opponents are the ones that I don't want to get left off of my hand from. Yeah, absolutely. They're definitely uh, capable of it. Yeah, I'd probably lead more against more straightforward opponents. Yeah. <clears throat> and Kitty uh, just limping behind Habib here at the Ace Queen. Very interested to see that. Um, and she has a very disguised hand here mm -hmm. on the spot. No Unfortunately for her, though, both her opponents don't have anything to continue with. Yeah, and I'm not sure what Kitty's overall game plan is like. I haven't watched her play much poker, but me personally, this is a part of my strategy. <clears throat> and a larger, um, I guess, an overall game plan that includes limps. And I do want to be able to limp, so I feel like it's necessary to limp strong hands sometimes. Okay. That's interesting. It's not as much part of my strategy um, when a player limps in front of me, mm -hmm. especially a loose player. I'm more happy to ISO, um, especially a hand like Ace Queen. So, interested to hear hear you say that or that that's your approach. Um, but if you do have aggressive players behind you, it could definitely make sense. I think yeah. it really depends on the table dynamic. Well, once you get that first limper in there, obviously ISO is is a huge priority most of yes. the time. <laughs> but the fact that you do want to over limp sometimes, and then you can lay that trap right there where when you guys get ISO'd, especially with loose players down your left, that original limper is almost a guaranteed call mm -hmm. from completely dead money. Right. So, so then, then you, you get, get all of that squeeze extra in. squeeze ability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and well, you get I'm some, with you on that. Get some pretty cool back yeah. raise spots. Mm -hmm. Look at this hand, Lee. Oh, boy. Yeah. Yes. Kitty opening up big here to 150, gets a call from Joe and Mustafa. Was the 50 on here? Or just the 25? I, I want to say it was just the 25. Yeah, big open. Yeah, she might have thought the 50 was on, mm -hmm. in fairness. I, I, if she does bet here, I do like the bigger sizing on a draw heavy board. She doesn't have the ace of diamonds, and she's against two players. Mm -hmm. um, she gets called here, looked up here from Mustafa. Tough turn card for Qu Kitty. Um, Mustafa's definitely going to have a good amount of kings. I wouldn't mind to see her check here and, and trap some of those missed draws, get some value from uh, turn this hand and bluff catcher. She does yeah, check. Sure. I like that too. Yeah. And Mustafa wisely checks behind. So now if you're kidding here, do you go for the check again and try and get Mustafa to stab or do you try and give target a nine or? 
I think this one's pretty opponent dependent. Yeah. Like against guys that I think are going to try and value bet me really thin, mm -hmm. then I'd probably check and give them some rope so they can bluff and just bet with most of the hands that they're going to call with when I right. bet. Um, against someone like Mustafa, I'd probably just bet and try and get called by a nine or a yeah. seven. And he's thinking about this. I think this is a little bit of a posturing here. Yeah. It's a pretty him. big bet to think about calling yeah. with queen high. It'd be sick to see him raise. But yeah, it would. But that would be Kitty probably doesn't a little think strange. He's, he's checking back a king very often. Yeah, it'd be kind of like only representing like 8-10 or maybe pocket sixes. Yeah, I agree with that. And a uh, nice hand for Kitty. Now, obviously, Jay Wynn and Kitty have never played against any of these players. So how do you think their strategy coming in tonight changes, if at all? Well, I don't know. Apparently, Jaywin was talking to OFC saying that um, even though he folded those kings, he knows that OFC is capable of bluffing. So he has to have watched some streams with OFC in it or done some homework. Um, oh. And uh, it sounded like talking to Kitty briefly that she's watched some of the streams and done some studying as well. So, okay. Yeah. I think they might be a little more prepared than we think. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> I would like to think so. Yeah. Sometimes it's a little strange to me when I see like how hard um, people that claim to be professionals in other fields like prepare for their craft, mm -hmm. and then in poker it's very sloppy sometimes. Yeah, people are lazy. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. Oh, I'm a pro, which means I can sleep all day yes. and <laughs> show up and play. Yeah, sit on my cell phone and, and win look money. At Kitty, <laughs> she's picking for up a massive raise here with the ace king suited. So it looks like her strategy might be to. Um, take advantage of the loose play by just raising mm -hmm. massive with her with her big hands. Yeah, and 450 feels like maybe a little much to me, but... That is very big. I just believe the 25 is on. Uh, if the graphics are correct. That's the correct. Yeah. For 25. And Yao... I'm running track on this hand. I was like... Wow. And you if you're getting called by King-9 suited, then... I yeah, mean, what she, do I know? She raised almost 18, 18 big blinds. Uh, OFC's... Yeah, OFC's coming in with the Queen 10 suited, and this must be her game plan. She's just um, trying to increase the pot size to the maximum with her premium. Yeah, and everything and that it, I've seen from her so far, I really like, actually. Yeah. <laughs> She's just going for the max. She's uh, uh -huh. This would be bigger than I would ever intuitively decide to, like, jack it up to, especially yeah. when it's only, like, my third open of the night. I love it. Uh, but if you have She's, this kind of a read, you're going to get called by these hands, yeah, and I just love is. it. And a brutal flop for her here. Um, good flop for OFC, flopping top pair. Yao with the gut shot and an overcard. Mm -hmm. I think we'll probably see Kitty shut it down on this flop. Um, definitely connects very well with her opponents. Uh, yeah, in a way, it's kind of a good flop for her to just not lose any more money. Exactly. She could rest easy. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and she knows this is the kind of board that these guys are, are calling definitely. with speculative hands Absolutely. to try and sting especially, her one time. Yeah, especially yeah. with a player like Yao and OFC. We know that OFC doesn't like to fold the fold its aggression, so. Mm -hmm. Does check through, and the board pair is yeah. pretty good for her ace high. Yeah, I like the lead here from OFC. She does yeah, wisely she get out it. of the way. Yeah. And interested to see what Yao's going to do here. He still has that gut shot and an overcard. Um, he could definitely have the best hand. OFC could definitely be leading with uh, some mis some straight draws, some, uh, some flush draws. Um, tough spot here for Yao. See what, what Yao is going to do here. He does lay it down. That's a wise decision. I think so. Yeah. Seems like a good play to me. Showing some discipline. And again, for those of you joining in the chat as of recently, like. Share, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Poker House Live. And it's Eddie, the Asian sensation in the booth. We got Mr. Nick Morgan from Hazlitt Poker and Hayden Fortini in the booth as well, providing us some nice commentary with this fun action pack lineup this Friday. High stakes Friday, biggest game here at Poker House Dallas. Thanks for tuning in. Hope to put on a good show the rest of this evening. Less than an hour into the stream. Already about to crack the century mark here on yeah. the viewers. Loving that. 95 viewers. Let's go. And oh. usually we pick up a lot significantly more steam after an hour or so. And I think once people start watching, like, oh, Jaywin, Kim, Frankie, Kitty. Yeah, dude. What a lineup, yeah. huh? Yeah, what a lineup. And interesting to see Kitty uh, limp here blind versus blind versus, uh, versus Joe, King 10. So she shows she's probably playing a balanced limping range here. 
She's showing me so far that she's unpredictable and she's making her decisions based on the elements of the gameplay as opposed to some kind of memorized strategy. Right. Which I, I love, love that. Yeah, I love yeah. it. I'm all about that life. And I can tell you she definitely hasn't studied Joe um, because he has not played on any Hold'em streams that I know of. <laughs> Yeah, and this is a sick move by him right yeah, here. Yeah, raising with the bottom pair. I, I like the raise, though. You clear out all the hands like this that mm -hmm. have two overs. Um, you kind of define your hand and where you're at. Yeah. And you could possibly turn your hand into a bluff or represent a lot of strength on later streets. Totally but, with you. Yeah. I think it's especially nice to use some plays like that on boards where you think your opponent's going to continue with some worse hands, too. Yeah draw heavy boards or maybe ones where they just want to float with some ace highs. Yeah, and they're definitely going to continue with some gut shots, some nine mm -hmm. tens, jack tens. Yeah, I think that's the future of poker is that you're not so much thinking about your bets in terms of like, are they value bets or are they bluffs? But more so like my bet's going to accomplish a series of things and each one of them add a certain amount of EV to the play, mm -hmm. right? So like I'm making them fold some hands, so I'm denying their equity. Um, some of those hands are better than me, which denies them a lot of equity. Mm -hmm. And some of them are worse than me, but could beat me. Absolutely. And then I'm also getting called by worse hands. You yeah. know, I'm controlling the action. I'm dictating what they're going to do on the turn, you know, by c-betting, let's say, and then forcing them to check call and then check again on the turn. And so all of those different elements add up to the to the total EV of the decision. Yeah. This is a fun hand. I, fun. This is the last hand or two that I ran on track. So this be, I'm going to turn up the table mic on this one just because I was out there. All right. Definitely an interesting board. Yeah, I'm going to see bet here. About 700 and about 1340. Yeah, this is already a tough spot for Jay Wynn, being out of position. The bottom pair and the open ender that could be conflicting with a lot of the hands that Yao would have that are the same open ender with a yeah. king or a jack or an ace, which has already got you dead. Yes. And what a turn here, both both turning trips. Yeah, wow. They're both thinking Jen in their head. Yeah. This turn card. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see Yao watching Jay win? Yeah. Jay. Oh, no, he puts on the glasses. <laughs> on. I love Yao. Yao's got so much, like, great table dynamics, great presence. This is a fun hand. Talk about body language. Both these players are... Are just having a great time in the sand. Yeah, Loving no the turn card. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Yao, Yao doing a little dance. Gonna bet 1.1 and about 2.7 here. Let's see what Jay Wynn does. Has him covered. So what? Yeah, I like the shot here by by Jay Wynn. Yeah, and Jay Wynn rips it and he fades the snap. He's like, all right, I know I'm not against King's full or Jack's full yeah. here, <laughs> or Ace Queen. He calls. And yeah, calling. Yeah, very normal call. We got a 9k pot here, but it is going to get chopped up. Yeah. That's a funny one. <laughs> Both of them thinking they may have sucked out. <laughs> that was a really Love fun it. hand to watch while I was action tracking. Love it. Are you not afraid of anything? I can't play against Asians. <laughs> Jay Wynn said I can't believe it. That's so funny. That's awesome. Kind of looking at these two guys sitting next to each other, I feel like they're the same person from two different universes. Yeah. They got the same you. vibe. <laughs> the backwards hat. You got Bronx Bomber in the chat saying, what's up, guy? 
I hope to see he's gonna be he, he gonna be playing this Sunday with the next gen boys on Sunday. Yeah, dude, we're gonna have yeah a great lineup on Sunday as well. Yeah, we're I hoping, think Kitty's hanging around to play too. Yeah, I think you're, she is. You're playing Sunday, Nick? No, I'm gonna be in here. Oh, okay, you're gonna be here. Yeah. Right. Then we got Min win in the chat with a dollar ninety nine super Let's chat. Oh. And then Captain Underpair is awesome stream already. Most importantly, thank you for the detailed commentary. Love your insight and thought processes, guys. Let's go. Nice. Shout out. Appreciate thank, that. Yeah, thank you guys so much. 114 for viewers. Out. Let's go. Keep it coming. Let's Continue go. to like and share this stream. Big lineup here. Got Jay Wynn, Kitty Koi, Texas Kim, Yao, Frankie from Next Gen, OFC. A lot of action players. Some big pots already. Yao is quickly becoming one of my favorite stream yeah, players. Yao is my favorite. He's one of my favorites. I think he's going to be sure. quickly become a fan favorite here. Yeah. How can you not love Yao? He's got a great attitude, gives gives action. Doesn't plays care. a lot of yeah. interesting hands. He's always having a good time. Gonna take down this pot. I gotta give a shout out to Captain Underpairs, not only for the super chat, but also for having maybe the most epic screen name yeah. of all our chat pros. That's a great one. I never read the books as a kid, but I know they were iconic. And then uh, the transformation into the poker pun is just next level. Yeah, I love the name. He actually, um, he's played the poker house stream a few times, and he, he usually brings a whiteboard with him. Really? When he's in a hand, he has something written on it, and, and oh, displays I it. Love and it. Him. Gosh, yeah. I love stuff like there that for poker. There was one I saw that was really funny. He like called a three bet out of position. It had like two different sides to it, but he turned it over. He goes, it goes, help. I'm being forced to play against my will. <laughs> Here we go. Kid it's with so aces. Great. Love the creativity. Just a call. Limping the aces, adopting some of that uh, heavy kitty strategy. Yeah, here. interesting. Some aggressive players at the table. Surprised to see her just limp the aces. Mm -hmm. Are you look like, looking potentially to limp back, back raise there? Yeah. She's For sure. Got, yeah, she's got very aggressive players behind. Yao in the straddle. She usually does come in raising, so I'm surprised to see this move. Yeah, I will say I use the limp raise a lot, but do it less often as the straddles go on. Right. I feel like people start moving ISO hands into over limp hands as it costs more money. I agree with that. Yeah, I but still, that, with myself. this kind of lineup, <laughs> it's like still a Shout. good option. Very good board for her. Extremely disguised hand. Yeah, great flop for Kim. I'd like to see her raise Yao's lead on this flop. She oh. does just call. Then Habib would bring Habib in too. Yeah. What do you think about calling Kim Sam versus leading versus uh, versus raising? Yeah, versus raising. I think I would lean towards raising here. Yeah, I think Yao is very, you know, is going to have a lot of kings, nines, plus draws. Yeah, and when you do have a limping range on this board, um, she does check this turn, and she's going to trap Habib here. Um, very interesting line by her. Um, very unconventional, just calling the, the lead on the flop, um, checking this turn. Her hand is extremely disguised here. Mm -hmm, definitely. Um, and she gets Habib to essentially pot it here on this turn with just a flush draw. Yeah, she and does have to be a little bit worried about the four with Habib being a, an yeah. over limper on the button. You see he's got 5-3, he could easily have a four. Yeah, she's played a lot with Habib, um, and she does just call. Great river for her. Offsuit Jack. The only thing that gets there is Queen 10. Mm, and she snap checks. And Habib oh, does go and for she the got him. In. Oh, she look got at her. him. And she calls. Yeah, yeah that's got to well, be a snap after how much yeah. money's in that pile. Oh, wow. Well played by Kim. And look at what that. A, what a tricky, unconventional line. Limping. I'm going to have to talk to her about her reasons for that. Yeah, because, no doubt. Uh, yeah, I'm totally paid off right myself. there, though. Yeah. But love the adjustments being made here. Um, she's played with Habib a lot, so she knows that Habib does like to stab the turn a lot mm. um, when he feels that the field is weak. So mm. uh, her being, her just calling um, Yao's lead on that flop and then checking the turn with only Habib behind her, her hand is just way under rep there. Yeah, yeah. Guys. Very sneaky play. Very sneaky. Love the creative play we're seeing here so far. Some very unconventional lines. No doubt. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun stream to go back and watch and kind of think about some of the decisions and, you know. 
Wow, dude, look at these look at super these. chats rolling in. We got Bronx Farmer for $50 saying, here's a firecracker dropping $500 no-look Bronx bombs on Sunday. And then <laughs> Mark Wee. Twister. Yeah, I know. I was like, blah, blah, blah. Got Mark Wee with a $99, $99 Let's chat. Go, Let's dude. go, dude. LFG Texas kid. Let's go. Everyone Shout in the out. chat, let's go. Let's take a look at these stack sizes as we about an hour into the stream now. Got Miss Texas Look came up that. top. Cracking that 10K mark. Let's, Let's go. go. Gonna be a long night. Still got three hours of stream ahead of us. May go into some overtime tonight. Let's see. Shout out to uh shout out to Mark Wee. He's actually uh if you guys are looking uh to buy a home or Real estate in the area. He's actually helping us right now. Uh, look for a home. Oh, yeah, nice. and he's also going to be great to work with. Yeah, going to also be helping great out guy. Eric as well. So, yeah. for all those of you in the DFW area, Mark Wheat is the nuts when it comes to real estate. He's the man. Give him a shout if you need any help in that area. Great guy. Knock in the chat saying limping is pimping. <laughs> Let's limping go. Limping is pimping. We've seen some strong limps tonight. So, knock. I need to make that a shirt. And wear it. Le yeah. Actually, Le Daniel Negroni already coined that. Oh, that's, did he? Really? That's where he got it from. Oh man. That's yeah, which is unfortunate because I was limping a long time before Daniel was. Oh. But. Shout out to Dory <laughs> Coyle coming in with a 9.99 super chat. Thank you, Dory. Yeah, Thank you, no everyone, doubt. for supporting Holy the cow. stream. Man, our board, our screen is lighting up with super chats, guys. I can't Thank believe you so it. Much. Let's go. I love it. It's like Christmas in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Christmas in January. Happy New Year, everybody. And OFC uh, adopting the big race strategy coming in. I think the 100 is on this I think hand. the 100 is on I think well. Kim put the 100 on. And uh, OFC coming in for 425 with the 10s. Trying to get max value. And Habib getting right back into action here with the King 10 and clubs. I believe he's at least added on. Okay. Yeah. It may not be reflected in. So we got the 50 and the 100 on here? I think so. Let's go. Yeah, it looks, looks like, like it. Kim's in the 100. And Yao picking up Ace Queen here would not be surprised to see him 3 bet at all, especially versus OFC and Tabib. Being yeah, dude, and if we've got the 100 on, these 5K stacks are only 50 blinds. So yeah. they're going to be swinging around. And Yao does just call. I think we might see Kim defend the straddle as well here. She does lay it down, showing some discipline. I love it. I like it. I beat flops, flops the best of it. Yeah, he flops top pair. Um, I don't think we're going to see OFC be able to get away from this for one bet. Um, yeah, Beep and, only has a thousand back, so. Yeah, and Habib's definitely capable of jamming this flop with four stands and a king, so I think this is going to be a snap call here for OFC. Don't believe he checked with the intention to fold the flop. Yeah, and he does snap call. Yeah. Played with these guys too much. <laughs> Yeah, and unfortunately for him, he is not doing well at all against the king. And especially yeah. with the beep yeah, having the, the, the 10. Yeah, the beep having yeah, it's a rough spot. Oh, oh my gosh. gosh. What is going Whoa. on tonight? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Oh, Habib has got to be sick. Well, and thankfully for Habib, he did not have that much behind. True. Yeah. He didn't reload there because if he did, that would have been a much bigger pot. Wow. Uh, that is but sick. Brutal. Brutal beat there for uh, for Habib. Nice hand for from OFC. I think we're gonna see uh, Habib reload. Dude, I gotta say, I am loving that we didn't come in here with a bunch of thousand dollar chips, and that we have these nice looking black and green stacks on the table. Yeah, me too. I love the I love the chips on the table. I love the big stacks. Oh yeah, you know? makes it feel like yeah. old school poker. Absolutely. <laughs> Love it. You remember back in the glory days on the those, cash uh, on the table, high yeah. stakes poker. Oh, oh yeah, the with cash. the with the bricks, the bricks, 10K bricks, the bricks. Yeah, yeah. monster stacks and some, bricks behind. There were some of the most epic hands from those high stakes. That's a, I mean, that's when I started playing poker, started getting interested in it, watching those streams. And no doubt. They're just classic television. Oh, 
Piney commenting he thinks this is the first time we've been over 100. I've yep. actually seen us over 100 a couple of times. Yeah, for the birthday bash and then for um, y'all's stream this past Yeah, on time. Sundays we've been a couple of times, but I don't think I've seen us crack 120 yet. Yeah, so let's get there to 120. Oh, you know what? When we did the birthday bash, we were up over 200. Yeah, but that's a tournament. We've yeah, never had a cash a, game, so yeah. final cash table. Cash game, never been over 120. Let's get over to 120, guys. We still have at least three hours left in the stream. Yeah, we're going to make it for sure. We're seeing uh, Joe just limp calling here with the King Jack on the button, underrepresenting his hand a little bit. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. And and, yeah, with bottom pair here. Yeah, nice spot for Kim to see that. She's got the King of Spades. She's got two overs, some good backdoor cards that she can barrel on. Look um, at this monster equity advantage for the four deuce, even though these yeah. other hands have lots of outs, backdoor outs and mm -hmm. six pair outs, five pair outs. But if Yao does check call here, he's going to be in a rough spot on a lot of turns versus Kim. I expect her to bet, like, any face card, any spade. Um, so he does check call, best hand. Oh. And what a card there for Yao, turning trips. Yeah. I think we're going to see Kim probably shut it down on this card. She knows that. Uh, no. It's just here that she does bet. She's feeling good, dude. Yeah, she's trying to get um, find out if Yao has draws, if he just floated with ace high, try and get those hands to fold. Um, little does she know that he does have a deuce. He is going to double check it. So what do you think here for Yao? Are you raising in the spot? Looks like he's grabbing some raising. Man, oh. it's very interesting. I like the raise because it is a very, yeah. it is oh. a very draw heavy board. So if she does have a nine or an over pair, mm -hmm. I do think she's going to have a tough time getting away from it. And sure. he's like, Hey, you can take your cards back. <clears throat> you don't have to. <laughs> Yeah, and I think the nice thing for Yao is that his image allows him to raise pretty much all of his value hands for when sure. he gets them. Yeah, I Just play I like, him fast. I like the raise there, yeah. Yeah. If other people are always going to give you credit for having a lot of bluffs, it's like, just charge them, make them make a tough decision. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for a player like Yao, I definitely like fast playing your, uh, your strong hands. And man, we've had quite some action here so far. Oh, yeah. Yeah, multiple... Um, I think we had two 10k pots so far and a lot of action yep if you guys like action stay tuned in if you guys <laughs> like action anyone out there like Don't action leave us. <laughs> hands up in the chat if you like action actually you know what click that like button little thumbs up it means you like action that would be awesome tell you what if you share it if you share it in the next few minutes i'll give you guys a thousand points for this for stream to play so All right, so Bronx said if if the next gen boys need anything before Sunday to let them know. Got you. Appreciate it, Bronx. We are looking forward to seeing you on Sunday. Hey, thanks Sassy, for tuning good in. Good to see you in the chat. Hope you you and Mighty Hammer are doing well. It's me, Hayden, and Nick in the, the booth here for our first 51025 stream at Poker House Dallas. All right, let's check out this action. There's some, oh, there's a bunch of limbs, and then a raise from Jay Wynn out of the like, small line with Ace Ten suited. I uh, love the raise here from Jay Wynn. Pretty bad board for him. Yep. Mustafa with the best of it, two pair, pocket sevens in his hand. Yeah, great board for Mustafa, especially when it checks to him on the button. Um, I think he has to bet here. Yeah. He goes for a goes for a big size, yeah. almost full pot. Eight percent pot. And it gets it done. Nice hand. First first pot for Mustafa. Yeah, he's been relatively quiet this evening. Probably because you know, I've been half in the booth, half out there. So is it a function of him just not having anything? Yeah, you know, he's okay. been pretty car dead. Happy to see him uh, back in the uh, the live stream streets. He's He's been at MIA for a while. He said he was in uh, was in Turkey for about 40 days visiting his dad. So okay. happy to have him back. Great for the game. Um, always, always fun to have at the table. Definitely uh, likes to get in the mix and play a lot of different hands. So. so now Kitty picking up the ace queen again versus this is like the same scenario that she went behind and this time she's raising. Mm -hmm. so. Mixing it up. Yeah, mixing mixing up it up. Not. Going for the smaller sizing. Yeah, I think it could be totally just dependent on who the limber is. Yeah. And obviously your position. Right. How many active players you still got left to act behind you that 
are going to act before the button. Right. Even a lot of aggressive players, when it, once it gets into the blinds, they'll decide just to, to yeah. shut it down. I feel like Ace-Queen's a hand like I wouldn't really want to put into my limp raising range because I wouldn't necessarily be like thrilled about like limp raising or getting it in or like limp three bet it, folding it. Mm. So I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Yeah, depends on stack sizes. Yeah. Um, it's a hand that I like to use as uh, a big squeeze right. spot where where you're kind of committed. Or the stacks are, um, well, I think you can just stacks. kind of choose if you want to be committed or not, Absolutely, depending yeah. on your stack size. But you also don't mind if you take a huge limp squeeze spot and then someone comes back over the top of you. Ace Queen's usually no good anymore. Right. So yeah. you're up against like Ace King or Jacks Plus, that type of range. Yeah, people give you a lot of credit for yeah for the old limp raise. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever throw in the limp raise bluff? Oh, definitely. Okay, that's I a, like it. That's a mandatory. All right, all right, all right. I mean, I think any spot that you can get in where people are going to give you uh, credit for having, like, ace-king plus uh, seems like a spot where it's mandatory to bluff a lot. So what hands are you, like, limp raise bluffing with? Is it mostly, like, your ace-x suited type of holdings? or? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll like mix in, like, some candidates. yeah small suited aces, um, some ace-queen off, ace-king off, occasionally ace-jack off in the live games. Mm -hmm. I try practicing mixing that into a limping range online. So, and you're, so you're thinking that ace-jack off as a... Or ace queen off as a bluff, mm -hmm. but it's kind of a bluff value because yeah, they're sort table, of merge candidates. Yeah. Out of loose table, you definitely get called by worse. Yeah, you know? I would say that it's more of just an equity play. Right. You know, it's not so you much about yeah. yeah thinking about it clearly as a bluff or a. I mean, most of the time, I guess it comes back as a bluff. But you're right that you know sometimes you're like I'm going to target just the original opener right. or just one of the overcallers. That's well, it's kind of a value raise, but you know when you do when they do come over the top, your hand is you know. You find out where your equity is at. Mm -hmm. It's usually right. yeah, not faring very well. Mm -hmm. And it's got a lot of blocker potential to the, the strongest hands. Yeah. And, Absolutely. And let's say it's a four or five way pot. Like, even though you might have the strongest hand, like making everyone else fold isn't that big of a deal because you don't, it's not like you have over 50% equity. Right. You know, you probably got 30% and there's four other guys out there that are sharing the other 70. Right. So if you can push all of them off of that, you went from being entitled to 30% of the money that's out there to getting all of it. Right. That's a win in my book. Yeah, absolutely. And Kitty coming in with a huge raise again, dude. Yeah, I think she's 4Xing it. I think the 50 is probably on, so. I'm, it says under the gun, call 25 there. Oh, okay. So she does. So she is going for really big sizes with her premiums. She did it with the ace king suited. She's doing it with the queens. And there it is. And Yao gives her action. Yes. <laughs> Looks like he's men three betting here with the uh, king six suited. What do you? Uh, I think a lot of times this like this two x or men three bet is is a lot of times a speculative hand, kind of like what we're seeing from Yao. So yeah, I, yeah, it she, feels like he's just trying to take position. Yeah. And she's coming in for a very large four bet here. Five X sizing. Whoa. And she's getting value. Oh, my gosh. No hesitation. <laughs> just... Snap calls. And, I mean, props to her for finding the sizing. To yeah, get wow, the maximum dude. Maximum amount of value with this hand. And Yao now has a, has a like, 0.75 SPR. Um. I guess I'd like to see her bet pretty small in this flop. Maybe like less than quarter pot. What's she betting? Yeah, she bets a thousand, so she bets quarter pot. Yeah, that seems about right to me. Yeah. Can't hear, uh, but yeah, yeah. I was my goodness, like, dude, I can't yeah. believe how casually he just yeah, cut that just huge slice out of his yeah. stack. <laughs> <laughs> and she gets max value there. Pretty sick. Yeah. Six pot there. Yeah, and her huge sizing. I love it. Mm. And she is just doing something that I try to work into my game, but taking it to the next level, which is using your sizings to target the players at the table that you want to go after. Yeah. Like, who do I want in this pot with me? Like, who's going to respect an 8x open, and who's still going to just hop in there? Right, absolutely. You know? <laughs> Yao obliges, not only yeah, with hopping in there, but three betting her yep. <laughs> with a king six. Love it. Props there. Just going for the max, max value. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's Love made so it. many creative. I don't think she's played a hand just totally standard yet. No, absolutely not. Definitely mixing it up. 
And I think we're going to see Yao get in the mix here with King Nine suited. Bumps it up to 200. I like to see it in the cutoff. Isolating those limpers. And this is a spot where I would be more likely to go for the monster sizing. Yeah. As opposed to just the open raise. I don't I just don't have that in me yet. But like where I have a couple of limpers like this, I typically make my rules based in increments of the pot, like how much money I'm willing to risk. Mm -hmm. Kind of like three X the pot is about the top end of what I'd I'd be willing to go. But as you get those limpers in, you'll be surprised by how much leverage you can apply by risking three X the pot when right. you've got the blinds and then let's say two extra big blinds out there. Right. If you got three and a half blinds in the middle, you can go to like ten X. Right. Absolutely. You know? oh. Start really punishing those guys for limping and driving out all of the players left to act behind you. Yeah. Feels more like a three bet to them than, a, than yeah, an open at that point. For sure, yeah. Yeah, definitely the looser the players are, the more you can definitely increase your sizing. Mm -hmm. And you just kind of punish them. Yeah, Even you, if they fold, you just like pick up all that dead money. Mm -hmm. And this kind of hand like Yao has right here is the well, perfect one to do it with because if you get. If everybody folds, you don't care. If somebody right. three bets you, you don't really care that much either. Yeah, absolutely. And it's also a good way to kind of test like your your price, the amount that they're actually willing to pay. Mm -hmm. So when you do get that premium, you know like the exact correct amount to no to doubt. get value for. Yeah, that's a great point. It's like you keep raising, you keep you could like almost keep increasing it until you find their threshold. No doubt. Great point. Yeah, it's like if your opponent's gonna call a twenty x raise. You know, then you can just uh, yeah, if that's exactly. the threshold. Then you can just do that with your premium. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, people get and so play tied. a way bigger pot. Yeah, you don't. Your your sizing doesn't have to be balanced if you're, you know, if your opponents aren't adjusting to it. Mm -hmm. And we see a lot of I see a lot of um, a lot of players do adjust their sizing actually based on their hand strength, you know, versus those types of opponents. And you know, I feel like I'm one of the few players that is actually like picks up on that and you know will like actually take advantage of that at the table if mm -hmm. I see them doing that, but. You know, so many people just aren't really perceptive to those types of things. So um, it's definitely. I agree with that point. Yeah. And then also we'll add on to that, that even if someone is trying to pick up on what you're doing, if your primary factor for how you're choosing your sizing is not based around the strength of your hand and is st instead based around the dynamics of the game, mm -hmm. um, your position, the players that you're trying to isolate, your stack size, it's going to be really hard for even a really perceptive opponent to right. like pick up on why you're pinning a certain size at right. a certain time. Well, you also, like, if you're isoing huge, you're probably going to get three bet less from good players because mm -hmm. it's a lot more expensive for them to do so. Exactly. They're just not used to playing against, like, a 10 or 15x ISO. So exactly. The three betting range is actually going to become very face up and it's going to be easier to navigate against them. Mm -hmm. And if their method for learning more about poker is to look at those pre-made hand charts, right? those are all based on sizings that are Absolutely. very common. Yes. So you immediately take them out of their study game plan yes. and force them to create, well, what am I going to cold, cold three bet and what am right. I going to, you know, do I need yes. to have a cold calling range or do, you know, and, just... And from what I found, like when people are, when you take them out of their, um, I guess their comfort zone, they just become very... They just go back to playing very transparent, solid style, mm -hmm. you know, and tightening their ranges up, which makes life easier for you. Exactly. <laughs> and I wasn't expecting that out of Kitty, honestly. Yeah. I was expecting her to see I more of a sure straightforward see, kind yeah. of style. But I love it. You know, I love to see it. King here, three betting Yao, and uh, looks like Frankie. Looks like Frankie is considering putting in a four bet here. He does think better of him fold. Um, Habib coming in for the cold call here with the A6 suited. So this is a spot where, like, if this was Kitty, someone using that large, you know, large sizing strategy, might just like three bet to like 500 here, yeah, 600. Just go huge. Yeah. Because uh, your whole purpose for raising is to try and get the isolation. Yeah, and Yao making the call here with the King Deuce. 
You know, I think with Yao's per specific hand, this is probably his max threshold <laughs> for calling a three bet. And wow, what a flop here for Kim. Uh, flopping trip aces with their ace king. Yeah, and Habib and has an ace also. Spot for Habib. And he's only got 2x the pot oh, behind. No. And it is a draw Habib board. Oh no, and he just got stacked by Kim. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. I think he's about to get stacked again. Oh, yeah, no. this, is, this is a really tough spot for him. Kim, definitely capable of c-betting this board with with um, a lot of different hands. She can have draws. Um, you know, she could just have random hands that she three bet with. She could have like hands like nines through kings. So. Yeah, and you really can see from for him. You can see from Abib's language that he is definitely already concerned and frustrated. Yeah, he checks again. I'm definitely gonna see Kim probably bet again here. What sizing do you like here from Kim? Um, just gonna go geometric to get his stack in. So yeah. maybe like around 600 here. Yeah. Maybe 750 and then 11 on the end. 11 on like the that. end. Yeah. Yeah, I think that sounds about right to me. And interested to see here, and she bets a thousand. I think she's a little concerned about Habib. Um, spade draw? Yeah, spade draws. Yeah, and Habib's ripping it, and uh, he's he's going to get the bad news here. Bang, bang. Yeah. He definitely wanted to fade the snap call. Did not fade it. And Habib is going to need a six for the board to pair for him to chop. And yeah. it did not come. Nice Kim hand. takes that on yeah. another pot. Holy Very cow. Nice hand. Came off to a great start. Love to see it. Ship the diaper money. Yeah, that beautiful <laughs> stack is going to grow a little yeah. bit more here. And Habib, oh, man, that's agony. You get stacked by the same player twice within about an orbit. Let's take a look at these cumulative winnings here. Oh, and Texas Kim already up seven thousand dollars, guys. Go. Let's go. OFC and Kitty at about forty nine hundred and thirty three hundred dollars respectively. Mustafa and Jay went. I, Jay went must have lost a big hand while I stepped out of the stepped out of the booth. So down about four k. He lost that big pot really early on. That's the oh, one okay. That I, I must not have. That must have been when I stepped outside of Pocket Kings. He actually made a huge fold on the end and. <laughs> And it was right. It was a good fold, but he still lost probably 2K plus in that pocket. Gotcha. Looks like these players are having a good time here. Thanks again for tuning in for this 5 10 25 stream here at Poker House Dallas, our biggest stream ever. Over 115 viewers in the chat. Thank you for tuning in. Continue to like, subscribe, and share this stream. So we see Frankie coming in with a pretty large sizing here. Yeah, hasn't done. A, I'm assuming he hasn't been getting into the mix tonight. I think this is his first pot that he's gotten. Okay. In. There is a limp from Yao, and Frankie goes for the ISO. Wow, surprised to see Yao, who just defended King Deuce off to a three bet on the previous hand. He opened and then called a three bet. Here he just limps and then folds to Frankie. So probably a little player dependent there, thinking Frankie's tighter. Doesn't want to get involved out of position. Heads up with with a hand that week. Got Woodley in the chat. Gosh, yeah. we love Woodley around here. Yeah, oh. Woodley, I think you're right. Have you had a really good night the other night down the road? Was up 25k from Wednesday stream. That's so, what Habib. Yeah. Yeah, that that makes me feel a lot better. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just getting stacked and stacked, double double stacked by Kim. Yeah, look at that stack in yeah. front of Kim. That is beautiful. And Kim hey, does not color up. Just for the record, I'm I, glad. I've seen her in PLO over there. And her stack, I'm like, why do you have like 3,000 in red? She's like, because I took it from all these other people exactly. and I don't color it. That's the it. point of the game. Yeah, You're taking so. people's chips. Stack them up. I, I was telling Nick that Kim doesn't color up. She just, when she takes people's chips, yeah, she just, she could have like like $3,000 in red. I'm like, why don't you color up to like green? She's like, well, it's because I took these reds from all these other players. I'm like, fair enough. Yeah, no, she, she likes, she loves to have a lot of chips in front of her at the table. So she always buys a lot of chips. Um, and she definitely does not like to color up. <laughs> and I love the image, actually, of having, like, a massive stack. I feel like it's good for your image, and I also feel like it just makes the game look better. Like, it makes it look like there's more action happening. Right. It makes it look like... Like, when you see people sitting there with, like, the whole table sitting there with, like, 10 to 20 chips, the game just doesn't look as good. It right. doesn't look, like, just visually, you know? 100% like with you. So 
I love it. I just love the optics of just having a lot of chips. And you also just look like an action player. I think mm. you just get more action when you have a lot of chips and physical chips in front of you. Yeah. Kind of creates an image for you. Yeah. You know? People see you sitting in front of a huge stack all the time. And and also part of, like, the mental game strategy of that is, like, even if, if you have a bunch of chips and even if you're losing, you don't feel like a loser. Like, when you're sitting there with, like, all big chips, then you know that you're stuck, right? Mm. Because you lost all your smaller chips. Yeah. So, like, when you actually have a huge stack in front of you and you're stuck in the game, you actually psychologically don't feel like you're losing. So. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Maybe it also feels and, like... And also say, your opponents, like, don't really know if you're winning or losing just because you have so many chips in front of you. Mm. You know, if a new player sits down on the table and they see all those chips, they might think you're winning or might think... Like Jay wins stack right now? Did you see it? Yes. He's got, like, 10 chips or yeah, 20 exactly. chips. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, no one's like, yeah. oh, did you win some pots recently? Yes. <laughs> it looks like he's stuck. <laughs> She always yells at me when we're playing cash if I don't color up like my big denom or color down my chips. Like if I have like <laughs> if I don't have like at least like twenty barrels of chips in front of me and I have like a purple chip or a one K chip, she's yeah. like, Go to the cage and go get color green. down. Yeah, go <laughs> get green. Stop being lazy. You know? That's funny. <laughs> I'm on the team. So yeah. I, I don't color up either. <laughs> It's more fun to have chips. You know? For sure. That yeah. is part of the fun of the game to yeah, me. Yeah. You're accumulating all those people's chips, just yeah. like him said. Exactly. And if you're not, you can buy them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're a little, little cheaty. <laughs> Mighty Hammer says, it's also nerdy fun to build it. No doubt, dude. It's like our own little grown-up Legos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Poker Monkey, shout out to Woodley. Says it's his favorite player to watch on the next-gen streams. It's definitely one of mine, too. Yeah, Woodley's a gangster for sure. Yeah. Woodley is so tough because he, he's not just active, right? Like, active, aggressive players are already tough on their own, but he is so crafty. Mm -hmm. You can never predict what he's going to do, and he's always aware of where he's at in the hand. Yeah, he's very tricky for sure. Looks like they're doing a, their second PLO flip of the night. Yep. Do you think it's dangerous for for Kitty to stack her chips like that? I would be I would, that would make me a nervous wreck to have him stack like that. So, what do you? I, I kind of like the tall stacks. What, what are your thoughts on that? I love tall stacks. Do, do you usually do tall? You usually do forty or thirty. High? Actually, one of my things is that I don't want to know exactly how many chips I have, so okay. I like them being like different amounts in all the stacks and being like close to also, two barrels tall, so that you can't really you, tell. It makes you look kind of reckless. Like mm -hmm. it makes you look uncalculated. That's the point. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Just, yeah. Someone asks you how many chips you have, you're like, I don't know. I know. I shouldn't <laughs> be revealing this right now, but <laughs> but yeah, that's but why I do also, it. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make you look like a pro at all when you mm -hmm. don't know how many chips you have. It, mine look very much like what uh, OFC looks like. Okay, I like that. I like the with a queen. Yeah. Okay, Kitty with a queen. Uh, anybody? It, coming from like kind of a tournament background, I do like the stack minus twenty because I have mm. this thing. I want to know how much I have in front of me, but I'm gonna experiment with the yeah the messy sloppy stacks. Of, and like, you can also you like, can have dirty stacks in different places. You just oh, like, I don't know about yeah. that. But I'm a little too OCD for the dirty stacks on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in tournaments. I just like to break it down a little more often so I know exactly how much I have. Yeah, yeah. tournaments, it makes sense. Tournaments, you, you have to know. I yeah, you like, need to know how many big have. blinds you have. Yeah. But you can know and then keep them a little bit. Oh, fair enough. I okay. mean, it's not that hard to just, like, take one of the barrels and just, like, kind of sprinkle it onto the other stacks. Right. And then your opponents don't have a super good gauge of how much yeah. you have. I like the tower stacks. That you, I love, like, the Alex Foxen stack that you see. And, mm. you know. Alex Foxen, what a hero. Yeah, that guy's a beast. Got some team oh, no color ups. I think Love Kitty Stack. I heard Chips getting knocked over. I think that might have been Kitty Stack. Oh, it happened. Eddie. <laughs> it happened. What happened? Oh, did it? <laughs> <laughs> that, that <knocked> <laughs> I literally was just talking about, about that. It. That's funny. Yeah. And I did that, that's like the reason I don't. I, yeah, that's the reason why I don't stack them like that. I'm totally cool with like you know multiple stacks or whatever, but I'd be like, man, now I have to restack all these, and that yeah. would like put me on tilt. But I don't stack them as tall as Kitty does. That was a. Uh, yeah, it's too risky. I don't want to have to be worried about their integrity the entire time. Yeah, I think OFC kind of has the perfect looking stack. Right I now. like it. Yeah, I like it. 
I don't know. It just bothers me to like not know how many chips I have in hand. Mm. But in cash, it doesn't matter as much, I guess. But yeah. Well, I, I mean, I agree with you. Sometimes. That's why I'm saying I break it down more often in a tournament. Yeah. No, in cash, it still bothers me. Oh, really? But you I don't feel know like exactly. it's Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. As long as you, if you know you have your opponent covered, then it shouldn't really bother you. Yeah, and I'll give you an interesting point, actually. For years and years, I always knew exactly how much money was in the pot at every point in the hand. <laughs> and knew how much was in my stack and my opponent's stack. Those felt like staples. And then after doing it for years and years, I've had like a little bit, maybe it's even just a short time to gain new perspective on it. But thinking a little bit less about that and more so just kind of feeling like how much leverage you have behind versus how much is in the pot and how much your opponent's going to perceive to have in the pot. And then sort of just betting in chunks of your stack as opposed to specific amounts or chunks of the pot based on how it appears as opposed to like knowing the specific number. Does that seem crazy? That's a little wild. I like that though. More of like an intuitive <laughs> feel of like how much to bet at each point. You I know? like it. You're probably pretty spot on most of the time. Yeah, you've I mean, you've it counted it down so many times yeah, that you always have like a really it. good feel for it. Yeah, you know? I like it. And also if you're like less focused on like numbers, you might be more focused on other things that are more mm. more relevant. Live yeah, poker, because like it does. Your opponent's emotions or how they're feeling or whatever, sure. whatever the case is, you know, um, I think. I think sometimes people get, um, especially like more study players, get too bogged down by like the pot size or the mm -hmm. bed size relative to the pot. And it's more just about like your opponent, what chips they use to bet, if they, how they're feeling, what the last hand they played, what they think of you. You know, exactly, those things dude. can be a lot more relevant than the actual size of the pot. It's all in know? flow, right? Yeah. Yeah. Live poker is much more of a flow game. So, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, I totally agree. So. Yeah, it's not like Respect. I'm... No. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's, it's actually a lot of fun. You kind of feel like you're um, not so worried about the math and memorized portion of the game, and are more right. just like outplaying the guy in the moment based yeah. on how it feels. That's what live poker's about. Yeah, it's person it's, to person. Makes know. it a lot more fun, too. Yeah, it's a lot more yeah. fun, for sure. I love it. Love it. It's definitely more of Kim's approach. She does like the stacker chips in 20s, but she just has so many of them. She's just got like the yeah, walls. Yeah, I can't help it right now. The wall of China going on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's so it. weird, though, when you see her, she's like trying to make, you know, it has her yeah. arms wrapped around it. <laughs> like she's hugging it. Like, I, refuse to to I refuse to color up. <laughs> I, do, I like Kitty stack too. I just love the tall stack. Oh, it's just cool. like literally, as I said that, yeah. she literally like, loses her stack. Tires, yeah. She's still stacking, guys. She's still yeah. stacking. Yeah. <laughs> she feels like she just want to buy. You know, she's stacking them up. Love to see it. Yeah, Poker Monkey saying, on January 29th, the next gen is having a hundred thirty dollar meetup tournament where the final table will be live streamed. Eric and I will be, I believe, in Daytona. And so we're going to teach these boys how to run the stream Let's go. without us. So I don't think anybody has much of anything. I think OC with the oh, – okay, yeah. Yeah, middle yeah, pair. pair, yeah. And OFC has bottom pair. Yeah, and Yao's check button is broken often. Getting call here by OFC. <laughs> His fold button the button's also, broken. <laughs> yeah. His fold button also doesn't work sometimes. Two guys with no <laughs> fold buttons. <laughs> Two guys that lack a fold and check button. We're going to showdown in a monster pot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think we're going to see OFC get oh, away. Oh, yeah. OFC gets away. Yeah, it was a pre-flop razor, so... And these two have been battling each other the past few weeks here on the mm. Friday stream. Yeah, they've so. been going at it, and that's going to be a natural occurrence. They both like to play a lot of hands. They're yeah. both aggressive players, so you're going to see them get tangled up in a lot of pots. That's a really uh, active, aggressive corner there between uh, Yao Kim and OFC. Yeah. Then All poor players, Frank, and then poor Frankie's like. Yeah. All players that like to get in the mix. Yeah, and it's. For Frankie, though, that sets up just a different dynamic. Yeah. It's maybe not his favorite seat on the table, but, yeah. you know, you have, number one, you have a tight image. So when those guys come in for their inevitable loose opens and isolations, you're going to be able to come in with some cool three betting and cold four betting spots where yeah. they're not going to get, or they're going to give you a lot of credit, and you can mix in some ace-ten offsuits, ace-jack yeah. offsuit, king-queen offsuit type hands in there and get a lot of credit for it. For sure, yeah. And Frankie's got a... Um He's got a great seat. Probably one of the best seats in the house, actually. Kitty might have a better seat having position on a B, but I, I really like both their seats a lot. Looks like we see Yao. Yao min three betting again on the button with the king, king do suit. Yeah, interesting. And Kitty coming in with a huge raise again. Yeah, and she did this with Jack 10 suited, so interested to see this. She mm -hmm. might think the 50 is on. 
but it's just a quarter this time. Habib did not put the 50 on. And yeah, Frankie just folding the King Jack. He's been very disciplined so far, really waiting, picking his spots here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't want to play Kitty out of position off of this monster ISO or Ray sizing. Not yeah. even an ISO here. Yeah, I'd be concerned about her range for sure. At this sizing, you could almost just consider it an ISO because I think she's just trying to get the pot heads up. That's yeah. sort of the point. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we're just going to see Yao take this down here with the C bet, especially if he goes. If he goes big here, three quarters pot. I think 600 and 840. Even though she has backdoor cards, I think we might see her peel this hand or possibly even check raise versus smaller sizing. But mm -hmm. versus this large of a size and a player as sticky as Yao, I think we're just going to see her fold here. Yeah. Seems like she's she's suspicious. Seems like her spidey senses are telling her yeah. something is wrong here, but she does get away from it. Yeah. And he shows the deuce, mm. letting her know that her suspicion was correct. Yeah, deuce of spades. <laughs> deuce of spades, too, which is... Yeah, I love that card. Yeah. <laughs> And I like Yao's choice to go with that large sizing. I'm guessing he was probably just going to bluff once. Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe he was going to go twice. But you never know with Yao. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> For sure. Just kind of like set up my game plan. Yao, where is, Yao is also a feel player. If he if he senses weakness or feels weakness, he will go with it. He doesn't really. He's not too concerned about blockers. He's not too concerned about his equity with the board. Sure. Um, he will go with a stone air ball. <laughs> if he, you know. As we saw right there. Yeah. And uh, Mustafa getting in the mix here with the King 4 suited. That is true. Yeah, I love the deuce. I haven't played that much with Kim, especially like in a big no limit game, but yeah. I have the feeling that she's kind of a trash talker. Is that true? She loves to talk trash, yeah. She was actually really funny. Do you know the guy Cuz? I know the name, but I he don't plays, know if I've met him. He well, plays a lot of tournaments. tournaments yeah. He finished second in the WPT, the last WPT Choctaw that was in May. He actually got um, finished second in Chance Corneth, who won that tournament. And uh, he was actually at our table with three tables left. Kim and I were both deep in that uh, the classic. tournament. The classic, yeah. And he's, you know, talking to everyone, calling everyone cuz. And, and Kim won a few pots, and you know he's making comments, and she just goes, she goes, I know you're, I know you're afraid of me. <laughs> and he goes, listen, cuz, I'm not afraid of anybody. I played the 10K Bellagio Diamond with the best players. I'm definitely not afraid of you. And she goes, you're afraid of me. You can just admit it. And she just kept at it, just kept very calmly needling him, and it was, it was getting him a little riled up. He, I love he, it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I actually had a similar situation <laughs> this weekend where a guy had to get up and leave the table because I was shit talking him too much. I love it. Yeah. I was just uh, laying into him on strategy. It's more just based on. The, Honestly, the that's a new thing that I'm really working hard on. <laughs> okay. You're really okay. working hard on Yeah, talking. yeah. I'm going in with the intention of like, I'm going to try and go on some long stretches of 45 minutes or an hour at a time where I'm going to continuously talk the entire time just okay. to practice like different stabbing and needling techniques like during it's the fun. hands, in between hands talking about the strategy of the hand in the hand like if are I'm, you giving away are you talking like i kind of started out trying all of it right and then have now moved to where i talk about my own hand a little bit less and more so about like what saying things about have? their hands right maybe making predictions maybe saying like oh you're not supposed to bet on this board you uh -huh. know little things like that but yeah. trying to use like a lot of really friendly language too when i do it okay. like, like oh playful. dude like i was the one who raised i could have an ace here you know right. you probably shouldn't bet right now right you know little things like that and i've oh, already okay. had several really Really good reactions where people have paid me off or made a big fold or in this case got tilted and got up and left the table for a minute <laughs> right i yeah. like it it's a good time it's fun too it's a social game so oh yeah i, I do. think as long as you're like playful with it you don't rub people the wrong way mm -hmm. it's not really like some people's strategies make people upset and i never really wanted to do that at the table you know i want people to have a good time i don't want to win someone's money because they like they got tilted or upset with me yeah you know? sure that's fair and i also I will say that it is meant to all be friendly. I'm of not. Course, I'm not yeah. doing anything but some malicious. But people do get but, bothered by it, you know. Yeah. But as long as you're, in, it's in good fun and you kind of do it with everybody. I feel mm -hmm. like, feels like you're not. Yeah, and but also if someone's a jerk. I don't mind picking on them a little bit, you know. <laughs> dude, I pick on the young guys way more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, because you can mess with the little kids. Yeah, well, with the older guys, well, I'm like, we're here to have a good they're time. Not experience with live poker, you know. So I would say that, that and then also I feel like they came to compete. Right. You know, yeah. like they're there understanding poker as like a strategy game where you're right. trying to win the other person's money. Right. Right. And I'm like, if we're both on that wavelength, I'm going to compete hard. Right. You know, I want to win. Yeah. So I'm not going to say anything rude to you personally, uh -huh. but I'm happy to like say anything in the hand that I can to like get you off your game. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Love it. A little yeah. big hand developing. Oh, yeah, here. dude. This is huge. 
It'd be with Ace King versus Tens pre flop. Yeah, be three betting the six hundred. Yeah, eight high board. Jay wins just gonna rip his stack in. Mm -hmm. Put a yeah. ball in. Be making the fold. And that's a discipline check fold there from uh, from Habib after for the because sure. he's definitely getting snapped on that flop by ten. So. Yeah, for sure. Could have easily convinced himself just to stick it in, huh? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and just one more point about the speech play and practicing it. It makes me so much more excited to go play poker that that social element has entered the game. Yeah. And like the entire time I'm thinking, I'm, I'm trying to come up with funny or clever or useful stuff to say to get information out of my opponents. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it just makes me like way more excited to be in the room and play. Yeah, I love it. It's definitely something I want to work on too. So that's actually one thing I do because I'm very, very energetic at the table and I'm very open and talk, but a lot of people don't think you know once they get comfortable with you they open up more than they probably should uh -huh. and you're like okay yeah. cool <laughs> like so you don't like to bluff at the one too good to know yeah, exactly, <laughs> like stuff, exactly. Stuff, yeah, you stuff. find out a lot of information actually exactly yeah. yeah let's watch this hand and then i'll give you an example of yeah of something that so it looks like yeah i'm mixing it up yeah, Yao going with the big race here at the King of Suited. Kim just calling with the sevens. Mm -hmm. After Jay Wynn limping with the 5-4 um, suited. Yeah, a little surprised to see that from Jay Wynn. The other plays make a lot of sense to me. So Jay Wynn's been doing some limping from early position. He might definitely be adapting like a limping range. He sure. wants to play more hands. He knows if he raises, he's likely to even get a lot of flatters behind or three bets. So he's happy to limp call and put in the limp, limp raise as well. I like the strategy. It also allows you to play more hands like this, mm -hmm. you know, by... Yeah, you get to realize the equity of a hand like this and mm -hmm. not worry about getting blasted off of it if you try to raise. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, and with that being said, Jaywin adapting pretty well to this table. New to all these players, I think he said he's played with Kitty before in the past, but with, with the exception of her, probably he's never played against any of these players. Oh, Kim with the best hand here. Yeah, Kim turning a, a flush here, a middling flush. I like her check back on the flop, multi-way, and I'd actually like to see her check this turn. And Yao, <laughs> Yao was going to stab at this and then just open mucked. <laughs> <laughs> I totally did. He was going to take a shot at this pot and just, and then just folded with Kim left to act behind. Oh, look, and look at this, just, Jay. And I really like, and Jay went uh, rivering trips here. I love the way Kim's played this hand so far, and she can definitely... Nice. She just bets 100, love and it. I think we're going to see Jay win just make the call here. Um, hard to fold for this price. Yeah, I love that. I wonder that. if he's going to come back for a raise, Her though. hand is a little face up. Yeah. Her hand's face up, but the problem is she knows her hand's face up, and yeah. if he checks and then decides to raise, I bet she's going to be suspicious enough to look it up. Yeah. He makes a very disciplined fold. Yeah, good fold right there. It's like he thought about turning into a bluff, but yeah. um, I think it wasn't a great time to do so. Yeah. So nice yeah. hand there for Kim. No doubt. So just give you a couple of well quick played. examples about the speech play. So one example, I'm in a hand with a guy that I think is probably a professional player. We're playing 510. He opens to 50 for the second hand in a row. I defend and then immediately ask him, so do you open to 50 every time? Or are you only doing that based on your position or your hand strength? And he just like kind of freezes. <laughs> like he's not used to someone asking him a question like that in the middle of the hand yeah and doesn't say anything but then as soon as he as soon as the hand ends and he slides his cards into the muck he goes open to 50 with everything <laughs> 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 and i'm like man if i hadn't said anything i would have never known. found that out right yeah. and he just told me volunteered free information there that's awesome so, yeah and then it Love gives it. you like launching points for future hands like like let's say he opens to 50 again on the next one you can kind of badger him about that be like dude you really should be opening to 60 from those earlier positions you got to protect your hand you know <laughs> little things like that um one other one we we're in uh in a tournament so it looks like oh yeah let's watch this hand like yeah. Hand here. yeah yeah you're good jackson jacks yeah ofc coming in with the three bet here to 700 and mustafa just ripping for 39 3900 here with the jacks puts ofc in a tough spot um mustafa usually is, doesn't get too aggressive pre-flop um, and he has, he's played relatively snug tonight, so mm -hmm. OFC can't be feeling great about 
um, how his hand is doing versus Mustafa's overall range here. Yeah, and Mustafa just kind of had an awkward size, uh, awkward stack size to do anything other than just yeah. rip it. And I love the play here from Mustafa um, versus this three bet size. You can't really four bet to an amount mm -hmm. um, with the stack. So, so was this open game. three bet from OFC and then Mustafa cold shove? Yeah, Mustafa shoved from the the from twenty-five the dollar blind. Yeah. Gotcha. Got some brews in the mix. So he's probably thinking like Mustafa's range might be something like jacks plus ace king, mm -hmm. which isn't great when you have two jacks. Um, Mustafa could occasionally have like tens, um, possibly like ace queen or ace queen suited, but sometimes he just chooses the flat with those hands, even three bets. So I think his range here is fairly solid. It's a really tough spot here for OFC. I love when I see someone like OFC change gears here, where like if you just watched him play some of his other pots tonight, you'd probably think he's just going to snap call with a hand like Jax. But yeah. he's so aware of the situation. And he's aware of his opponent mm -hmm. and his opponent's range. Um, he's also played with Mustafa a lot. Like they they played home games together. I think they've been playing poker together for years, so he knows Mustafa really gotcha. well. Gotcha. Yeah, so yeah. he probably knows Jax is the bottom of Mustafa's yeah. range. Um, Habib, um, Habib, Mustafa, and OFC have all, I think, been playing together for, for quite some time. So gotcha. they all know each other really well, which creates a fun dynamic. Looks like he's going to maybe let it go here. He definitely looks resided to the fact he's got the second best hand. He says he's going to fold. And he announces fold. I think it's a good fold. Yeah. He's going to be upset, and Mustafa's going to probably, probably show him, I'm sure. Needle him a little bit. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> and the whole table. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, yeah. Uh... And Mustafa's tight image earns him the $700 pot there. He's going to get right back in the mix here. Just limps. So it looks like everyone's adopting this, like, limping yeah. strategy. Yeah, everybody really getting tricky. And OFC's great, got a great limp squeeze candidate right here. Yeah. And Habib, um, still on a shorter stack. He has 1,100 raising up with the queen jack suited. I think another reason to do Oh, my oh gosh. Boy. Wow. Oh Kim boy. picks up the aces here. She's definitely... And it's going to look like she's... Calls. She's just going to call? Wow, that is... Very a... interesting. She might be doing this because Habib is so short. Oh, wow, look at this flop. Oh, wow, what a flop. Let's OFC in the pot. Habib just bets 300 on this board. I'm curious to see if we'll see Kim raise or call here. She does check raise. Ambitious bet by Habib right here. And this is a really, really um, interesting spot here for OFC. All yeah. the big, the, both the two big stacks could collide here. Got a gutter to the wheel and also nut flush draw. And what's your approach here? If you're in an OFC spot, are you looking to um, just call this flop raise? Yeah, or? I think because we're so deep, I would probably just call. Yeah. Kim could easily have a set. Yeah, she could definitely have sets in her range here. Yeah. Um, he definitely doesn't put her on a hand like aces. Yeah, she could also She's have... She's played her aces very sneakily tonight. Being in the straddle, she could probably also have all of the suited two pairs here. Mm-hmm, for sure. And she definitely has hands like 7-4 suited. And he does just call. Yeah, I like that. You're too deep, I think, to yeah, just get, get it in. crazy. Even though he does have a lot of equity against like two pairs and sets, but she's picking up OFC here. Really great card for Kim. Um, I think she realizes that OFC is going to have a lot of a lot of draws in the spot. What's your approach here, sizing wise? Are you going like three quarters pot? I'm um, going pretty big here. Yeah. Probably up closer to the size of the pot. Yeah. Looks like she checks. 
and she gets OFC to stab for a small sizing. Mm, interesting. Yeah, she might just want to be controlling the pot a little bit bad. with how much they have behind. And the fact OFC limp calls, yeah, he does have draws, but he's also got some oh, really wow. strong. He gets hands. there on the river. Whoa. He gets there on the river. With the wheel. Rivering a wheel. Let's see what sizing that OFC is going to go for. Go with here. He's going to go big, value. Whoa. Swoops those yellow chips into the pot. 2,500, yeah. 2,500, and it's going to be really tough for Kim to get away for that price. Yeah, I feel like and she's going to have to call. Like Ace five. Yeah, she's blocking hands like yeah. Ace-5, exactly. I could see him conceivably value betting a worse hand than her, like a King X of clubs. I mean, I don't know how she could possibly get away from this hand here. A um, lot of draws is still missed. He could even be, like, her hand is so underrepped. He could he could be going for value with a hand like, you know, king ten of clubs or, yeah. or something yeah, like that. So. Totally so she, agree. She potentially beats some value here. Um, he bet about, like, two-thirds pot on the river. You can't it's blame her for making this call. Here. Yeah, it's not I that mean, I would be snap inside. calling here if I yeah. was Kim. This yeah. is props to her for, for giving it this much thought. No doubt. The three fills the ace five. It she also fills the five call. six. Yeah, and she pays it off. Yeah. Her instincts were right. Definitely think that could have been a bigger pot given the, the two hands. Oh, yeah. yeah, no doubt, dude. The fact yeah. that she slowed down and checked cold on the turn to protect her hand paid off because he wouldn't go in nowhere. No, he's and not. And this pot would have been anywhere. even bigger. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, she may not be feeling that right now. Like, yeah. thank goodness I checked on the turn, but yeah. but that was yeah. uh, definitely a stack saving play. Yeah, I think, she, and she does just call her. It makes sense. Um, I think she's hoping pre that OFC would put in the limp raise, given that her range looks fairly weak and um, Habib's stack is so short. Mm -hmm. And she knows OFC's aggressive and capable of doing it. So very tricky play. Definitely not tricky. Out there. I yeah. actually like the play. I just think I would probably choose a hand like Ace-King as opposed to Aces, because it just stinks right. so bad whenever he just calls. Yeah. <laughs> and like with Ace-King, it's not nearly as bad if he just calls. Right. But still, it's very two unconventionally played aces. Yeah. One of them shows you the upside of doing things unconventional as she maximizes. Yeah. And then in this one, it shows you the downside of doing unconventional For as sure. he realizes. And yeah, there's always a risk there. Mm -hmm. Sounds like Kitty's speaking a little Chinese at the table. I actually speak a little Chinese myself. Do you know that? Yeah. I did not know that. Yeah. I know. So what is she saying? I actually wasn't listening to what she said. Oh, fair enough. But I bet I could have could have understood. I'm, I'm guessing it was probably something pretty simple. Is that something you've been working on recently or something you... Probably for about three years. Three years? Okay. Yeah. My was vocabulary that, that actually... To um, be able to speak? Did you want to learn a different language or... Um... Uh, I dated a Chinese girl. Okay. Really so, enjoyed it. That makes Just like sense. hearing the language and being around it, try to pick up a few words. And then, um, yeah, it just became a hobby. And now my vac vocabulary acquisition is a little slow, but I probably know like seven or 800 words. Oh, wow. That's a lot. That's, that's, that's a lot. That's a that's lot. Pretty solid. Yeah, I can speak a little bit. So, um, looks like Kim's getting after here, betting the river. And I think this is going to work. Both her opponents have king high. Mm. Nice hand, Kim. Yeah, yeah 2,000 out there, too. Shows it. Yeah. So nice to scoop nice one hand. like that right yeah, after losing nice. a big yeah. pot. Get the bluff through right afterwards. So did you learn mostly from the girl you were dating, or did you, like, no. study on an app? Actually, or? I didn't really start learning when I was dating that girl. So afterwards? Afterwards. <laughs> I just kind of got funny. interested in it because of that. That's interesting. Um, yeah, and it's just... Just was introduced to the idea of learning it, I guess. Very cool. Um, so what app did you use to? Um, no apps. Just okay. watch YouTube videos. Okay. Um, mostly 
like watching vocabulary videos where they just like speak sentences over and over again and then also took some online lessons very cool so yeah and i'm actually dating a little chinese girl now so there you go. Yeah, yeah we just practice speaking together every there you day go. <laughs> yeah yeah we have a blast dude that's awesome it's one of my favorite parts of the day is whipping out a little chinese making some chinese mm -hmm. yeah that's awesome yeah, I feel like it might be the most useful second language to learn. I would think yeah. so, yeah. Maybe Spanish being here in America, but that's a plan after this one. Yeah. And Chinese is the second most frequently spoken language in the world and kind of the business language of the future, maybe. I agree with that, yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah I feel like it used to be Spanish, but now it's um, becoming a lot more. You know, yeah. Oh, it looks dude. Looks like Frankie with his first hand he's in. Um, looks like he opened under the gun one. He gets a lead here from Yao, a flop from LFC, and coming in with the raise. Pretty sweet spot flop in middle set mm -hmm. versus this lineup. Yeah, it's interesting when the board is rainbow. It's like a little bit harder to come up with natural bluff combos. I'm not sure how Yao's going to perceive that. If he's going to give Frankie a lot of credit here, he does have top pair. I like the raise versus these players. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're, they're both sticky. Um, he folds. Yeah, he does fold. Wow, what a fold top pair. What a fold. fold. Great fold by Yao. He says respect, and Frankie's yeah. like, don't give me respect. Oh, no. Give me your money. <laughs> yeah, Frankie's like, I don't want respect. I don't want chips. Yeah. Um, OFC with some backdoor equity, too. Yeah, got, her, got her to straight. Batter, backdoor club is going to lay it down as well. Mm -hmm. Discipline fold there by both players. No doubt. Yeah, and Frankie not. Props to Yao for yeah. getting away from that so easily. I don't think, the, you know, I think it's the first. I'm Again, I've been out of the booth for a few of the hands, but he hasn't been, you know, raising three betting too much tonight, correct? Say that one more time. Said so he hasn't been raising or three betting tonight. Yeah, or Frankie. Frankie. Uh, Frankie's only been in a handful of spots. Okay. I think he just limped with the two sevens there. Okay. So he definitely has a lot of the two pair combos, a lot of the sets there. Um, all of the sets. Yeah. I don't know how. Well, well, I don't even it's a 9-7 suited. Okay, that, it's like a 9-7-4. Oh, okay. Yeah, so. So he should have too many two-pair combos. 9-7 suited is definitely well, a possibility. Jay went on the button with the Queens. Just going to call a 25 looking for somebody to... Wow, everyone been very trapping tonight. Limping yeah. the butt, over limping the butt. Now that is, is that is very, something very that is creative. not in my game. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. I, at that point, I'm going to go for the race. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It would just make me very sad if something like this happened. He's trying to trap Yao specifically here, yeah. I guess. Yeah, very definitely going after but Yao. I think that's too much when you've yeah. got three limpers and you're trying to trap the small blind into yes. raising. <laughs> too creative. <laughs> and now he gets outflopped by King Three offsuit. Oh, we're gonna no. see him call at least one hundred here. He does. It's gonna be a tough spot for him on the river if draws do break out. But it'll probably help him that there were um, so many players in the right. spot. Makes it a lot more likely that somebody has a king. Oh, wow. King on the end is going to embolden oh, Jay Win. That's a brutal card there for Jay Win. Yeah. And OFC going for the overbet here yeah, when all the draws miss. I think this is a very under bluff spot. And is Mustafa, Mustafa cutting out a raise? <laughs> oh, man. Wow. <laughs> he just keeps Stop adding it. on to it. Oh, oh this and is then a little oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I love the flash right now. I love oh, it. Oh, boy. Oh, <laughs> <did he> uh -oh. <laughs> oh, Mustafa. What a move. Where have you been? <laughs> Do you think that could have possibly worked? We've already seen OFC give him some credit. I don't think OFC is the type to, to lay down trips here on this type of board, given yeah. the way that the hand was played. And uh, looks like Jay Wynn did not pick up on the body language here. He's paying off OFC. I don't fault him, though, at all. Did not pick Paris. up on the yeah. body language. I <laughs> love that. OFC. Uh, Jay Wynn's got to read more of that book. OFC. <laughs> Next getting chapter. OFC over betting there, getting max value with his trip kings. I was going to say, I think that's an under bluff spot. Mm. Right. When the draws miss and someone over bets the river when the top card pairs. I feel like they have it a lot. Mm. I've actually made some pretty tight folds myself in that spot. Yeah, and the nice thing for OFC is that he gets to use that image, and maybe he's not ever actually bluffing there, but just his image ends up getting him paid off. Yeah, I know that OFC does like to use overbets um, 
for value. So you see it, you see it working out there. Look at these VIP, V pips. I'm gonna yeah. go back to yeah, those after this. Again. Yeah, after this hand. Hayden's favorite hand, ace, ace nine offsuit. Yes. <laughs> I got berated for busting a WSOP event with this hand mm. by multiple Facebook trolls. Uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> that are telling now me, that are me, not, not friends on Facebook. Telling me that how much how much uh, studying I need to do. As I shove 13 blinds, six handed under the gun with ace nine off. Six handed. With 19 left. Yeah, yeah well, but you're six handed though, right? Or seven handed? We're six handed. Yeah. Well, they thought I was. They thought it was full ring. Yeah. Which would have been a bad shove. Can you and tell me one more time? I sh uh, six handed yeah. under the gun with ace nine off, with about, I want to say I had 12 and a half or 13 bigs. Yeah. And Seems it was, pretty reasonable. Yeah. It's the, it's the bottom of your shoving range. There wasn't a. It was definitely the bottom. My worst ace x that I'm shoving at. Uh, off suited. It's definitely not worthy of a troll. No. Yeah. No. Really. It was like. I yeah. had some respectable players coming to my defense. Most of the people that were trolling me had like a thousand dollars in hand and mob caches. Yeah, I got you. Know? you. Yeah. <laughs> and your low jack. So if it was an actual under the gun, then I would probably agree with them. But yes, it would be bad. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I would agree with them also. That was an inside so I, joke so, for two months. So there were like 300 <laughs> comments on this post. Whoa. Yeah. And it was only, I think it was something that Kim posted or I posted and it had this the only reason they knew the hand history because it had the snapshot from um, from Poker News that actually said the action yeah. that I shoved. Oh. So obviously everyone was commenting on it, and I came in at the I, there were like 300 comments, and I came in at the end. I said that I had to suck out multiple times that tournament with Ace Nine offsuit just to make it that far, <laughs> <laughs> and that I was going to hit the lab. Thank you. <laughs> That's funny. A lot of chat pros in the world. Oh yeah. yeah. So. Jaywin just checking this board. Um, and he yeah. checked folds versus Kim. Yeah, I mean, that's a good board. That's a better board yeah. for Kim's yeah. uh, button defending range right there. Yeah, I'd have to do the same thing. Yeah. Surprised to see him check fold there. He doesn't have a backdoor flush draw, but um, versus that small of a bet, I'd be very tempted to call at least one time. Oh, I didn't even see how big she went. She bet 100 and like 350. Yeah. 75. Yeah. He yeah. opened a 150, 150 yeah. on, a, on a $50 straddle, yeah. and she, she defends the button. Yeah. He checks her on the flop. And then she bets 100 into 350, and he folds. Yeah. Mm. I also missed a nice little squeeze spot from Frankie there while we were chatting as Yao opened ace nine off on the button. Kim flatted, and then Frankie squeezed the big blind with the king-queen off. Oh, I did miss that one. 100, 100, 600, and he got respect from both of them. Nice. Frankie with the respect. Frankie with the respect. Yeah, Yao folding with the button. What did Yao fold? Ace nine off. Ace nine off. Okay, that's yeah. right. Yeah, we just talked. Wow. He shook his head though, so I could tell that he's like sort of at the verge of being, like at the end of giving Frankie a lot of credit, yes. <laughs> and like maybe yeah, on the next he's one. Over it. He's <laughs> yeah, over he's over it, it yeah. exactly. <laughs> Again, for those of you in the chat, thank you. We're about halfway through this stream. 100 viewers in the chat. Our biggest game here, 5, 10, 25, featuring Miss Kitty Co, Frankie from Next Gen, OFC, Habib, Mustafa, Texas Kim, Jaywin, Joe Sebring, and Yao. So continue to like, share, and subscribe. Help us grow this channel. We appreciate all your help, your love, and support. Is Kitty's last name K U O? Yeah, but okay. I don't know if I'm still. In, I don't know if I'm pronouncing. I think I, it. I think I can give you some Chinese expertise here. Okay. That it is Kua. 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 Kitty Kua. Kitty Kua. I got it. Love it. Poker Monkey. Actually, they both did. Chris Larkin busted in twelfth. Hayden busted in eleventh, and Kim busted in tenth. I like know. literally within five <laughs> within five minutes of each other. I thought one of us would make the final table. Oh, look at this! What a flop for Kim. Flop bottom pair. It's a nut flush draw. 
Frank keep flopping middle pair, but has no heart in his hand. If Kim bets here, it's going to be a tough continue for Frank here. He's got Mustafa behind him, too. Yeah, I It's nice not. when you have the button to help you realize the equity of these hands, but he just folds. I don't fault the fold at all. I think first a lot of Kim's betting range there, he's, he's in pretty rough shape. He's usually betting there with equity three ways. Are you peeling there, or do you think you're... My instinct okay. was to peel, Yeah. Um, just having the button. I think I would probably just check and fold out of position in a three-way pot. Right. Um, but, yeah, just the fact that I can kind of dictate what happens on the turn a little bit. But I, I definitely don't mind just giving it up either when you got another player left to act. I think it depends on the opponent that's betting, too. Sure. Yeah, and Kim especially. Like, the hands that you can beat are likely to come again. Right, exactly. You know? So Yeah, yeah. If, she, you sh if she has, like... A single heart or ace hearts, she's usually betting twice, and now you're going to be in a really tough spot with your jack. Mm -hmm. So don't mind minimizing the, the loss and just folding on the flop at all. It's like Frankie's thinking about going for the ISO here with my favorite hand. Mm -hmm. He goes for a big ISO, 300. Yeah, I like that. If you're going to go, I think you got to oh, go. You definitely want to get this hand heads up. Oops. And uh, Frankie invited Katie Look at that out smile. here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Frank gotcha. <laughs> Got him. Yeah. Frankie inviting Kitty out here to uh, three better three better with a uh, pocket. Oh wow! Kings. It looks. And she goes for a large sizing even against Frankie. Yeah, she's, that surprises she's me. She's going for a big sizing against everybody. Yeah. Maybe it's a friendly three bet. Just like, hey, get out of my pot. Maybe. I got it. You that, know? that or she knows yeah. Texas players are loose, and she knows yeah. they make they may call light. Maybe so. maybe she, maybe she thinks. Uh, Just thought against Frankie, she might. Maybe she thinks the players down. have rubbed off on Frankie a little bit. I don't know. Mm. <laughs> oh, Mustafa wants to know their history before he decides <laughs> on his ace <laughs> Just I what love, am I getting into here? <laughs> I love the posturing from Mustafa. He's just he's so much fun at the table. And Frankie's just gonna get out of the way here. Oh yeah, she told him I just. She just told him I'm not folding. <laughs> She's being very friendly. She's. She's got the Cowboys. She's in Texas. She's got the Cowboys. Yeah, she's giving Let's Frankie go. the eyes too. Yeah, this is going well. Let's go, Frankie. <laughs> Let's go, Frankie. Next gen. <laughs> Next gen. <laughs> John Stockton. Woo! <laughs> He's going to go back and listen to this. And yeah. Be like, oh, my God. Well, you know what? I think we can joke about it because the previous live stream they played on together, there was so much uh, heavy flirting going on. That tension, tension, right? You, I mean, it was like the talk of the stream. Was it really? What I was it? Yeah. I, I need Just to go Kitty back flirting that. with Frankie the entire time. I, Let's I go am Frankie. Saying she, <laughs> she needed to take him shopping, and they were going on a date. And All right. Next thing you know, <laughs> she's in Dallas. <laughs> yeah. Well, Frankie using his uh, magical powers to bring uh, <laughs> Kitty here. <laughs> Let's go, Frankie. Magic Frank. <laughs> I need to watch that stream now. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Yeah, now I gotta go back and watch it for sure. For sure. And we got the two ladies heads up here, Kitty and Kim. Kim's got the best of it. Yeah, this is a yeah, and this is a good flop for Kim's range. Yeah, um, we might see Kitty choose to check back this hand, and she does mm -hmm. very quickly. Oh, yeah, bad bad turn card for Kim. But she does have a diamond. She has a diamond. Oh, very she surprised to see Kitty check there. <laughs> and uh, nice hand there for Kitty. Surprised to see her check the turn, check back the turn there. Yeah, especially snap check. She didn't even think about it for yeah, a second. Yeah, she doesn't have a diamond in her hand, so Kim is tricky. Maybe she's a little concerned about being check raised there. Mm -hmm. Especially if she watched the last stream, her check raised that uh, that river versus GA, so definitely capable. <laughs> yeah, I would assume that she's probably betting it sometimes and checking it sometimes, yeah. opponent dependent. For sure. Looks like she went for the delay delay. I think I see Eddie here loading up the freebie points for you guys. 1,500 points for 1500 everybody. 1,500 points. Chatter Eddie. Let's go. Yeah, they call me the Texas Oprah. <laughs> you get points. You, you get, get points. Everybody gets points. <laughs> ah! Man, what a guy. Shout out. Surprised to see OFC check back this flop here. 
the gut shot in the backdoor flush draw. And he's snap calling this turn bet. Yeah, I'm surprised too. I mean, it feels like that's a range betting board and then you've got the perfect hand candidate to bet with. Yeah. And uh, if Yao bets this river, he is going to win. He doesn't know that he is bluffing with the best hand. But I actually like this betting this turn card. I think it connects with some of Yao's range. Now we're probably going to see OFC stab here. I like the small sizing. Um, I don't really think that he's just trying to fold out Yao's like the weakest part of his range. Like, I think Yao is going to call with a nine or even like a middling pair, regardless of OFC size. So I like just going for the small size there, mm. getting some hands, like random ace highs and queen highs to fold out. I'm feeling like OFC having that hand, he puts in $200 on the turn as a call. I would just much rather use that $200 as a C bet. Yeah. And if we're going to put in that much anyway, now we have the option to check back on the turn. Right. If you check raises, that's not a big deal. Mm -hmm. Our hand sucks. But OFC kind of played his hand like as a nine or like a middling showdown value hand. Yeah. Going for checking back the flop, going for thin value on the river. Yeah. That's maybe the first it's not, thing I think. Maybe it's not range oriented to think that way, but I just feel like if I'm going to put $200 in this pot, I'd rather do it with some fold equity instead of floating with a gut I shot. I 100% agree with you. So it looks like Frankie's going to limp over the straddle. Yeah, and Yao. A couple more limps. Kim calls 300 in the dark. Wow. She calls from the kitchen, so to speak. She called from the kitchen. <laughs> And she's going to be sad to see she's got Jack 3 offsuit. Uh, <laughs> she, oh, she, yeah. she, th she thought the 50 was on, right? Is that what happened? Yeah, and OFC limping under the gun. Um, is thinking is probably going to think about using this hand as a, um, a limp raise, but he does just call. Would Frankie ever think about making a move here? No, I think Frankie's never going to do it. Not a good hand candidate. And uh, OFC just shoves the rest of his money in here. Very viable. I don't think he has, he's going to be able to open up the action, which is, is unfortunate it? for him. Are you sure? Because it was a 200 raise, so he would need 450. Oh, he either has 450 or 440. He, he does have 440, so he's short by uh, 490. Four. Because he already had 50 out there. So he's got 440 more. Okay, I think the dealer. So raised to 200, raised 200. I feel more. like the dealer just announced 440. Oh. Yeah. I could I don't be think, announcing it's 440 more. I don't think it quite opens it up. Uh, 190 it more. It was 190 more. Yeah. So it needed $10 off. More. Yeah, $10 off. Yeah, and I bet... Uh, calling here. Yeah, I was probably wishing that he had paid a little bit more attention there. Yeah. Kept it open for himself and then just reached off. Or maybe but, yeah, I'm happy to build the pot. And wow, Kim flopping Jackson threes here. <laughs> <laughs> what a spot for her. And she I calls her in the kitchen. <laughs> and does she even look at her hand? I mean, I think spot? now she has. I think. So I'd like to. And oh my gosh, she Whoa. turns. <laughs> oh, she's about to stack Habib again. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh, and, poor Habib. He's got to be feeling so good. And she now is looking at her hand and checking. I like the check here from her. <laughs> Trying to let somebody catch something. Yeah. Queen. Ace on the river. Eight gives and, a, a, a oh, oh. oh, He improves to a better full house. And Kim. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. And Kim going to lose and, this pot. How does that happen? And, oh, and the beef. Kim taking that beat like a champ.
sounds like Kim's not even mad. She's just thankful <laughs> that it was the short stack all in who had the ace jack as opposed to one of those other guys that might have created a $15,000 pot right there. Yeah. Because if any of those other guys in that pot had the ace jack, we would have seen all the chips go in. For sure. And in a way, kind of happy for Habib. He's oh, for sure, yeah. He deserved tough it. Tough spots. He's, yeah, he's had a tough stream so far. Oh, that would have been the third time <laughs> that Kim got him. Yeah. <laughs> Kitty coming in here. So she goes for a big sizing here with the Queen 8 suited. Mm-hmm. It's like she was just going for a big sizing with everything. Yeah. She picks up Yao. Yeah, watching Kitty play is actually showing me maybe a little bit of a fault in my own game, which is that when I'm playing smaller stakes, let's say 2-5 or especially 1-2, one, 1-3 one, games, like I too will just disregard the blinds in effect and basically just bet to achieve the configuration that I want to get into. Mm -hmm. But when I move up in stakes, because the money that's in the blinds starts personally impacting my day-to-day -day more, or my bankroll or whatever, like let's say in this game where there's $40 in the pot to start the hand, like I will start adjusting my strategy to be more of a blind-oriented strategy. I'm opening multiples of the blind to, in part, steal the blind. Right. Sort of like a deep in a tournament strategy. Right. Right. But really, Kitty's like, this money still doesn't matter to me. I'm treating it like it is my one-two, and I'm betting whatever I think I need to to get these guys in the pot with me. For sure, I love it. Yeah, I do I too. It's, it's been nice to watch her play. And you also, there's also an element to it that you get the table used to calling larger race sizes because these guys don't don't want to fold. So if mm -hmm. you start just increasing your bet sizing and using larger chips, larger denominations, they just get accustomed to playing pots of that size, which is really what you want. No doubt. Yeah. And you they, know, you they maybe get your pots. That's how you make more money. Yeah, they kind of get taken off of their guard in terms of like not being surprised by it anymore. And then oh, sure. it's just how much she raises to. Yeah, absolutely. It becomes standard. Yeah. You know. And Mustafa hasn't done much tonight, but he came in for a race here with the 6 4 offsuit. Yeah, Plus just kind of sprinkles that in. And he mixes it up. He does <laughs> random stuff like this. Just a feeling, I guess. Yeah. And good board for him to represent. I think his C bet here will take the spot down. I'm surprised to see him check back. Kitty's definitely going to want to get the show down here. We'll stop it. Yeah, and he's going to let her off the hook, huh? Yeah, I think it's going to be tough for him to win the pot at this point, given that he's checked twice. Yeah. And he uh, he just checks down with his 6 eye. <laughs> Kitty's going to be very happy to win this pot on this board. Yeah, it looks like his game plan was more based around like trying to bet boards that are better for his hand as opposed to better for his range. For sure. Not a good board for 6-4, so give it up. We're still cruising over 100 of you guys in the chat. Love having you along for the ride here. Please click the like button for us. Helps us get sprayed out into the algorithm so we can bring more of you in. Grow the stream. Get more epic lineups like this. For sure. Thank you guys so much for being with us. And watching this, we've been up over 100 pretty much the whole yeah, last hour or so. Really solid. Yeah, no, not bad. Really solid. Loving all the interaction in the chat box too. Keep it coming. Might try and go to it a little more often here in the back half. Love interacting with the chat. You guys are the reason we're doing this. Here we got Yao raising it up from the hijack. Couple of calls. Mustafa connecting hard with the 6-4 oh, this yeah. time. yeah, bang, bang. Just hoping someone has an ace. Yeah. They don't this time, but Yao's not slowing down. He thinks he still has the best hand sometimes. No, I like the C-bet from Yao on this board as a pre-flop raiser. 
you want to deny equity with your fives, and um, you don't mind just taking the pot down here. Mm -hmm. But he is. I think when he gets a call from Mustafa, I mean he. Mustafa just leads. Leading out here. Great play. It's like you can see Yao's cards right here. Yeah, really wanting to get max value from an ace. Doesn't want an ace to check back. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that uh, Yao picked up a gut shot here is definitely tempted to continue. I want to have this line as a more fluid line in my game, actually. I wouldn't say that I never do it, but I very rarely like have the plan to check call lead with a hand like this. It's it's a very uncommon on a board like this where where like the turn card isn't ever really going to change mm -hmm. on a board like four four ace. Like, you know, do you approach playing your chips here just as like a check raise more often, or you know, check call, or it kind of depends on your maybe some your on opponent. the opponent, maybe yeah. leaning towards check raising because I want to punish them for betting a board where I'm going to have more fours. Right. Um, I, I don't even remember the preflop action, but just yeah. assuming that I have more fours than the opponent. Right. Probably lean towards, towards check towards raising. Check raise, yeah. Just because I don't have much leading in my game, so then it becomes awkward to try and get the money in. Uh, yeah. You know? For sure. When it's rainbow, I might lean more towards check calling. Right. Two-tone boards. Mm -hmm. Love check raising. Love there. check raising, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm with you there. <clears throat> But I think against opponents that tend to pot control and like check back the turn a lot, even yeah, with their strongest exactly. aces, you might as well start getting the money in. Right. You exactly. don't want to give them the chance to check back. Yeah, the only problem is. I guess is you could go for the check call, check, check raise river. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some people, but. Yeah, and they'll bite on it sometimes. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's not that bad. I mean, I feel like then at the end, they feel like they got a price to go to showdown. Right. So as opposed to like kind of calling out in deep waters on the flop versus a check raise, now they're like, well, I know what I got to pay to see his hand. Right, right. And uh, Yao really does not want to let this one go. I think it's be partially because the bet size was so large. I think mm -hmm. it was a little smaller. Might see Yao probably continue there with the call. Yeah. Do you think he's just going to always continue with an ace versus that size? I think he would have a really hard time getting away from an ace. I yeah. think he's... I think he's probably calling with an ace, especially, you know, his strongest aces. Mm -hmm. It's just, yeah, just very un unconventional line in general. So definitely hard to put Mustafa on a four there. Possibly he could have a hand. Maybe he could turn a wheel with a line like that. <laughs> yeah, and I saw Mustafa was U1. I don't think it said straddle, so I'm guessing so he, he must have limp called. Limp called, yeah. Yeah. The chat's wanting to hear some uh, some Chinese. Yeah, Brian Davis <laughs> asking me to speak a little Chinese. Is that your buddy, Brian Davis? Yeah, it is. Brian is a absolutely local legend of a player. Let's go. Yeah, dude, he's been crushing the games in the DFW Metroplex and at the casinos in Oklahoma for a long, long time. Great player, great friend of mine. Thanks for coming, Brian. Nice to have you here. Thanks for being with us. No doubt. Maybe I'll sprinkle in some Chinese in a minute if something happens with Kitty. Just as a little uh, celebration of her since she's joining us from Taiwan, I believe. Yeah. I think she lives in Vegas now, though. Yeah, I saw she had yeah. that place in Vegas, place but in Vegas. I think she was telling Frankie at the WPT that she spends a lot of time in Taiwan playing okay. underground games there. Interesting. So maybe she's got a place in both and just kind of swings back and forth. Interesting. Christian Linza saying the stream is rocking. Are you here in the room, Chris? I think I saw your name on the board out there. It says Chris, three S's. I know Jackie P is in the room. Appreciate you guys coming to support. Support the stream, support Frankie. Support us here in the booth. And support the games and the awesome action here at Poker House of Dallas. For sure, appreciate you guys being with us. It's like Kim, limping, limping stronger than the gun again, limping with Ace King. 
The hunter is on. Yeah, dude. There's everybody only eight is dicks getting effective. crafty tonight. Oh yeah, my goodness. Everyone looks like the, a lot of adopting similar strategies here. Mm. They're fake hands. <laughs> Looks like we're going to see Yao bump it up here with the seven deuce. And look at Kim. Yao going for the raise and Kim pointing out before Yao raised that she limped under the gun and Yao did it anyways. <laughs> and he bumps it up to 2100. What just happened? With seven deuce. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> oh my god. I don't think they're playing the seven deuce game. And Kim just rips it with the ace king. I love the rip here. She's got 80 bigs. Wow. Wow. Slam dunk after you've trapped him like this. I cannot believe he just walked into play. that. Yeah. And Yao knows, Yao knows he's just <laughs> walked and look into at it. And the ace jack might have had similar thoughts. But I think he's going to, after Kim shoves here, I think we're going to see him get away from this. He yeah. does like to posture a little bit. Yeah. Um, there's, there's no way. There's no way Yao's going to call here. But Yeah. He knows in general Kim is pretty solid in these spots. Yeah. But I mean, what a what a great player! What a great player by Kim. She ice, she gets to isolate the seven deuce. Um, you know, she doesn't care if he folds, and she really doesn't care if he calls at yeah. this point. She's happy to take down the right. spot. There's about twenty five hundred in the middle. No doubt, dude. This is a great spot for her. Taking down twenty five hundred without seeing a flop, you can't beat that. You know. <laughs> wow. What a tough spot for Mustafa. Yeah. Talking some trash, saying if you have six four suited and you're wasting our time, I'm gonna murder you. If he actually had six four suited, he would have pretty good equity. <laughs> yeah, actually, would have pretty decent <laughs> equity in this spot. Yeah. It's always interesting to me how close the equities can run when there's multiple players in the yeah, pot. For sure. You see Jay Wayne's got 25%, his fair share here with 8-7 sure, offsuit. Yeah. And Kim only 37. Let's turn up the table talk. I think we're going to have some interesting dynamics. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> and me and Yao did get it all in pre. I put the 160 on and we got it in pre. <laughs> Kim, Kim wants to take it. Yeah, one, 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 yeah. Just posturing, gonna lay it down. I think he might call. He's he's committed over half a stack yeah. here. Yeah, it'd be hard for me to fold here. Yeah. Ah. I mean, he put in twenty one hundred. He's suited though, right? He's got about he's got about twenty six hundred behind. Oh, twenty six. He might lay it Maybe down. Maybe I would fold then. If I only had twenty one, I don't think I could get away from it. I already told you. I take your twenty one easy. She's talking trash. Oh, she'd be thrilled just to pick up this 21 right here. You see those equities still, she's even... She's telling him he can pick one card, I think, after the hand. I love this table talk between Cal, uh, Yao and Kim. This is, why players, oh. this is why players like Yao play the game. Oh! And Yao oh, wait, 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 turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. Here we go, boys. <laughs> I love it. We got $9,000 in the middle. Welcome to Poker House Live. You just tuned in. We got a $9,000 pot with seven deuce suited versus ace king off. They're going two times, I think. Kitty just lose respect for me. I are you scared? <laughs> <laughs> got a lot of trash talkers out there. Oh, oh man. It was a... Oh, oh get out of the river. Wow. <laughs> Kitty, Kitty's rooting for Kim. <laughs> Let me just free roll, okay? I have the best hand. Oh, oh my God. God. Flop for Yao. Wow. Only wasted one, one heart up top. And two live cards. Oh, oh my God. God. He's got 48% equity. <laughs> Oh, oh, she made it! Oh my God! <laughs> what a scoop! <laughs> scoop this pot! Now over nearly three thousand, up to thirteen k. 
Woodley, I think Yao just re replaced you as my favorite player. Just no offense or nothing, Woodley. Shout out to Yao for, for calling it off there correctly at that point with the seven deuce. He had yeah. the equity to do so. No doubt. Shout out for making the play. Shout out for making the call. I love it. All right, he let's definitely take... could have won both boards. <laughs> yeah. Let's take a look at these winnings real quick. Let's stack sizes first. Man, I need a break after that hand. <laughs> Got OFC with about 16K. Kim with 13K. Kitty with about 8,500. She's up for the day. Jay Win, Joe, Habib, Mustafa all under 5K. Here's the cumulative winnings thus far. Willie, you're my second favorite. OFC up about 9,100. Kim now up 8K. Kitty still 3,500. Frankie up 500. All the other players down. Jaywin, Yao, Habib, 5K, 6,200, and 9K respectively among those three players. Action pack table here. Oh, yeah. Picking it up. Hand 58. Uh oh, are, are they playing the seven deuce game or no? I don't think so. Okay, but Kim is in there. <laughs> That's why I'm wondering what's going She's on. She's riding the heater, dude. <laughs> well, a lot of her deuces are out, so oh, Khabib gonna make it. Habib with the best hand, King High. He always ran it twice, though. No, 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 no. So I said we don't play seven deuce again. Why are you want to put a two pin in? Because he want to just hurt somebody. And also, he already put a two pin in. You know, I'm not poking poker. I know that. All right, guys. Anything exciting happened when I was gone? Nah, nothing. Not no, yet. No, nothing of nothing of importance. Just went Watching outside. Stack up all those chips. Took some deep breaths. <laughs> Ready to get back in here. <laughs> oh boy. All right, gonna be running a flip on this dealer change. Woodley saying Yao is his new favorite player. Yeah. Eddie hit him with a little. He agrees. Yeah, yeah I agree too. Definitely love watching Yao. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look. Oh, Kim with top set right now. Uh, let's see all these cards as they get registered to Kim. Uh, who has what? Who has the next best equity after her? Oh, see, turning a flush draw. Okay. Looks like there's some straight draws out there. And no one has Queen Jack, so Kim said aces are going to hold up. All right. So she's going to scoop this, this flip. That's always nice. Yeah. Add a little $800 oh, yeah. on your stack. Nice little, yeah. nice little boost to win the, those flips. I think that's where all of Frankie's profit is coming from so far tonight was winning one of those flips. Was, was it? Won the PLO To be honest, this this entire table is full of like 
I wouldn't blame anyone for like any player at this table saying that that's my favorite player. <laughs> right. This this table is full of that's my favorite player that's candidates. That's my favorite players. <laughs> yeah. Everyone is a re very reasonable candidate here for that's my favorite player. No doubt, I'm with a you. A lot of heroes at this table. A lot of players that are fun to watch. Amazing stream so far. And again, nearly oh, nearly 110 viewers. Thank you for tuning in. 8 p.m. Central Time here in Dallas, Texas. Poker House Live. 5, 10, 25 Friday night. Yeah, we've been going steady on the over 100 views. Yeah. Thank you so much for being with us, guys. Hit that like and subscribe button. Yeah, and share this out. We're trying to go like 130, 140, yeah, 150 go. range, boys. We know we're capable. Yeah. Now, Nick, you've kind of you know, been a part of the live stream in the sense of helping the next-gen boys. What do you think about the quality of the stream over the past, like, three months of where it's... Oh, well, Eddie, it's improved yeah. so much, my man. We have gone from feeling like there was consistent uh, technical issues, yep. getting the, the action tracker right, getting all of the equipment working. We've made progress each and every week. Even things like the thumbnail. This week's thumbnail was absolutely epic yeah. compared to previous weeks. Well, Frankie did a great job with that. No doubt. And uh, I'm expecting it to be better and better going forward. New equipment additions, yep. upgrades. Um, and then, of course, these epic lineups, which is the, the meat and potatoes of the stream. Yep. And, uh, yeah. Also, just us getting a little more experience here in the booth. And... Kind of learning the ropes, learning yep. how to work the equipment, uh, learning how to not trip over our own words repeatedly. Yeah. <laughs> or in Knox's case, tripping over wires, unplugging the... Ooh, yeah. got him. Yeah, sorry, got not, him. Sorry, not, he unplugged <laughs> he something. the entire stream? <laughs> yeah, he unplugged... Oh, they, no. they, they, they had to reboot. <laughs> yeah, that was tough. There you go. Kim flopping top pair, though, but nine of clubs coming on, bringing in she back to her space. She two pair. Yeah. But, uh... She, Mustafa floats one time on the flop and she takes it down. Mighty Hammer dropping us with a nice little comment there. Says it's been a good mix of table game talking, or table, sorry, game table talk, commentary and action. Absolutely perfect. Appreciate that so much. I appreciate the compliment, Mighty Hammer. You and Sassy after going back to Montana, come back down to Dallas. Love to have you back. So is Kitty living in Vegas or California? I just saw something on her Instagram where she was posting that she had a new place in Vegas. Okay. I'm not sure if it's a permanent residence, if she lives there most of the time, or if she's just kind of vibing wherever at the time and Got it. just needs a spot in Vegas. Okay. I've also heard her talk about being in Taiwan pretty okay. frequently and playing poker over there and maybe some home games and stuff. Got it. Plays a lot of tournaments, too. Mm. I don't know if she still plays a lot of tournaments, but I know she's usually out there for the series, plays WPTs and stuff. So. Nice. She's got some results under her belt, for sure. For sure. I mean, she's a well-known name in the com community. Yeah, very accomplished player. I had heard of her several times before I had actually come into contact with Frankie knowing her. Oh, okay. Sassy trying to get in the shooting range with you guys. Yeah, she's gone with us before. Nice, that's fun. You got to come with us one time. Might be willing to do that. Yeah. Yeah, you didn't come that day. It was me, Knock, Jack, Mighty Hammer, Sassy, and Min's daughter. We shot the scar like like on two or three different occasions now. Mm -hmm. And guys, uh, Yao raised it up out of the blind here, flopping bottom two pair. Oh my gosh. And OFC flopping the nut flush draw. Making the call, and Joe has top pair. Um, quite an action flop here. Definitely gonna see Joe at least call one bet here. A tough spot for him. Like the offsuit jack would be a oh, swing and card. Oh, OFC's there. Yeah, OFC getting there right away on the turn. Yeah. And Yao very wisely uh, slows down. OFC checks as well. Oh, man, and that card is going to save these guys. Yeah, that's going to save Yao a lot of money. Now Yao really doesn't beat much um, yeah, on this river. Yeah, can't beat an ace, a six, or especially spades. Yeah. And it's a big bet from OFC. 
tough spot. Yeah, and maybe just like, targeting a straight. Yeah, and I think OFC missed a little value there by not betting the turn. Mm -hmm. I think if you bet the turn, uh, yeah, I was going to call at least one more time. That's a $200 deck, yo. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, nice lay down by Yao. Well played hand by Yao. Oh, maybe. Oh. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> yeah, it's a little tricky. <laughs> Acting like he's falling. With the angle. Pulls it back. OFC is like, please reconsider. <laughs> yeah. How epic would it be if he raised after doing that kind of table talk? Obviously, in this it's, spot, it would never work. But yeah, it's impossible because he flashes cards. Oh, okay. You know? I've always wanted to see someone, though, go for like that sort of like, I'm only calling or folding and the just like sigh. Uh, and yeah. Okay, I'm all in. <laughs> I know, I've thought about doing that myself. I've never done it. But yeah, it's hard to pull wondering. it off in the yeah. moment. Yeah. Especially if you're playing a huge pot like it this. It is because that natural reaction when, when you just have a call or fold spot is like to just, you know. Yeah. Let your kind of let your body language go a little bit, mm -hmm. and it'd be kind of hard if you're sitting there with the kind of hand you want to shove with. Yeah, to to just to fake it, just do that. Yeah. <laughs> oh god. Like it might just look too obvious, like acting. If you're and he does it. call. And yeah. he does call. Wow. wow. What it? Yeah, OFC's got to be really happy. He's having a great night so far. Yeah. Whoa. Really great. Over twenty k from Yao right there. Yeah. Yao still rolling the booth, no doubt, Mark. Got us. All right, let's take a look at some of these VPIP percentages. Who do you think's up top, guys? I'm going to probably oh, say Yao. What do you know? <laughs> <laughs> surprise, surprise. We got Yao top 65% VPIP, playing two out of three hands. Let's go, Yao. Kim 40%, OOC 37%. All the way down. To, Kitty got into the mix early on, kind of slowed down a bit the past hour or so. Jay Wynn, Joe, and Frankie haven't had too much of anything tonight. So hopefully in the back half of the stream, they'll start picking up those VPIP percentages. Mark, we saying Yao slow rolled the booth. I agree, Mark. Mark, he definitely slow rolled us there. Yeah, Biggie. <laughs> <he was> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we'd That's already moved on in a way. <laughs> much to OFC's uh, pleasant surprise that <laughs> yeah. made the call. Biggie definitely pulled up the chip counts after this hand along with cumulative winnings. Kim talking some trash to Jaywin. <laughs> Easiest blinds to steal. She's not folding. Yeah, neither is Yao. Yeah, Yao, Kim, and OFC are not the blinds that you want to be <laughs> playing against. <laughs> she tried to, she just like tried to warn you. Interesting flop. Kim flopping top pair on a monotone board. Checks around. Oh, oh that, wow. Yeah, I think this turn's just going to kill the action here. Super going to kill the action. Yeah, OFC going with the men bet. I don't think anyone can even call this bet with their holdings. All right. As requested, stacks... Oh, hands over, right? Yeah, hand, stack sizes. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know who that is, but that's an epic comment. Yeah. It's a little inside joke there. OC 20K, Kim about 14K, Kitty Court... Qua? Is that Qua? Is that how you say it? Am I saying it right? Qua. Qua, okay. Qua. It's got a resident expert. Yeah. Kitty Qua. 8,400. Frankie, 5K. All the way down to Yao, Joe Habib. All under 4K. Next hand will go cumulative winnings. Is that you, Daryl? Making that comment? <laughs> Cracking me up. Epic name Bather Water. <laughs> bather Water? Bather? Uh, ba bather, bather Water or Bather Water? Oh, look at Joe mixing it up here. Yeah, it comes in for a little ISO. Yeah, Joe getting after it. He's tired of folding. Frankie wanting to see a flop here. Sure, he will. Yeah. yeah he is going to peel. Oh, and Habib. And Habib coming in with the limp raise of 675. I like it. I like this candidate, too, as yep. a bluff, as you as yeah, we were talking about earlier. 100% with you. Yeah. And Frankie thinking, he dang puts, it, puts, the one time I try and sneak in there, I get yeah. punished. <laughs> we'll probably see Joe fold, but I do not think we're going to see uh, Yao. I think yeah. Yao is at the very least going to peel here. Mm -hmm. And rightfully so. He's got suited ace. He's on the button. He's in position. 
I gotta say, one of the hard things since I've been playing more cash in tournaments is when I play tournaments, like, I've got, like, 30 bigs or something, like, folding to a 3-bet with, like, a suited ace or, like, 9-10 mm. suited type hand. Like, she might as well bomb it. It just feels so wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just want to see the flop, man. Yeah. No doubt. <laughs> just want to see three cards. Sneaky check by um, Habib. I like it after. Yeah. Especially with his stack size. Got a one SPR. Letting Yao catch up and hit a pair. He checks again. See if Yao wisely checks behind. He's going max tricky on every yes. street here. <laughs> Everyone is being very tricky tonight. Yeah. I think he's got a shot right here to get Yao to stab at this one. No, he doesn't. Just goes to showdown with a six. I was actually thinking he would have a shot to get called if he had decided to bet and see. Yeah, surprised to see no Habib. Habib check it all the way down. I yeah, agree. Wow. He might have gotten called on that river. Yeah. Good check down by Yao. Yeah, just had enough peace to try and win at showdown, I guess. No need for a stab. And Man, I'm excited to do some more limp raising after watching this. Yeah, right. <laughs> I need to, like, Gonna... this is striking the creativity side of my brain. I'm nice. liking this. That's fun. <laughs> That's fun. It also just takes uh, all of the the experienced players completely out of their element. Yeah. They're not fair. used to it. And not prepared for it. For sure. Pretty much. And it also kind of makes you look like a wreck if you're limping or That's you know, true. doing that limp raising. Yeah. It's just like. For sure. Makes you. People, people kind of assume you you're seriously. only. Yeah. Like you would only do that like with a really, really strong hand as a one off every once in a while. Right. They never think you have like a game plan prepared for how often you're going to do that. Right. Kind of see Habib at least peel here. What if Kitty is as well? Yeah. I think she's going to want to see a flop here in position, closing the action against OFC and Habib. Let's see here. Kitty with the best hand flopping middle pair. Surprised to see OFC Seabet here on this board mm -hmm. versus these players with no backdoor flush draw. He is a very aggressive Seabetter, even multi way. Kitty does peel. What do you think about a raise there versus these two players with her hand? Hmm. It's definitely interesting. Yeah. Maybe I'm thinking OFC wouldn't go this wide, though. Yeah. Thinking like when he C-butts into two people. Oh, well, look he's at this. active player. It's very interesting. The beep know. guess are on the river. Runner, runner, flush. Yeah. Beep a runner, beep runner, beep straight. Beep excuse straight. me. Goes for about a pot size, a little short, shy of a pot size bet. Yeah, and if Kitty had it gone for the raise, she would have protected her hand yeah. and won this, this pot. It was also into speaking, but just curious. No, I think it's interesting for yeah. sure. I love that the I concept. It's just like getting out on the outskirts of how often I might do it with two players or caller in between. I think the smaller bet from OFC is like usually on the weaker side, mm. but um, you know, he's definitely capable of mixing it up. So sure, and I think like that's a great reason to mix it in if you're exploiting the sizing there. For sure, yeah. Stop a limp in the eights. Yeah. Hey, Kim's going to call in the dark. <laughs> and, she, and, and she thinks OPC is raising, so she's going to win. <laughs> she's fine cold calling 300, but the 50, ah, let me see. <laughs> Makes sense. Got to protect yourself. I feel like strategically, it's like kind of a fun thing to do once in a while. It's like when you're walking up to the table and you have a hand. Mm. Like even if you're a knit and it's like you don't want to call a raise, but if it's like five bucks, you just be like, I call in the dark. I feel yeah, like it yeah. sets this like image that you just kind of don't really care about the chips or, you know, you're just there to have fun. For sure. Get in the mix. I love finding cheap ways to put that image off. Yeah. And it just kind of, it just be, lets people take you less seriously, you know? Mm -hmm. Wow. And OFC flopping bottom two pair here. 
Yeah. Oh, Ooh, and turns turning the boat. the boat. Yeah, and that's a tough turn there for Mustafa. Um, see if he can get away here. He does. Looks like he is check calling turn. I don't blame him. Yeah. And that's a rough river for Mustafa. All the draws miss. Um, he is blocking some of those draws with the eight of spades and the eights in his hand. You know, he blocks some flush draws. He blocks hands like seven, eight, which makes it a little worse of a bluff catcher. Mm. And OFC looks like he's going for the large bet size here. Trying to get max value from a nine and like two eights. And Mustafa snap called. Oh, I thought he said call. Looks like he might have said 12. Trying to get count of, chip, count of his chips before he makes a decision here. It's going to cost him about a third of his chips. Yeah, I feel like him counting down his chips right here makes me think he's less likely to, yeah. to call. Oh, I, oh. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love, was like, oh, yeah. Oh, so many fake outs. <laughs> I love the chip manipulation yeah. from Mustafa. I love it. <laughs> going to work some of that into my game, too. I love it. I'm going to do that to see if I can get some uh, I love tells. The, I love the trip manipulation. He's like, he's masterful. He's even faking us out here in the Yeah, booth. no doubt. <laughs> and we know what he has. <laughs> Nick's getting anxious just watching him. With Let's see what Mustafa's going to do here. Oh, did he table his cards and show OFC? Mm -hmm. Interesting. He calls. And he calls, yeah. No good. OFC. Wow. Yeah. OFC, dude. He's got a $22,000 yeah. stack. Let's go. With he's <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, he's had a lot of great spots tonight. Running really well. Yeah. Playing well. Can we pop those winnings up, Eddie? Yep, I sure can again. Let's go out. Hand, that was at the end of hand 65. Here are our cumulus winnings after about three hours. Nearly three hours, not quite. Some healthy wins and losses here. OFC up $15,000. What a session so far. Yao stuck 10K. Habib stuck 7K. They're funding the thing. Texas Kim about to cross that 10K barrier as well. Let's go. Wow, some big swings, guys. And we still got a whole nother hour plus of play to go. And the OFC finding just the right price there to get paid. Yeah, Nicely no done. doubt. Yeah. Right He's on that bridge. master of that. Mm. Dub saying OFC is running great, but... He's... he's He's, I'll say he's uh, cap maximum. He's capitalizing on the run good. Yeah. yeah, no doubt. Getting max value he's on getting those. Getting max value. Yeah. yeah. I've when noticed him well. playing better <laughs> than I, yeah, than he's sure. running. Yeah. I always love watching him play. I always love seeing the different like lines and sizings that he comes up with. Mm. Um, oh, Habib three bet the H Jack offsuit. Don't see the many three bits from Habib, especially with this type of holding. Yeah, Habib's been getting in there, uh, mixing it up, being, being more aggressive pre-flop tonight. I like to see it. I think we're probably going to see Habib call. Uh, I'm sorry, OFC call with this hand in position. I'd be very. I don't know. I'd be very surprised to see him fold. Do you think he plays his heater into account when thinking about calling here? And he does fold. Wow. Yeah. Big fold. I'm very surprised to see him fold there. He might be giving Habib a little more credit for a tighter range. Sure. Just thought in position. Yeah. Running he's, good, he's, feeling good. Yeah. He's not super deep either. So I think if Habib was deeper, we would see OFC call there for sure. Yeah. But with an under 5K stack.
I think from that body language right there, Yao might be feeling a little bit frustrated at this point. For sure. Tough night so far, thinking he got another playable hand. Yeah, I don't blame him. He's had a rough night so far, but I mean, this is definitely a type of game where he can definitely win that money back. So I think for him, you know, he needs to refocus and no doubt. just try and... And he's still got a 7K stack, so yeah, with nice. his style, that can be 20K in five minutes. 100%. What a turn uh, for OFC here. Open-ended and a flush draw. Uh, let's see if he takes a stab. He yeah. does. We'll probably see Yao check call here. <laughs> These spots feel annoying when you're losing. Here we go again. Tough board, calling out a position. For sure. Checking on the end, hope he checks back. <laughs> yep. Oh, oh what a, that we drew Yeah, a river there. And I was just probably hoping that OFC does bet. Yeah, do you think he might consider leading? It's interesting. I wouldn't expect like OFC to check back a ton of flush draws on the flop. Um, oh, it does check like here. The, I do like the check. I think this is a spot where OFC might go for a small bluff to try and get specifically like an Acer King of Hearts to fold. He's not really trying to fold out a Jack or Trip Nines or even like a seven, mm -hmm. but he's just trying to get some like better King and Ace I hands to lay down. So I like the small size in there from OFC. Yeah, that makes sense. And uh, Yao has a pretty easy check call. I don't really see a reason to raise. It's hard to get called by much worse. Yao's played his hand pretty perfectly up to this point. And looks like looks like he is going for very thin value here. Mm. Interesting race spot. Yeah, it's kind of tough for him to get value from worse. Um, given that, like, I would, I guess he's targeting a jack or an over pair, but I would expect OFC to bet the flop with both of those hands. You know, last act against four players. So, um, very interesting race. I'm with you. I'm thinking maybe he's just betting like the absolute value of having trips and like yeah. it's hard to make trips yeah could also be that he's just going he, next level and trying to get like a sick hero call because he knows his image right or even like a sick um bluffer is from ofc oh, that wow. would be dirty <laughs> i mean that'd be a tough spot to even call if he yeah. does that does that <laughs> but yeah ofc's not gonna do it yeah and you see ofc was even like thinking about his options there with a hand as weak as queen high. I don't know if he might consider hero calling with an ace high or something, For but. Sure. Nice hand there. Nice hand from Yao. Well done. Also got to avoid showing his hand down for that price. Yeah. Don't true. know what that's worth. There's always value in, yeah, not having to share a hand. Gotta wait 30 minutes, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever make a bet when you're playing just specifically to not show your hand? You you, you don't do that. I have. I you have. Know? I can't I have. really remember doing that. Yeah. I used to do that a lot more when I like first started, but now I don't do it as much. Yeah. It feels like it has much. pretty low value most of the time. For sure, yeah. Poker's just such a complicated game that I feel like if someone sees the way that I played a hand, it's still going to be really hard for them to piece together like what my strategy is going forward. Right. I mean, I know I'm capable of bluffing and not bluffing, and they know that too already. Right. So, yeah, sometimes I don't want to show my hand if it's just like a weird line or something, but I just feel like I haven't seen many spots where it's worth putting in extra money to avoid it. True. And this was an open from a B. 
couple of defends. Yeah, putting Jeremy in a tough spot here with his fives. Mm -hmm. um, he's got a player behind him, and he does decide to call, but there's a lot of tough turn cards for him to navigate with yeah. his hand. That's one That's of them. That's one of them, yeah. Great card for Habib to, um, to represent. Yep. And he instantly goes for it. I actually think that his timing there was a little suspicious. Yeah, very fast. Yeah. But he does take it down. I love the bet. Um, he even blocks hands. Having the Queen of Hearts, he blocks hands like King Queen of Hearts, which is like some of Jaywin's best hands. Mm -hmm. that you could check all that flop was. So, well played hand from Habib there. And Jaywin really being put in the blender here so far. His first uh, poker house stream. Yeah. He did make a great fold early in the stream with the Kings. Yeah, always feels a little bit sad when your best play, most memorable play of the night was Lay folding down. in a huge pot when yeah. you still lost $2,000. <laughs> You're yeah, like, man, it didn't go that well. <laughs> yes. Money saved is money won, though. That's true. Sure. No doubt. I'm with you. Just sometimes hard to keep that perspective when you're getting your butt kicked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nice thing about one of the nice things about playing on a stream though is like you do get that confidence boost. Like it, you know, if you check your phone or your friend texts you, you know that you made a good lay down there. It does give you that confidence boost even when you're getting your butt kicked. No doubt, great point. We're about to see a pot ski go down right here, boys. Yep. And looks like uh, yeah, Kim three betting Yao here with the jacks. Yeah, and Yao's a pretty. Pretty healthy sizing here. Was over a couple of limps. Three limps, actually. So, Oh, no, no, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's in the third blind. Excuse me. Yeah, it was over three limps. I like that ice here. I like the ice here from Kim. Oh, yeah. Love that. And yeah, I was not folding tens. Ever. <laughs> yeah, you see Kim's ISO here. Just going to get out of hand like A7 suited, she's which is a slam dunk. Yeah, she's in. Oh, wow, and she pops middle set. Yes, she does. Just praying that Yao has a hand like ace-king, ace-queen. And she checks back. She has a jack of clubs, too, so. She could see Yao's hand. This is, like, the perfect check back. Especially against a player like Yao. Um, you know, if he senses that she's checking back like kings or queens, he could definitely try and make a play here. But he does like wisely. That. He does wisely lay down. She's gonna show him. Nice hand for Kim. No doubt. A little healthy pot there. And I think that'll put her over the 10k earnings mark for the night. Let's take a look at that. Let's go, dude. It's gonna be party time when you get home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Diver yeah, money. Still got time. <laughs> no time. <laughs> oh, no, still got still, time. Yeah. yeah. Still got an hour to go. This is a high variance game. <laughs> no this doubt. is a very no high variance yeah, game. Knock on wood for you there. Great spot here. <laughs> great spot. Let's go. She agrees with you. Yes. Still time, she says. It's not over till it's over. See Frankie coming with the ISO, trying to get OFC in a pot. Yeah, and he's adopting the big sizing, too. Mm -hmm. Going for 200 over 25. Oh, man. And Jaywin picking up the queens here. Looks We're like his stack size one. is a little bit off. Yeah. Looks like he's got close oh. to 8,000 here. Yeah, significantly off. Yeah. And this is an interesting spot for him. Um, Comes in for 800. Frankie probably feeling like he's getting pounded every time he tries to enter the pot. I like the fold there from Frankie. I don't think Jay wins going to be three betting light in that particular spot very often. Uh, Frankie with the large ISO size under the gun one. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, with a lot of action players behind him, I just don't think. I think Jay wins three betting range seems fairly tight there. Yeah, and I, I think like that's. His, one of my favorite things about using the larger sizings, or even just multiple sizings in general, is you can kind of gauge based on your opponent's responses behind you, like how well they're going to be adjusting and, and how strong those re-raising ranges are going to be. Yeah, and Jay went sure. seeing, like you mentioned, a really big ISO size from a tight player, yeah. and then still deciding to go 4x out of position. Yeah. It's a lot easier to fold a King-10 suited exactly, there. Exactly, yeah. 
But I do like his decision not to trap, because even though he has aggressive players behind him, I mm -hmm. feel like they're not going to be three betting Frankie very light there. Yeah, I agree that with He you. just hasn't played many hands. I agree with you. I mean, that's the nice thing about Frankie's sizing is it puts Jay Wen in a tough spot. Yeah. Like, you're going to have to just reveal the strength of your hand. Exactly. Yeah. Oh. Jay Wen picking up the aces. Bang, Very bang. nice hand. He's had some big hands tonight. He's had kings, queens, now aces. Right after getting... Yeah, that's also a little frustrating when you feel like you're kind of running good in terms of card distribution and then still mm -hmm. getting your butt kicked. <laughs> and he goes for the standard 3x size here on the button, mm -hmm. maybe hoping one of these players 3-bet. It's a dangerous board. Wow, what a flop here. Everyone yeah. with the piece. Yeah. Jaywin, um, yeah, I don't think we'll see any player fold this flop. See, the aces are only slightly ahead of the 6-3 suited. Yeah, yeah, with a, yeah, with an open-ended. Kim with a um, gut shot and an overcard, and OFC with a uh, flush draw. Yeah, very Kim having that club, too, going to keep her around. Very reasonable continues for everybody. And uh, so OFC going to go for the check raise here. Bang, bang. He pops it up to 1,100 here. Oh, and Jay wins already got to be sick with two players behind him. He's got 8K in his stack, and everyone covers. Oh, this spot's about to get dicey. What a spot here. And he had a similar spot against OFC earlier in the night, so I'm just to see how he's going to... Yeah. It's like just a call. Yeah. Didn't know if he might consider three betting right it's there. Tough with two players behind you that very likely have draws mm -hmm. um, to call here, especially when you don't have the ace clubs in your hand. Yeah, that's why I was thinking he might like a re-raise. But calling is definitely like standard procedure. Kim gonna peel too. We're gonna go four ways to a raised pot. <laughs> You don't see a flop raise and then, oh boy. Wow, what a turn card. Yeah. Kim makes a pair and her backdoor clubs. And OFC OFC makes the, the front door and clubs. And he can't feel good about his, his flush when it, when he check raises and gets three calls. Right? On this yeah, he's got to be careful. He's to be a little concerned, and Jay Wynn definitely going to check back here. Yeah. Jay Wynn probably knows he's dead on that card. There's no way that out of these three players, you still have the best hand when the straight and the flush comes in. Yeah. <laughs> and some obvious two pair candidates too. For sure. And uh, Yao probably thinking his straight is good here, considering nobody bet the turn. I would not blame him for, for going for some value here on this river. Oh, FC. No, uh, Yao with oh, Yao's got oh. a straight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, what a turn. Wow, what a turn. Yeah. <laughs> Gave I said everybody. it and didn't even Improved realize. everybody's hand, except for Jay Wynn. <laughs> yeah. Almost 5K out there. Very, very interesting spot for him when it checks around. For sure. It's like you're... Thinking I, there's a good chance I got the best hand, but I also got to get called by a worse hand. And he bets like a very creative and I think good sizing there. I like the sizing. He can definitely get paid off by like two pairs, which is what he's targeting. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think it's really hard for Kim to have the best hand given the way that the action has went. She calls. Yeah, surprise to see her call. I think it's a little bit of a misstep here. Um, now OFC is like, what the heck? But I don't think you can fold a flush. Yeah, OFC is definitely going to overcall. After He's it just getting around. a great price to check around. Is he possibly thinking about raising because of the sizing? There's no way he's going to fold, right? Feels like such a comfortable call to me. but Yeah, it, I think you just have to flick it in here. And maybe he's even posturing a little bit just to protect himself from j on the button. Yeah, but Jay Wynn almost never has a flush here when he checks back the turn yeah. into three players on this board. Just saying, maybe he's. Yeah. Doesn't want to like represent weakness by like snap calling. Just, right. I mean, it's a free roll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's kind of representing weakness by. Now it is. Yeah, it's gone too long. <laughs> yeah. 
You maybe want to just like look like you're thinking about raising for a few seconds and then for fall. Sure. Shaking your head. <laughs> <laughs> he did he fold? What? Whoa. Oh, and he's gonna be upset about this hand. Whoa. Oh my gosh, dude. He was getting Wow, he's seven, just getting six and a half to one or so. I mean he's just getting too good of a price there and what a hand for uh what a gift for Yao there. Yao gets yeah, value and yeah. makes the flush fold. He gets the worst oh hand to call gosh. and the best hand to fold. <laughs> Add a quarter pot and sizing. That's brutal there. If Kim folds that river, uh OFC is definitely calling there. No so doubt. Kim calling there definitely helped Yao. What a helped crazy Yao hand. hand. Oh what my hand. gosh, Yao. Say your yeah. prayers tonight, buddy. That was a gift. <laughs> wow. Well, Yao on the comeback trail now, <laughs> dragging him in that nice pot. Man, OFC getting up from the table. I wonder if that is in any part because of that hand. Yeah, Kim's saying that she actually considered raising that river. I do agree she has a good hand to raise with. And Yao actually... And look at this. Kitty opened the 200 under the gun, got four callers, and Habib just rips it in for 5K Whoa. from the $50 straddle with sevens. It looks like he's going to take this one down. What I'm going to say in Habib's <laughs> defense here is that $1,000 that that's in the pot... It, it's like very He's, sneaky to the other players how much it is because they feel yeah. like they've only put in a single open raise. Right. They're like, dang, $5,000? Come on, dude. Yeah. You only got 5x the pot, though. Yeah, I know. I mean, he increased the stack by almost 20% there exactly. just taking that pot down. I mean, so. that's like a very common tournament strategy. For but sure. People just don't use it as often in yeah, cash games. Love to play there from Habib. And sevens, like kind of a nice hand. It is a nice hand to do it with, for sure. Love it. In all likelihood, you're up against, like, let's say, four four other players i mean pocket sevens probably has barely its share of the equity right you know 20 percent or something for sure yeah so you can drive all I those mean, guys you off just 80. Call, you're, you're practically set mining yeah with your hand, exactly so. yeah which yeah. i think is a fine option too for sure. 5k <laughs> probably goes a little bit beyond the barrier of what i would normally do with something like that but yeah i, lo I love the heart though i love the no I doubt love the idea no doubt Another multi-way pot here. Yeah. Texas heads up. <laughs> it's like Mustafa's got the best of it. Yeah, I'm very surprised from the fold from OFC. Yeah, no doubt. I'm just going to give them the money. They deserve it. They're good people. Dude, he would have been up 20K <laughs> if he had a call during Yeah, no, so it's like. Great turn card for Mustafa here, turning up flush foul with this top pair, and I think we're just going to see him take it down. What about the other one? I think that's enough, but that's more We just crossed the three-hour mark, guys, or we we're right at it. 
Means we've got about an hour left in the stream. Really loving having you along for the ride. Had over 100 viewers pretty much continuously throughout the stream tonight. Appreciate the love. Appreciate you spending your Friday night with us. We know there's so many options of things to do. Yeah, thank, thank you guys for being with us. Yeah, and here you are watching. Epic stream. Epic stream. <laughs> high stakes action. It's the Six first stream. real high stakes action, I'd say, oh, that yeah. we've had on the stream. Well, the PLO game was pretty epic, too. Yeah, but this game, yeah. They've all been pretty epic. We're planning on doing more. Frank, you just calling here with Ace Track suited. Surprised to see this. And look at Habib coming in with the three bet here with the eights. Oops. He's really playing, playing these pairs aggressively. Yeah, and Frankie gets punished again. It's going to be a tough spot when it gets back to Frankie. No doubt. Kind of depends on what happens here in between, because I wouldn't be surprised to see calls from Mustafa. And then if he calls, Jay Wynn might call. And if he calls, OK, first one folds. That might start a cascade of folding here. Yeah, now it's going to be on Frankie to decide if he wants to defend. Tough spot for Frankie. Yeah, the only thing he's really going to have going for him is that he's got pretty good cards. Doesn't really have any other factors in this configuration Yeah, just going in his favor. Fortunately, he's out of position. Mm -hmm. Has already capped his range with a flat call from the small blind. Habib seems like a relatively tight three better, and especially when it's 300-300. Yeah, but from what we've seen, he's made some aggressive. He's definitely made bets, some moves. Yeah. He has made some moves. Um, Frankie looked a little bit frustrated there having to fold that one, but I actually agree with him. Even though our cards are really good, it's like they're just not good enough to overcome the all of the other disadvantages that we have in the hand right now. For sure. And I think Habib's going to be very ace-king, ace-queen heavy there. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, your hand just doesn't really fare well against his, his range. Jay Wynn picking up another premium here. Pocket queens. And he just limps. He's catching on. He's trapping. And I like the limp a lot better when it's only the 25. It feels Kim. like people are so much more willing. To, look, Kim's going to raise to 175 with seven dudes. Seven dudes suited. Yeah. They have, are, they, are, they, are you sure they're not playing the seven dudes game? I don't think so. I've seen it fold in numerous times. Yeah, okay. Too. And it was one with, wasn't it? And then I didn't see any bounties yeah, paid. Yeah, I didn't see any bounties paid for it. Okay. I think she's just got a suited hand, and she's trying to ISO. I'll tell you what. I've watched Jay Wynn play at the Lodge live stream. I've never seen him take the strategy down there before. I could be wrong. I don't know if he's ever played in a game quite like this. Yeah. I know that the Austin games maybe tend to play a little snugger. Um, and what a beautiful spot here for him. No doubt. This is what happens, dude. What yeah, size can you go here? 750, 850? Well, uh, I think even bigger. I think yeah. you can go up to 1,000 here. Um, he looks like he's going. Oh, yeah. I, I, didn't, I didn't realize there was that many. <laughs> yeah, there I like was... the sizing. Yeah, okay. Bang, bang. I think everyone's going to be very suspicious of, the, suspicious of this play. He's been fairly quiet tonight. And you see Habib folding his ace jack. Nice hand for Jay win Yeah, he wins $700. No beat, flop can't needed. Beat it. Yeah, can't beat it. Even though he had queens, it's a great result for the hand. Yeah, I'll tell you, kind of funny story, actually. I came into the idea of using that strategy because I was so annoyed with getting three bet off of hands that I really wanted to see the flop with. Yeah. I was like, is there any way that I could start trying to get these hands to the flop by limping and then limping stronger hands? And just started thinking more about why the poker community thinks it's a bad idea to limp in general. Mm -hmm. And it seems like it's mostly because they say it's hard to balance it, right? Like your range is just gonna be exposed. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, why don't you just do it with strong hands, especially when the general poker community has moved to a place that every time you see a limper, you're taught to punish that limper as right. wide as you can get away with, right. right? ISO the limper, raise big. Like those are the, the traditional teaching methods in poker these days. And I was like, well, they never encounter someone who knows what they're doing and is right. like limping to trap them into doing that, Right. you know? And then you limp, ISO, 
two or three calls in our loose games because people are way overestimating their ability to achieve an ISO. Right. And then boom, there you are with, you're facing a super wide opening range that's only going to continue ace-king plus. And then you've got two or three callers that are all capped and their money's completely dead. Right. I think it's a great play when you when you have a table that you have some aggressive players at the table mixed in with some loose players. Um, because then you're likely, mm -hmm. your limp is likely going to get ISO, then you're going to get multiple callers. For sure. And that's really the best way to like narrow the field and achieve like maximum value with you know, with some of your hands. Yeah, and I'm always looking at like the setup of where the players are located on the table. For sure. Um, you want to have the most aggressive two or three players to your left and mm -hmm. have some looser players down your right side. I love it, yeah. Love yeah. it. Yeah, just get you some great spots. And actually, those are actually the tables where I've experimented with the limper is. Mm. <laughs> those, per those particular tables. Well, those are definitely the perfect situations <laughs> yeah. for it. Yeah, I actually went through a because period. Because then you achieve what you want to achieve, which is like you get the, 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 I guess the good aggressive players to put money in the pot and then fold and you get the looser players exactly. to call and the pot's bloated with your stronger hands. Exactly. So now you're playing a lower SPR, your head's up, you know, versus a wide range with your with your strong range. That's like exactly what you want, really. Yeah, and think about how hard it, it typically feels. Let's say you're in one of the earlier positions and the guy that you really want to get in the pot with is like in the hijack or the cutoff. Right? It's like really hard to think about how am I going to make all of these other players fold when I want them to and then make that guy call. Right? So like working this play in, just like you said, you might get ISO'd here and then end up getting to back raise to ISO one of the over callers. Yeah. And, and it just adds like so much more um, flexibility slash options mm. of like how you want to play a hand whenever you start mixing in limping lines because there's so many crafty back raising lines that come from it. For sure. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I always, I always find it funny to like annoy the regs, mm. or, you know, with that strategy. <laughs> no doubt, dude. And it's like a huge part of my table talking strategy as well. Yeah. The guy that was actually getting aggravated and had to leave the table was because <laughs> I limped three bet him twice in a row, and then told him, I told him in the hand and that, that you were doing it was. Well, I told him I was doing it because of his sizing, which wasn't even true. I had like an <laughs> ace king and something else, but but I was like, dude, you can't raise a ten dollars over my limp and then expect me not to punish you. <laughs> and he got, he's like, okay, okay, next time I, I limp again, he goes to like $7. We're playing one, two at Choctaw this weekend. He yeah. goes to seven, three, four call or something. I go to like 80 bucks. He's just it. like, Bruh! just stands up and leaves. <laughs> I was like, Love got it. him. <laughs> Love it. Uh, Kitty in the mix again. Been a while since we've seen her. Gets there on the river here. Yeah, she does. And Yao had hung on tight with a five. But now, Kitty gonna value bet and see if he can get away from it. Yeah, maybe targeting a jack specifically. I didn't see the whole line. Let's see the whole line. He's doing a call, check, call, check, check. Okay. Yeah, and Yao knowing that this is good river for Kitty to to bluff or represent. So look at Yao sitting super deep now, 17k. Did he yeah. add on for that much? Wow, dude. Well, he did just win a win a massive pot. Did I against who? Uh, it's like a four-way pot. Against Kim, OFC, and j -Win. I gotcha. <laughs> against the field. It still says he's down 7K, so he must be in for yeah, about 23 think, now. Yeah. Kind of legend about, status. Sounds about right. Yao is a legend for sure. And Jose Montes with the super chat. Oh, Th yeah, dude. Shout out to Jose. Thank, Thank you, so bud, for your recommendation and for j -Win. I don't know if he's enjoying himself on the stream, not having a very good night, but it's been an extremely active table tonight. Been pretty spot dead for a majority of the evening. I'm liking that super chat with just the eyeballs. Like, yeah. Says yeah. it all. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his eyes on the stream. Yeah, no doubt. Shout out to Jose, tournament crusher. He's been here in the booth. Played on the stream. Okay. Yeah, I think I remember that. Been playing played, the PLO. Yeah, he played, played the Hold'em stream on Friday. You know, I, I was just, I've been joking every week for the past few weeks. Three weeks ago, this was a 2-5 match of stack. <laughs> this is the two yes. weeks ago. This is yeah, back. Crazy, I that. It's and just out of control from here. So OFC opens it up. He's got the ace queen offsuit. Must have a straddle on here. I would guess it's just the 50 on, and he's going like 5x. Frankie just going to flat call. Don't actually love that play. I think this is more of a three better fold type of situation when you're both early position. Too easy to just like get yourself into a spot just like that small blind spot while ago with the ace jack where you're capped mm -hmm. and now thinking you got a price to just try and call and like the, even at a table like this you don't think there's value in peeling to see a flop i mean i'd rather like just this. three bet to try and isolate him 
if I'm going to play the hand. Look at this, Mustafa flopping the shot. I don't know. That's Frankie. Yeah, I think the problem is even though the table's loose and you, you like your hand, because the table is the way it is, I'm also scared about not getting to even see the flop. Right. We've got several really active squeezers behind us, and it just kind of, like, takes away all of the advantages in the hand other than your own cards. Right. Right? And, like, I just hardly ever want to be going to a flop where I feel like... Like, the best-case scenario is that it just calls around, and then my cards are, like, competitive with everyone else's. Right. I don't have the initiative. My range is capped. I'm bad relative position, too, because everyone that comes in behind me, it's going to be pre-flop aggressor acts. Now I have to act. Like on a board like this, let's say, jack jack three, this would be a great board for Frankie's ace five to make a play. Mm -hmm. But if you still got three players left to act behind you that are um, all capable of having a jack, you got to be really careful. Right. You know, it just, like, limits your, your playability. Right. You're just trying to essentially, like, make, you know, flop enough flush draw or make like two pairs. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> Which if you're in a game where you get paid off with hands like that, there's definitely value in, you know, going There's some that. merit, but yeah. I mean, it was a 250 open and Frankie's only got 5K, so. Interesting. There's like limited maneuverability inside of that stack. I you say that because I would call there, but I, I have a hard time folding suited aces in cash games like this. Mm -hmm. I do think there's some, a lot of value in those types of hands. Yeah, it definitely depends on how deep you are. Yeah. But like here, let's say Frankie calls and then there well, is a three bet. he's only 5K deep. He's facing a 250 open. So he's not, he's essentially 100 bigs deep and he's facing a 5X open. So he's not, I agree with you that he's not really deep enough to be playing that hand. Yeah. I think if he had 10K or more, then it would make a lot more sense. Yeah. I agree with you. I'd start feeling better about it, but I would still feel pretty good about just three betting then. Like if I'm right. deep enough that my stack can handle three betting, like that's the configuration I want is me in position against a guy with a capped range and me having the uncapped range right. and the initiative being but able to he, see bet. But he did open 5X under the gun. So it is OFC, so yeah. probably just going to lean. I'd probably just fold. Then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. I probably respect that. Fold. I respect the discipline. Yeah. I mean, it's just hard to make a good hand and hold them. That's true. You know? So I just always lean towards, like, wanting to play in spots where I'm going to be able to win without making a good hand. Right. You know? <laughs> Got a big PLO flip going here, and Kim flops the goods. Let's see if anyone's even got a chance. She's got 75% equity, so someone must have a chance somewhere in here. Some pairs here. <laughs> Does anyone have an eight? Uh, it doesn't look like it. Looks like she's going to take it down. Second flip of the night. Let's go. Dude, that's kind of that's wild. <laughs> she flops the nuts there. No one has an eight, and yet she still only has 75% against the field. I don't know if that's possible. Did somebody have an overpair? Uh, it must have been. Jacks. Even... Yao's got oh, two jacks. jacks. But I guess because his jacks are live, no one else has a jack. So I guess it's just oh, it's factoring in wow. for all the cards that are, yeah. Dang. So the jacks were very live there. Yeah, that's interesting, too, yeah. because there's so many cards removed that there's probably only a few left in the deck, and two of them are jacks. <laughs> well, it was funny. Um, we were comment I was commentating the, um, the the Thursday night PLO stream, and Pokernomics, like, like three-bet iso he potted it with, like, ace-ace, king-nine, rainbow, 1,500. He got it. He got it. Um, he got uh, Yao and Daryl to call, and... Yao had ace ten, ace ten nine deuce with an ace high suit, and Daryl had jack jack ten eight double suited, and uh, Pokernomics had seventy five percent equity because of all the other cards that were folded. Oh wow! So when you're sitting there with like in a three way hand, a bloated pot with rainbow aces, you're never thinking that never. you're like have seventy five percent equity. Dude. You're like probably thinking you have thirty percent equity yeah. at best. <laughs> yeah, not even seventy five if you're like heads up. Yeah, so it was just <laughs> fascinating for me to see that. Yeah, yeah. that is interesting. Yeah, just the card removal. And Daryl had a great jack jack ten eight double suited is very playable hand, and you know to just mm. yeah. have like. Yeah, like 10% equity. I was like, wow, that's, that's just crazy, man. Both of our ladies at the table have gone massage mode tonight. Yeah, they're both enjoying their time at the table. No doubt.
I feel like ladies are such a rarity in high stakes poker that they're sort of treated like royalty. For sure. I love like both of the Kim and Kitty's vibes too. They just no have doubt, like, fun energy about them. No doubt. They give action. They're not afraid to play big pots. Yeah. You know. It's also fun that they're like very sharp, um, good players, good personalities, witty, uh, not degenerate in any way. Mm -hmm. Just like super well put together. Makes me enjoy the fact that they're kind of treated like royalty. For sure. <laughs> like they deserve it. For sure. And I think these guys enjoy playing with them. Yeah. You know? For sure. They're just like, they're just kind of like one of the boys. Like, you know, they're in, there in the mix, gambling it up. Yeah. You know, getting in there. Play monster Especially stacks. Especially Kim. Kim's played with these guys a lot, so they love playing with Kim. I mean, Kim just rocking like the 15K stack like it's no big deal. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> And Mustafa going to get really tricky with the cutoff limp. I love the limp here for Mustafa. Yao. It's like he's coming in for a big race, 700. Yeah, and Yao's got that 17K stack. Obviously, Mustafa much, much shorter, but I don't know if that'll give Yao some confidence. Yeah. Yao gets away. Yeah, not this time. Jose asking for some stats on the screen. We got you. Eddie not in the booth at the moment, so couldn't answer that question about the tournaments either, but I will relay it to him when he gets back. Here's our accumulative winnings for the night so far. OFC is still sitting up top, Kim in second. It's been like that for a little while. Kitty the only other winner on the night, and all of these guys are paying for it. Kitty and Texas Kim crushing, along with OFC. And here in just a second, we will get you some VPIP and preflop raise percentages. Oh boy. Oh, tough spot for Kim here, picking up nines versus OFC's aces. Yeah, and it's blind versus blind too, so. Yeah, She's him in the small, OFC in the big. She's definitely going to be less inclined to get away from it because of that. And he goes for really big sizing here versus her. Yeah, when I have the aces, I'm a little scared to go for that large sizing. You don't want to let him off the hook. Yeah, he knows Kim does not like to fold to three bets. Mm -hmm. I went nines. Um, she's definitely not folding this three bet. Yeah, and it looks like Habib might come in as well. Oh, yeah. This is a hand Habib definitely likes to flop with. Nope. You can tell he definitely wants to see a flop, but not going to happen this time. He lets it go. And I actually really like the sizing by OFC because I think this is a good one to try and get that isolation. Yeah, and they are very deep. Uh -huh. oh, really rough board here for Kim with the nines. Going about half pot on this board. Kim's going to have to continue here. Whoa, looks like the table <laughs> moved there. Mm. Well, that's a card that can definitely save Kim some money. Yeah, no doubt. Definitely going to drill a lot of uh, oopsies. And OFC Ooh, checks back. Snap checks. What a check. Yeah, and he's not happy to see that queen of hearts. He and just wow. snap checks again. Kim losing the minimum here. Yeah. With this hand on this board. Man, OFC probably not feeling great about the way that played out. Yeah. All right, let's take a look at, let's take a look at some of these stats per request for Mr. Jose Montez. Stack sizes. Bang, OFC up over 20K. Yao's still down though, even though he has six about seventeen K, still down about seven seven K. Kim ten five. Only other player three players above five digits. All the other players below. Mustafa Joe respectively down. Jose will get you more stats after this hand. There we go, Mustafa picking up a hand here finally, looking to get back in the mix. Gus is gonna limp. Ace Queen. I think we've talked about this in all, 
a lot tonight. A lot of these players implementing a limp, limping strategy pre-flop. Don't usually see that at these types of stakes. Oh, here we go. Frankie with Queens. Let's see what he does. What size think he's going to make it? He's going to go 6x here out of position. I like that with a sticky table in between. Yeah, yeah, and a sticky table. Still have another blind act behind <clears> you, too, who has an uncapped range. And that works out for him this time as that third blind has a nice looking hand, 9 8 suited. And Mustafa not going anywhere. He might even consider just playing for this as they've only got about 5K. He just calls. I think if it's any other player besides Frankie, he may come back over yeah. the top. Good point. Look Ooh. at this. Yeah, kind of a dangerous board for Frankie's queens. And Habib yeah. does get a piece of it. He's got top pair and a gutter. Very wet and connected board. Yeah, and with these two specific players, I don't know how tricky Frankie would perceive them to be. So he'll probably just kind of bet straightforward, just getting called, trying to get called by worse hands. And Habib immediately just pounces. Frankie has just gotten punished every time he's tried to get in there tonight. Yeah. And now he's going to have a really tough spot on his hands, deciding does he want to play for it with two queens here. Habib has shown that he is capable of making these kind of plays, but I don't know how many of those Frankie has actually seen go to showdown. Yeah. This is a pretty sick spot. Habib going with a really large sizing here. I actually love the idea to raise. I just think I would probably raise a little smaller myself. To going 5x. After Frankie's C bet. Yeah, I want to keep some worse hands in there. I mean, we can still get called by some draws. And it also helps to represent a really strong hand. And seeing Frankie think about this, we might be getting some better hands to fold as well. So we do accomplish a lot with this raise here. Also got that third player to fold behind us. So also accomplishing that. And as we were talking about earlier in the stream, each one of those things that you accomplish with the bet adds to the EV of it. But Frankie sniffs it out. He's not going anywhere this time. And Habib's going to be forced oh, to pot. Yeah, good. he is. And we're going to play a big pot here, boys. We got a 12K pot. Frankie from next gen in with the two queens. Habib got the pair and the draw. Kind of a classic showdown here. For sure. Ace of hearts, good for Frankie's hand. Clean and clean. And Frankie going to scoop a 12K pot. That is one of the biggest pots of his young career yeah, right sick. there. They ran it one time. Yeah, just kind of came out of nowhere. Nice hand, Frankster. Nice read by Frankie there. Getting in it good. Pretty like much. play by Habib, too. Yeah. yeah. He's got a lot of equity versus an overpair specifically. Puts a Very lot of pressure crafty. on that type of hand. Yeah, and that's one thing I wasn't thinking about, actually, is that after you raise... Part of the reason why you might choose your sizing is dependent on do you want to call or you want to fold if you get re-raised. And there he was obviously prepared to call. So maybe part of the benefit of going a little bit bigger there is you set yourself up with a little bit better price on the back end. For sure, he's committed. Yeah. Wow, that happened so fast. Yeah, nice hand, Frankie. Yeah, and all of a sudden, Frankie goes from stuck small to up over $5,000. And Habib... Brutal spot. For yeah, Habib. man. Tough night for him. He's yeah, going to be stuck over 11K now. Got any good equity there on that board, on that flop. For sure. And Frankie yeah. could very easily have like a nut flush draw there, too. For sure. He's in great shape against that hand. Mm -hmm. And even kind of worst case scenario there where Frankie has the over pair, he still had a 35% chance to win that hand with the pair in the draw. Yeah, for sure. Tons of equity. Yeah. Definitely getting the right price. Love the play. I, and I mean, Habib's going to make that play with like two pairs and even sets on that draw heavy board. Yeah, for sure. Could have a straight, straight through there. Yeah. It's a tough spot for Frankie. He does make the right read that time and his hand holds up. And it looks like Habib is out here. We get the stats here. Boom. Pop those winnings up. Yeah, and it's not going to include Habib because he's not rebuying back into the way the software works once yeah, you're eliminated. But he was stuck 12K. Yeah, he's, he, he's down 12K. 
Ouchie. OFC biggest winner so far, about f over 14K. Kim, 5K. Frankie now one of the biggest winners, up 5,500. Kitty getting a massage off to the side, still up 3K. <laughs> Yao Jaywin, in, in addition to Habib, 7K, 7,200, and 11K, respectively, in the red. Let's take a look at some of these other stats. Look, look at the V-Pip real quick. 60% Yao, no surprise. OFC and Kim, no surprise there as well. Jaywin, Kitty, Joe, Frankie down 30% low. Kitty hasn't been playing a ton of hands because, you know, she hasn't been playing for about 20 minutes. So, <laughs> going to be off to the next hand here. I'll come back through the rest of these stats after that. Let's pick up action here. Hand 85 or 4. Yeah, we got about 30 minutes left here in the booth, guys. Yeah, give it about, so. They do have the option to go into overtime if they want to. We've let them know that, you know, 30 minutes, whatever, so. Hayden, I am leaning towards not firing shots out tomorrow. Really? You're just not feeling it? I am not. I haven't felt. I'm just not feeling it, dude. Are you going to fire Nick? tournament yeah actually i tomorrow am going to a big card trading convention okay in, in arlington yeah i've actually got a little cousin who is really into trading pokemon cards and i got a couple of buddies who are really big into buying and selling sports cards okay cool yeah so we're gonna i'm gonna take him over there to check it out it's his christmas present gotcha i'm gonna buy him like a hundred dollars worth of pokemon cards and Probably That's rock neat. his world because he's like in seventh grade. So yeah, awesome. yeah, it'll probably be like, oh my gosh, he's gonna be stoked. Okay, yeah, for, sure. <laughs> yeah. for sure. For the re for the record, be there was uh, Erica told me there's an issue with with this because Habib was dealt cards or whatnot. He's all in for one dollar. Yeah, so oh, okay. this is the way to on the only way to get the system to work. So gotcha. Habib's not all in for. He's actually not even in the hand. He actually doesn't have cards. So he wouldn't have pocket deuces. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's see what we got going on here. Jaylen with top pair. Joe with top pair too. Ten kicker though. Good flop for Jaylen here. It's gonna be a tough spot for Joe. He's got top pair, yeah. backdoor flush draw. Doesn't have any spades. Oh. Wow, brutal turn here from yeah. Jaywin. Oh my Jaywin, goodness. really, that's the second time someone's turned two pair against him. Yeah, dude, it's been a tough night. Yeah, he's really running bad. And it's a draw heavy board, too. Uh, so if he gets check raised around this turn, especially given Joe's stack size, I think he's going to have a really tough time getting well, away from it. Yeah. You know, Joe could conceivably have be like check raising with like draws that turn to equity with a straight draw, like, like jack eight nine of spades. Yeah, jack nine of spades, yeah, eight nine of spades, yeah. Jack spades, so. And Joe looks like exactly the kind of guy who's capable of doing something For like sure. that. And Joe's also had a rough night. Um, so, you know, he hasn't done much tonight. So given given the fact that he's a PLO player and given the fact that he might want to make something happen, he could definitely make that move with a hand like that. So there it is. Yeah, personally, I'm always calling here from Jay Wynn. Yeah, it's kind of the perfect sizing, and yeah, I don't that's think a gross, can get away a from gross, it. Such a gross spot. He doesn't have a spade either. It's a good reason to call. 100%. Yeah, if I'm Jay Wynn, I'm just, uh, I'm just paying Joe his money here. Brutal spot for him. He doesn't like it. He knows he, I think he knows he kind of has to call based off that stack size. And yeah, I'm kind of surprised he hasn't found a call faster here. Definitely giving Joe credit for. Yeah, props to Jay when his instincts have been spot on tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, folding those kings earlier, he made the correct decision. And um, here he really is not feeling good about the spot. Yeah, this would be like a. A hero fold, and it could be given. From this. I mean, Joe. In fairness, he doesn't really know. He doesn't know Joe. He hasn't played many hands tonight, so 
you know, based on what he's seen, I don't blame him for being in the tank here. Yeah. You know, maybe he's thinking that Joe check called the flop with like, you know, a set of seven, set of fours, and now he's check raising this, you know, check jam in this turn. Um, or maybe he puts him on specifically a hand like Queen 10. That's really all he's losing to here. Yeah, and I'm with you. I definitely think those hands are all possible, but I also think that it's possible he could have some other hands. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm in that boat too. I mean, yeah. knowing Joe, I know that he is capable of having those hands. Yeah, and um, if I'm thinking about how many combinations there are of those hands that beat us, and then right. the fact we're getting two to one, right? And doesn't then, need that many of hands that we then, can't beat, and or then that we some do. Some of the beat. hands that beat us are check raising the flop sometimes. Right. So right. We almost exactly. have to cut those combos by at least in half, yeah, you know? Right. And there's only three of them for each set. Exactly, yeah. And then queen 10, maybe two of those. Right. Yeah, and he makes the call. Yeah, I don't yeah. blame him at all. I mean, I think it's a good call. It just sucks yeah. that I don't have the, the best head. hand this time. His inst he can't, like, see that spade on the river, but he was already losing. Props to him for thinking about it there. His instincts were spot on, but I just think it was too difficult of a spot to... Yeah, dude, that's from. another huge pot. Just kind of comes out of nowhere. A 9K yeah. pot. Every single one seems huge right now. Nice hand for Joe. He's been very patient tonight. Yeah. And Patience getting rewarded in that spot. Look back at these stack no sites again. Frankie, Frankie and, and Joe, you know, picking their spot, being patient after over three and a half hours of playing, finally got their hands that they wanted to get their chips in, chipping up. And they got paid. They both got paid on their respective hands. Chip counts. We saw VPIP last time. Let's look at the pre-flop raise percentages. Wow, look at Yao just commanding the table right there. 30% is huge. He was really active early on. Not as much in this back half of the stream. Yeah, I'm surprised that it's that high. I knew he was being active, obviously, but I did not realize that he was raising 30% of the hands pre-flop. And this looks like it's got multiple straddles on. Yeah, Kim put the 100 on here. So this is 5, 10, 25, 50, 100. And we're playing eight-handed, guys. So that means five out of the eight players at the table have posted a blind. Pretty sick. <laughs> Oops, he's under the gun in the cutoff. <laughs> we're going to go six ways to the spot. Texas heads up. Let's see here. No sevens out there. Mustafa's got top pair and the best of it. The field has 50% to catch him. Looks like it checks through. Okay, nine. Now Yao turning the best of it. Brings in some straight straight yeah, draws. Mustafa straight draw. Yeah, he's open That's now, open-ended. Yao's at least going to make the call here. Does. And Joe with a straight draw as well with the sixes. Can't like having the dummy end of the straight draw, though. Yeah, yeah on good a paired pull. board, too. Yeah, on a paired now. board. Good discipline. Full by Joe there. I think nine holds. Yeah, the nine holds. It's probably going to go check, check a lot here. Oh, maybe not. Mustafa going for the lead here. Kind of turning his hand into a bluff. Yeah, yeah semi bluff. He's using a small sizing. Interesting play. Yeah, it's like a blocker bet slash bluff yeah. slash yes. who knows. <laughs> yeah, B blocker <laughs> slash value <laughs> slash. He's going to put Yao in a tough spot. Might get Yao to fold the best hand. This looks like a value bet. Um, nope. Yeah, does make gonna. a call. Good call by Yao. Mustafa does get to showdown, which was sort of his objective. Yeah, but he got the showdown. Hard to make it against the worst hand. Fortunately, did not have the best hand there. No. Oh, we're up to 125 in the Let's go. viewers. Cracking 120, Let's I think, go. for the second or third time tonight. But mostly have been down around 100 and getting a surge here at the end, guys. Friday night festivities winding down, maybe. Appreciate having you all along for the ride. We're going until at least 10 p.m. And we've also had some streams in the past where they leaked over a little bit. So we got at least 30 more minutes with you guys here. Appreciate you being along for the ride. Our stacks are getting big, and the pots are huge. We've had multiple 10K pots over the last couple of orbits. Yeah, the action has been sick tonight, to say the least. No one to fill this seat right now, Eddie. Is that yeah. right? 
I mean, that's why I stepped out so I could ask. I said, hey, it's minimum buy-in, 3K, match the stack. Biggest stack at the table is 22K, and then, like, half the room laughed at me. <laughs> and then half the room laughed at me. A couple guys were like, me, me, and, I'm like, and I knew they were joking. Trying to throw them to the wolves. Yeah. You never know when someone might be feeling brave. Yeah. Oh, oh boy. Yao picking up kings here versus Frankie's ace queen. Oh, no. That's going to be tough for, for Frankie. Yeah, it's going to be. I think we're going to see him probably at least call us through that here. Yeah, Yao's such an action giver. It's and hard to Yao imagine. just calling with the king. What? Letting Frankie off the hook. That is mind blowing. And allowing Kim <laughs> oh, and Ophelia to enter this pot. Yeah, I did not expect that. Let's see what happens here. Oh, oh and wow. OFC flops the goods. Oh my gosh, an OFC. OFC flopping trip nines. And these guys are $17,000 deep. Yeah. What is going to happen here? Nice for Frankie, who's going to get to just yeah, get away from his ace queen. Check back. He actually is going to see bet here. Yeah. This is going to be bad for Yao. If Yao check raises here and then OFC continues by putting money in the pot, mm -hmm. uh, Yao has to be very suspicious. Very sure. suspicious. It yeah. looks like he does come back with a check raise, he right? Does. I like this check raise, actually. Small sizing. 2 and FX. And OFC just snap calling. Oh, yeah. Trying to represent a draw. Frankie with the snap full. Yeah. Ten of hearts. Brings in some backdoor. Draws, backdoor hearts, backdoor straight, bringing that secondary flush draw. Wow. Yeah, and by virtue of not three betting their pre flop, Yao. You know. Did OFC check on the end? What happened on the turn, Eddie? I'm sorry, I missed the action. I missed the action okay. also. <laughs> so I was, I'm, I'm, looking at the I'm looking at the production side. So. That's my fault. Uh, OFC won the hand. That's all I know that would happen. All right, let's take a look at these stack sizes again. Stuff on the button gonna make it 150 over the over the straddle. Kim gonna call out of the third blind. Yeah, OFC gonna call as well. Yeah, OFC doesn't like to fold those types of hands. What a flop here for Mustafa. Yeah. Broadway draw, nut, nut flush, flush draw. draw. Kim with middle pair though. It's a big sizing. It's tough for her to continue here. She's got a weak kicker. Not yeah. a ton of great turn cards for her. Yeah. No OFC behind. I don't Good mind fold. this fold at all. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of that spot Frankie was in earlier with the King Jack. Yeah, exactly. Fold that second pair. And she's even out of position for this mm -hmm. one, so it makes it even tougher. No doubt. I think a lot of Mustafa's hands are going to be high equity hands, you know, or like queens are better, so. I was asked Kitty's been in massage world for a while now. Yeah, I think she's yeah. she's gonna be coming back here pretty soon. Must I think. Must be a great massage. Yeah, no doubt. Nice action. It's, ro it's, ro <laughs> it's Rose though. That's Rose. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I've heard stories. <laughs> yeah. That's the the girl that knocks in love with. Yeah. Her. Yeah. I tried oh, to in love with Rose. Yeah, I tried to toss him an assist John Stockton style, yeah. but I don't think he even knows her. I think it's like just from across the room. He's a he's a across the, the room in love. Since yeah. you <laughs> exactly. since you can read Chinese, since you can read across is the that room Chinese? Uh, it does look like it's Chinese, okay. but Japanese shares the same characters in a lot of cases. But I can read some of those characters. So someone just gave us a four ninety nine dollar chat so saying, "Yeah, is a pro G." Yeah, let's go. I can at yeah. least say, "Sis, yeah, thank you so much." <laughs> 
ganz hier. Great, yeah, it was definitely a G, OG. Oh, pictures for the players. Good point. I didn't even notice that. I didn't run tracker today. I mean, er Eric usually gets them, but don't know why I didn't get the pictures today for one reason or another. Yeah, I'm going to three bet here. It's so funny because he flat at King's last, you know. Let's see what we got here. OC with the best hand. Still running pretty pure tonight. Really surprised to see OFC just flat this three bet and check this flop. And he's gonna get punished here. Yao turning a queen. So, yeah, Yao missing a little bit of value there on the river. I think he could have gotten called there from OFC's jack. Yeah. Probably the first putt I remember OFC losing in a while. Yeah, loses the minimum. <laughs> OFC needling him, saying he had king queen. He likes to do that. Yeah. He likes to like make you feel like he's just like in your head. Yeah. <laughs> like outplaying you every hand. I've seen on prior streams like the commentators. Betting on how many the over under and how many lies oh, OFC he tells. Loves to lie about his hand. Yeah, and then then he'll have one stream where he just tells the truth every time, and no one <laughs> believes him. He's got to balance lying. his lying. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's like every like fourth or fifth stream he just decides he's gonna tell the truth every nice. time. Yeah, that's I funny. That. I like love that dynamic. Up. But you never know. You never know when he's gonna do it. I just like personally stop listening to him after the hands over. <laughs> just, <laughs> just avoid it all I together. I just don't want to hear Chip to say. <laughs> Yeah, that used to definitely be my approach to speech play in general was kind of what I hear other experienced players say is like, well, I don't want to give away anything, you know, like, why right. do I want to start talking in the middle of the hand and give them information? But I'm like, well, after you practice it for a while, you're going to be the only one experienced in doing it. Exactly. So you're going to get way more than you give. Exactly. I feel like it's a good idea to like go play one, two or smaller stakes and mm -hmm. just practice talking. No doubt. You know, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and look at Kitty. Coming in for a massive three bet here with aces. Just comes straight off the massage back to aces. What? Nice life. I'd say, oh, yeah. Man, those were, I need to get a massage from Rose. Come yeah. right back in and get aces right away. Well, that's how you made your big run on the classic after Christina gave you a nice little massage. That's true. Yeah, yeah I did run very good during that hour. I, don't, I think you didn't lose a flip, right? For like, I lost, I won like five flips in a row. It was yeah. insane. Oh. I'd never done anything so like that sweet. in my life. <laughs> now, OFC annoyed here yeah. he raises expecting that he's going to get to see a flop with king jack suited this is her first hand back from the massage i'm not sure yeah he's talking about the massage yeah a great fold he sniffs it out pieces it together Kitty gives him a smile, thinking maybe I just should have gone a little bit smaller. Ooh, <laughs> well, speech play. Yeah. Oh, she said he should sub. <laughs> he should sub. <laughs> She's like, that's a good idea. Love the table banter. A lot of talkers on this table. And it's a fun action-packed lineup. Very fun table. Good for entertainment value, that's for sure. Jaywin going for the ISO here. Trying to get in the mix now. Trying to make something happen. If Joe just calling with the nines. Do you, you lean towards three betting in this type of spot or are you like you like calling here? It's kind of a tricky spot. Yeah, it really is. I think versus a hijack open 
it's an ISO, really, over... Because you know you have a player behind you. Was Mustafa like, a limper? Mustafa limp. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'd lean towards three betting, I'd though. Lean towards three betting, yeah. yeah. And Mustafa cutting out the chips again. If the limper was just another straddle, like I was, let's say I was the big blind and he was the straddle, mm -hmm. then I'd probably go a little closer to flat because his is a blind range as opposed to having already entered the pot. Right. It's just so likely to call behind whatever. Right. So now you know you got to go three ways. Yeah. Like worst relative position. Yeah, and then nines become a little bit more of like a set mine as opposed to right. getting played for their immediate the, equity. What a flop here. Joe yeah. has an over pair to a board, but flops open ender. It's a pretty dynamic and wet board, two hearts. Mustafa leading right out for 650 on this board. It's really a great spot for Joe. Mm. Tough spot for Jay win oh Really God. tough spot. He's loving and hating his hand at the same time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's tough, especially with the player behind you. Joe can definitely connect with this flop. Mm -hmm. I expect he's going to have a lot of middling pairs, um, a lot of suited connector type hands. These are spots where I play really nitty. I wouldn't mind a fold here. Yeah. There's not a ton of great turn cards for his hand. Like a nine's not really the only great turn card is like a seven or a four. Yeah, um, exactly. You know, I expect like he does have Mustafa <laughs> crushed, um, but I expect Mustafa to be leading hands like seven, nine, eight, nine type type holdings. Looks like he is raising going for the ISO. And now this is going to put wow. Joe in a really brutal spot. Yeah, wow. This Representing over, over pairs after the open pre flop. Yeah, very inter interesting decision by both players, the lead and the race. What do you do here in Joe's spot? Gosh, this is a tough spot now. I think it's a good spot if you sense some weakness or hesitation from Jaywin to actually like turn your nines into a bluff. Um, they have a lot of equity against, they pretty much have equity against every hand except for 9-10, um, and you block 9-10. Mm -hmm. Even against a set, you have uh, 10 outs with this hand. True. Um, you're, you have lots of equity against an overpair. You have fold equity against an overpair. Um, I'm with you. It's got a lot of very interesting you, qualities. How it interacts with their ranges. Yeah, I think that's. Wow, a great he spot makes the to rip it Oh. In. And uh, Jay Win raising here is gonna gonna get a great result. He's gonna get the best hand out. Yeah, wow. Get heads up versus Mustafa. I mean, he couldn't have asked for more right here. Like, yeah. And uh, Jay Win seven holding up. And Joe realizing he just folded the best hand there. Yeah. And that's a tough spot because it's a tough Jay, spot for Joe. Yeah, especially representing all, you know, Jay Wynn having, having not done, doing too many, you know, opens and three betting. He limped what, queens and kings earlier, right? And so for him, mm -hmm. for him to. Yeah, I think he definitely yeah. uh, gave Jay Wynn a lot more credit there. But I do think that it's a good spot to go for it. Yeah. Another sneaky big pot right there just yeah. explodes. A little 7, 8K pot. Sick hand. Jay Wynn needed a big pot to go his way. It had been a tough night. Yeah, well played hand for, from Jay Wynn. Props for going for that raise there. Yeah, wow. The very interesting decision there, and it pays yeah. off big time. Aaron says, LFG, Jay Wynn. No doubt. Let's freaking go. Love seeing that LFG because... That reminds me of my sports idol, Mr. Tom Brady, who is going to be playing his 23rd season playoff game on Monday. Do you watch any football, Hayden? I don't follow a ton, but no. I, am a, I am a Tom Brady fan. Oh, nice. Sorry not to be. I mean, 23rd. That's, 23rd that's season, insane. dude. He's been in the playoffs <laughs> every single year except for the year that he was injured and out for the whole season. Yeah. And then his second or third season in the league, they didn't make the playoffs. So for like 20 years in a row, he's made the playoffs. Yeah. Pretty incredible. That is incredible. So we've got a hand developing here. Uh, Kim, three batting, seven five suited and cut off. Yeah, I love this. I uh, like your mixing it up. And looks like Kitty's thinking about possibly going for a four bet here. Mm. The ace jack. Yeah. She might choose a large size. I love that too, actually. I think all of these plays are good. She go, She could sticks to her large sizing. Yeah, and it's a perfect time for that, in my opinion. You're out of position and really just want folds here. Just using that ace jack is like one of the better hands that you would consider just folding. Yeah. And then turning it into a... Sweet little cold four about spot. 1260. Kim does lay down. Mm -hmm. It's tough to continue versus that sizing. And I love Kim's 
ISO right there as I opposed like the to just flatting with a 7.5. I like the 3 bet, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's sneaky hand in a 3 bet bot. Um, you can represent a lot of boards that are good for your range. And also when you do connect with the board, sometimes you can get paid, especially from a player like Yao, who might apply a lot of pressure on boards that you actually smash. No doubt, dude. You know? The no board doubt. Comes, the board comes 6-4-3, he's going to be like, well, you don't have any of that. Uh, no that's, doubt. That's, a, that's my neighborhood, not yours. Yeah. 100% with you there. So nice whenever you can win on boards that are good for your range and for your hand. Yes. <laughs> And it's just like so much more powerful that 7-5 suited whenever you have the initiative and position For as sure. opposed to just like drawing at the board. Right. Yeah. Oh, got to hear this. Just noting the, the competitive yeah. nature of men versus women there. Love it. Yeah, that's nice. Saying that women are generally emotional, but men get super emotional when they lose. For sure. So true. That is true. There's nothing worse than like getting beat by your buddy in something where you really want to win and then For you sure. just can't. I feel like women <laughs> handle like losing better in games mm. than probably men do. Yeah, sure. I'm yeah. sure that's an ego thing. Look at these stacks, like just I know. piles and piles of chips. Poker House probably stoked to get those yellows in the mix. Oh yeah. Feels like they've been going for a while here. They've got a very, very steady stream of one, two, um, 500 cap, no limit, $5 bomb pot games. Now they've been getting two five going regularly. For sure. But haven't very often been able to put those yellow chips into play. Yeah, I'd love to see it. Love to see all the variations of colors out there. Oh yeah. Big chips. Big action. This is what this is what high stakes poker is all about. No doubt. The least chips on the table are the red ones. Yeah. <laughs> Look, well, gutter for Yao. He does not have the best hand, but has a pretty dang good chance to yeah, win this pot. It's a good board for him to take it away. Mm -hmm. He's got Joe. a gut shot. Look at Joe checking the flop going for a check raise on this board. Wow. Face queen. Yeah, and Yao going nowhere. Line. Yeah, Yao's definitely going to peel. wonder if Joe is expecting to have the best hand very often after that action. He does, and he gets a great turn. Heart's a little scary, but... Definitely don't think he's going to get away. Yeah, I like the check here on the storm from Joe. Good check back from Yao. Yeah, and he's definitely going to get to showdown now. Oh, I yeah. say so. Tough river for Joe. Oh, no, I might have jinxed him there. Looks like he's going to go for a blocker. Big blocker. <laughs> yeah, betting about half pot. That's very interesting. Not sure what he's trying to accomplish there. Look at Yao, really thinking about making a move here. Yeah. He is suspicious. And I will yeah. say Yao's instincts are really good. His mm. instincts are spot on in a lot of spots. Those spots are a little tough for players like Yao because you don't know how much credit you're going to get. Right, exactly. Might get hero called. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Joe might have been... Uh, Block betting that river to uh, to call a raise. So. Yeah, I can always sense that when I feel like I've been active and people just aren't gonna buy it. They're just over yeah, holding to exactly. you. Exactly. You know, yeah. Just like, need to build up, build back your credibility. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, catch some hands in the meantime. Get paid. No doubt.
Sounds like Kitty is talking about the massage. Seems like it must have gone well. Yeah. I've got a massage from Rose. It's, she's fantastic. Yeah, guys, come on down. Yeah. If you're not coming for the action, then come down to get a massage from Rose. There's a lot of really good masseuses here, actually. Kim's going to raise it up here, 400 in the straddle over all these limps. Yeah, I love that large sizing. Yeah, she just takes it down. Punish the limpers. Yao trying to get in the mix with the Ravi. Yeah. Gave up on it. <laughs> yeah, Kim definitely not afraid of action. Loves action. I feel like the Texas poker, the model of the time, game, the time rake, um, paying for time and everything really mm -hmm. like benefits players that like to get in the mix and play more hands because you're not getting eaten up by the rake. You actually are incentivized to play more hands while you're paying for time. You know, you don't want to be paying just to sit there and fold. I'm with you, dude. Yeah. Makes sense. Which is, it's great for the action. I also think it's great for the action that chips don't come off the table. Mm. You know, when no you're, doubt. Yeah, you're paying rake in a regular game. There's 150 you know, $200 coming off the table every hour. You know, in Texas, those chips stay on the table, which is, you know, stacks get deep. I think it's just better overall for the action for everybody, really. No doubt, dude. And especially if you're thinking about guys who play in those smaller games, if they're pulling that much money off the table in the casinos, that's like a player stack yeah, every couple every of hour. hours. Yeah, hour. every, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, every hour, every couple hours, I mean. It's happening fast. For sure. So if you go there, let's say, and you play for 10 hours, well, that means like five out of the nine players on that table would have had their entire stack right. taken from the rake. So yeah, totally with you. I think that uh, one main point that I like to think about when people ask me, like, do you think it's better to um, pay rake in the casinos or, or pay time to play in a club? I'm like, well, the casinos have the option to do it either way, and they always choose the rake. So course, what does yeah. that tell you? <laughs> definitely better for the player to pay that 100%. lower fee. Yeah, I definitely think. All right, back in back in the booth. Just was in the form. We're gonna go 30 minutes overtime tonight, so you're gonna get a little uh, extra Friday night action here. For there are five two five ten twenty five stream, 30 minute overtime here on the stream and in the booth. So gonna give you guys a little more action. Got Frosty Nug Farm in the. Chat. This is also one of my favorite screen names. No innuendo intended. Staying at the hundred viewer mark again. Thank you to again our biggest stream here, at Poker House. This is a pretty crazy little bluff right here by OFC. Yeah. Turns the 5-4 offsuit into a bluff. Shows it. Yeah, and gets two ace highs to fold. Love it. Yeah, steals, I mean, he has like no equity there <laughs> and steals all of it. That's what makes OFC tough. He doesn't give up even on the small pots. He goes after it. And no pot is small at these stakes. Yeah, as far exactly. As the dollar amount goes. All these little pots add up. It's also good for your image when you take down a lot of pots. It helps you get paid off in the bigger pots. <laughs> Just ran the math. There's almost 100K at the table. If I did the math right now. Wow. 18, 22, wow. 36. That is crazy. That is wild. 61, 60. 
97. I mean, that shot right there into that corner with those three or four huge stacks. Yeah. Look at that right there. Pretty sick. Yeah, that looks good. Ooh, OFC. Sick turn for OFC. Yeah, it's been a good night, and he turns the goods again. Fortunately for him, nobody has anything. But this is where bluffing in that last hand might pay off in his favor. He does just check all turn. See what he's going to do sizing wise. Trying to give Yao the maximum amount of rope here. Yeah, he's just checked it all the way down here, Eddie. So he's okay. hoping to give Yao an opportunity to go after it one more time. And if he could see Yao's cards, he would know that he picked the perfect. Yeah, and, he, oh. and OFC knows his man. There it is. He gets him $500. He's going to sit and think for a second about how much he wants to raise to. And then since we can see the cards, I think we can assume that Yao's going to get away from it after that. And OFC is going to win himself a nice little pot that could have been much smaller had he have just gone after it. Great timing on the slow play. Is Kitty, is she from Taiwan or China? She's from Taiwan. Okay. And OFC going for the maximum huge raise here. Yeah. I really like this because he's really targeting a jack. Yeah. You know. I like it too. Yeah. Shows a jack. jack. Yeah. He knows if Yao is a jack, he's going to have a tough time getting away from yeah. there. So I like the sizing. Yeah, me too. Probably targeting his player there too. Knowing Yao right. is not going to want to fold trips. For sure, yeah. Knowing he might have had a tough night tonight and not be in the mood to get away from a big spot like that. Yeah. Kitty ripping into a story there. <laughs> Looks excited about that one. <laughs> what story? I don't know what she was saying, but she was excited about telling it. Oh, she might be talking about taking Frankie out. I need to turn, uh -huh. turn us down. <laughs> wow, Kitty needling Frankie. <laughs> Saying she normally would order half the menu, but had to cut it down to be nice to the kid. <laughs> Frankie's Frank like, looking, dang, I'm getting burned right now. Yeah, dude, he looks a little sheepish. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we had the cameras where I could like come in and zoom in on his zoom face. Zoom in on Frankie's face. Yeah. She's like, take me on a date. She's gonna go to the most expensive <laughs> yeah. steakhouse. She orders that order night. everything. <laughs> that would be so gangster. <laughs> oh my gosh. He's like, you know that twenty five fifty was a shot take, right? <laughs> <laughs> Like Frankie needs to sell action for his dinner date. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. Oh boy, that's good. Maybe get like Just five minutes up, on. Set, uh, set up a GoFundMe. <laughs> <laughs> you like five minutes of FaceTime for, yeah. for your action. <laughs> get to get. Look at this, yeah. <laughs> Playing seven two suited. What a flop for yeah. <laughs> yeah. Flops yeah. open ender with a flush draw. Flush draw and <laughs> oh go flopping two pair. What a hand. Yeah, and these guys got seven thousand dollars. I'm sorry, nine thousand dollars in Joe's stack. There's no world where I see Yao fulling. How's Joe going to proceed here? He just, just calls. calls. <laughs> Yao, following through on this turn. Yeah. 
interested to see what Joe's going to do here. They are very deep. And Yao was a pre-flop raiser. He just min-raised to 100 over Joe's limp. And Joe led at the flop, and Yao raised to 600. Joe just calling the raise and now checking the turn. Face really interesting decision here. I mean, I can't imagine Joe's going to fold on the second bet here, knowing Yao's reputation. Right, I exactly. I don't think he's folding. I think he's think just considering whether or not he wants to raise. Yeah, sure. Um, This could be. And he laid Whoa! Down. Whoa! An enormous wow. fold. An enormous fold right there. That what is. What a lay down. I mean, that's a tough spot there. That's me. And Joe is a PLO player, so maybe he's just not as accustomed to the ranges and hold them. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, Not Kim. Kim made me ask you guys first because that one time we went into overtime, we I, oh, we nice. didn't ask permission. Oh, well, good. we appreciate that, Kim. Appreciate it. Don't mind going a little longer <laughs> here in the booth. We're having a good time. Having a good time, sweating the action. Such a game, great game. <laughs> She's right though. Kim going for the ISO here. <laughs> I like this play. Biggie, the, the game is not over real time. We got about 15 minutes. Kitty going for another very large three bet with Ace Jack suited. Yeah. <laughs> Kim folded. <laughs> Kim getting punished. <laughs> yeah, doesn't want to get. Doesn't want to get tangled up with Kitty in those spots. <clears throat> Both of these cold four bets were her in the blinds as well with Kim being the in position isolator. Yeah. Having cold calling ranges out of the blinds is tough though. For sure. <laughs> so someone don't hit me one guy. I think Kitty came back from the massage feeling like a new woman. Yeah, she apparently. Got some energy. <laughs> Bring in the table chat. I think Kim just called there. Yeah, she did limp under the gun yeah. with the nines. Hijack under the gun. Continuing the limping strategy. Yeah. And uh, Yao is going to bump it up here with the jack 10. It's funny because you... You know, you, you hear don't. Okay, she's talking to me right now. I think, <laughs> I think Kim and Joe are both likely to call here. Kind of surprised Kim didn't think about going for a three bet here. Yeah, it's a little awkward. I mean, Yao is such an active opener. For sure. Mine's yeah. is pretty strong. Joe's got to also be like, yeah, also to like in, in his hand as well. Yeah, and you can make him fold. Take position on Yao. It is a little scary if Yao decides to come back over the top, but I think he's going to give her some respect for the limp, limp three bet. But he did call off seven deuce suited earlier. Turner. Well, I want him to call. I just don't want him to re-raise again. <laughs> Good lay down there from Joe. Mm-hmm. Oh, Brutal turn there wow. for Kim. Yeah, and a good sizing from Yao to get called again by this hand. Specifically targeting a hand like it's nines and Mason. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point, Eddie. That does make up the majority of the hands that you're going after again. Yeah. 
Wow, and Kim goes with the raise. This play, very interesting. I love the idea that, okay, this is about how much money I want to put into the pot mm -hmm. between the turn and the river, so I'm just going to dictate it myself. Allow Yao to just call here and then check it back on the river. I'm assuming that's what Kim is thinking. Yeah, you punish him for betting it, you know, his overcard hands, and you get yourself to showdown on the river, so you kind of accomplish mm -hmm. multiple things here. Yeah, and you give him enough of a price that he might sometimes decide to float light, too. Exactly. Oh, wow. What a river here. Yeah. And Kim did set herself up perfectly for this to go check, check. She gets to realize all of her equity and see Yao's cards at the end. A lot accomplished from that small turn raise. Brutal ripper for here. Is Yao thinking about leading? Yeah, and that's a tough thing about making that play, too, is if you got an unpredictable player who might turn the tables on you and not allow you to check back on the end. Yeah. Makes it a little bit less viable, because that's part of what you're buying is right. your showdown. And that's a tough river for Kim. I think that I think she would have gotten a showdown a lot, but this river, Yao, realizing that Kim probably doesn't have a seven, mm -hmm. and thinking her range might be more towards like these middling pairs. Right. So and he just wants to lead and get yeah, value from it. Concerned, she's gonna check back, so he just he's deciding if he wants to lead for value. Yeah, and her check call or her limp call range almost never has over pairs to this board. Yeah, this bet looks very value heavy. <laughs> yeah, interesting spot for Kim. Yao can still have the over pairs, but we also know he's very, very active, diluting that range. Yeah. Could have a seven. Just because he plays crazy doesn't mean that he couldn't have a seven sometimes. For sure. And then bluffs, like, what are we kind of hoping he has here? Our nines kind of block the straight, yeah, she, she straight blocks bluffs. Nine, eight, you know, nine, six, track nine. Yeah, exactly. But it is Yao. It is Yao. <laughs> it's 3,000. There's 10K out there, guys. She's getting better than three to one to make this call. Is Yao bluffing 25% of the time here? Yeah. I don't know. It's a tough one. Captain Underpair is asking, is there another sick Kim bluff coming? Is she going to turn her nines into an epic three-bet shove? I just don't or think she has enough be behind to get yeah. a tenner and overpair off, given this board. And she is going to make she the, call the call for spot here. Nice hand for Yao. Wow, and Yao needed that. He was stuck big earlier. Wow. But has made quite the comeback. He is now stuck only $1,000, guys, and he's got a 23K stack. I'm going to go ahead and pull up those stacks. So we can see what we're working with here. OFC and Yao both over 20K now. Dude, we could see a $40,000 pot on the stream. For sure. <laughs> could easily see a 20k pot as five out of our eight players all with ten thousand dollars in chips or more Whew. we still got 30 minutes to go here guys we might see I, we might have already seen the largest pot in the history of our stream tonight i'm not 100 yeah. percent sure about that but we could still have a chance to break it by double can definitely break it going into overtime here overtime Glad you guys have been along for the ride. We are still floating up over that 100 viewer mark. Love having y'all here with us. Keep participating in the chat. Seeing a lot of points gambling going on. You guys are degens. Can't even keep from gambling while you're watching your gambling. My guess is some of you are also gambling while you're doing it. Gambling? <laughs> gambling. <laughs> We are three levels deep of gambleception. <laughs> <laughs> Got a little PLO flip here to break the action up. What a flop for Joe. Two pair, flush draw. I think he's going to scoop this one. He's the only one with the clubs. 
He's got him all drawing dead, dude. How do you yeah. do that? Yeah, no, he's got the two pairs. Um, yeah, no. Oh, Kim's got a seven, but she does not have a full house. Man, so Joe gonna that is incredible, actually. You have a oh. 10 high flush when a jack high, king high, and ace high flush are all available. You've got nine players or eight players that all have four cards, and you got all of them drawing dead. Yeah. That is crazy. <laughs> hard to do. <laughs> That's sure. hard to do. <laughs> Steven wanting some plus minuses. Let's get it. I'll flash those stacks up one more time for you guys. Take a look there. There you go, Steven. And then we are going to switch over here to winnings. What we got going on? Got some floating around the midpoints again as our chips have slid back and forth. Yeah, for sure. OFC, our huge winner. J win. Stuck 9K and... Also had a couple of players who have left us that were stuck as well. Oopsie, staying on top. Frankie very quietly up five, 5,200. One pot, that's yeah, all you one need. One pot, that's all it takes. <laughs> that's yeah. all it takes, In boys. In a game like this, that's all it takes. No that's doubt. Sure. And if he gets one more, it would be a night of epic proportions. Yeah. You go from 5K to 25K, bang, bang, happens fast. An OFC. Raising a 500 under the gun here with Ace Queen suited. Going for the max. Yeah, what's Kitty gonna do? Look at here? Joe picking up the jacks. She's gonna call. Yeah, Joe's got 8K. Is I'm, what? No, 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 no. He no. lays down the jacks? No, what just happened? Wow, Joe's really locking it up. Oh my goodness. I'm so surprised to see that right there. That's wow. You might be feeling good about it after this. Is Yao is that a call or? Oh, I thought I saw some color in there. Call yeah, Yao calls and Kim's, Kim's gonna, gonna call. Sevens. Man, Joe is gonna be sick if a Jack comes out here on the flop. I mean, if you're not gonna re-raise, I can't believe it didn't at least call. <laughs> <laughs> Scared of OFC's five X under the gun raise. Yeah, I mean, he does have a big hand. Maybe Joe thinking. No, oh, good fold. <laughs> Yep. Maybe he's thinking, I thought this was going to be a 10-25 game, not a 5,100 yeah. game. <laughs> We've only got 80 blinds. <laughs> 8K stack. <coughs> Great board for OFC to see bet. Yeah, As I think he's, he's just going to take this one down. Bang, bang. Little $3,000 pot. Nice amp for OFC. Continues running good. This guy can't lose. Man, so much color in those pots. Cannot lose. And Joe's just wondering, like, look at Joe. He's just like, what did you yeah. have? <laughs> Do you know what I just folded? Joe doesn't want to say what he just folded. <laughs> he must have had the soul read as the, the queen did come out on the board. Yeah. I bet Joe wondering what we're thinking here in the booth. Did those guys notice I just folded jacks? <laughs> <laughs> are they saying anything? <laughs> we are, Joe. We saw you. <laughs> you guys cut that out. <laughs> oh, boy. Got to needle you just a little bit. I know the stacks are big. Game is big. But you know, too, that two jacks is a good hand. Yes. Mr. Joe. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the fourth best hand you could get. Yeah. Fourth best hand. Did you pull up uh, the the stats or not yet? Uh, we did winnings and stack size. Okay. I haven't done the deep in a little gotcha. while. No problem. Just go back to the chat. Make sure Eric was good out there. I feel like the V pip and the PFR don't change that much after you've played 70, 80 hands. Right. Good for B roll time though. Yep. Got a limp from OFC. He is really mixing up the play tonight. Ace 10 off doesn't quite make it into my limp three betting them. range very often, Hayden. But Does it make it into your limp calling range? No, I just no, fold it. Just fold it, yeah. From you, you won, you two. Okay. And yeah. then mostly once I start playing it, it's just a raise trying to then steal position. Right. Isolate the blinds. I like that. I like that thought process. I've tried mixing those in more just to have them as limp squeeze candidates. Yeah. Just doesn't feel like you get the spot quite often enough to be worth it. Right. Kind of gives me the intuition that I'm losing money when I enter the pot. I don't know. 
Ace 10 suited, Ace Jack suited. Love using those as potential candidates. King Jack suited. Um, yeah. Maybe Queen 10 suited. They play well multi way and they also play well. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, play they're so dexterous. You can yeah. use them as limp calls, limp squeezes. Right. And then you're also your opponents. Like, don't give you credit for having those kinds of hands that connect with those boards. So they're going to be attacking boards that are better for their range, expecting that you can't defend them very well. Right. And actually, you're dominating them a lot. Right. They're going to be barreling mm -hmm. boards that are good for you. For sure. And Kim with the sneaky river here, rivering two pair, fives and threes. Yao might try and take a stab at this, thinking that no one really has anything here. Uh, Kim with the easy call with her two pair considering the the turn check through yeah and her opponent that's taking a stab here yeah it's gonna be a nice hand for her she might even be thinking about raising yeah it's kind of scary raising this hand against a player like Yao because he could literally have anything and you do have OFC behind mm -hmm. um, but I, I like to just call her here she's gonna drag in a nice pot yeah, I was already over it. <laughs> yeah, he got caught. He's like, I'm done with this hand. Yeah, I'm not even it. trying to save face. I got OFC behind me. <laughs> I'm just, I'm over it. <laughs> would it be against the rules for him just to muck while OFC is still in the pot? I mean, I would think so. Yeah. It is a cash game, but I mean, he's not going to get a penalty in this lineup, but yeah. they'd probably tell him not to do that. <laughs> But he's he's mentally mucked. <laughs> he's mentally. For sure, you can see him. He's, he's just like, like out of there. He's like, you got it, Kim. <laughs> Good hand. Getting like back to break even. <clears throat> A nice hand for Kim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you sucked out of me. It's A little revenge there. Yeah. Again, as we hit the tail end of the stream, final few minutes, thank you again for tuning in to our biggest game here at Poker House Dallas, Poker House Live. 5 10 25 featuring Miss Kitty. Cool. Thank you. We got Texas T Kim Stone, Bao, Jay Wynn from Austin, Mustafa, Frankie from Next Gen, OFC. Fun action packed lineup. Tune in again next week. Probably going to drop it back down to 5-5-10, five, five, but you never know. Again, three weeks ago, this was a 2-5 match stat game. <laughs> Quickly escalated. So, We're moving up. Jay, when trying to make a little comeback. Eddie, if you're wanting to impress Kitty, you could call her Xiao Mao, Xiao Mao which means kitten in Chinese. Okay, because I, I might like that. I was hoping it wasn't going to be something offensive and, like, I get slapped in the face. No, no. <laughs> it means kitty. Gotcha. Probably not a direct translation of her name, but it means like, <laughs> yeah. a, means like a baby cat kitten. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. okay. So we got Yao through betting ace queen, Kim Cole calling with the fives. And Jaywin for this price is going to come in also with Queen Jack. Do you ever do any like cold calling of three bets? Yeah. In position? Mostly just when I'm cheating on my ranges. Like, I don't. I try to avoid having cold calling ranges as much as possible, but sometimes, like Kim's spot right here, if the stack size is dictated, that's just more important than my overall game plan. Right. There's just enough money behind that if I flop a set, I'm going to win too big of a pot to fold this hand right now. Yeah. So <laughs> oh, you're look. mostly doing it with pocket pairs? Pocket pairs, yeah. Some suited connectors, possibly. Yeah, maybe, like, occasionally trapping an original opener with, like, a, like an ace-king hand or something to try and right. get him to back squeeze. <laughs> right. But mostly pairs. And what a what a flop here we have uh, Yao, flopping top pair with his ace queen. And uh, Jay Wynn flopping the nuts, and Kim floating here with the fives. Obviously with some devious intentions here, but it's not going to work out with uh, Jay Wynn flopping the nuts. Um, with this being against Yao, this pot could get pretty big. 
Depends on what line J1 wants to take here. Kind of like a raise here. I yeah. I mean, we I mean, got 11k. I it, want to start getting it in there. Yeah, right? it looks very strong, but I think against Yao, you know, if he does have ace king, ace queen sets, two pairs, mm -hmm. he's he's definitely not the type to be folding. And with Kim calling, also, you know, her hand looks fairly strong as well. I like the sizing here too. It does look very milky. But I think Yao is going to continue for this price. I don't blame him. Super clean for Jay Wen. Yes, great turn card. Yeah, now he's just thinking about what two sizings he can bet. How does he want to chop this $9,500 up to try and get Yao to call all of it? Maybe like a 35... Half pot. Yeah, 3,500 and then 6K, something yeah. like that. Yeah, I was thinking 3K, 3,500 would make sense. And he oh, tags. what are we doing? Snicky, snicky. He's trying to take advantage of Yao's aggressive image. <laughs> He's going to check shove oh. here, maybe. And Yao does not want to check back. up his stack. Frankie asking Mustafa for dating advice. <laughs> <laughs> keep, it, keep it cheap, Mustafa. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to turn up the table talk a little. Oh, there we go. Wow. So the diamond comes in. <clears throat> Yao makes trips. And it checks through on yeah. the turn. So it's going to be kind of a dicey spot now for Jay Wen, who was thinking. And the diamond comes in. He does have the queen of diamonds, though. Yeah. That's a very important card for him, at least there. 3,500? I think Yao's going to bet for value from an ace. Yeah, I think Yao's unlikely to have full houses given that he checked back the turn. Sure. Yeah. Ace king. So I like man. this. I think this this is uh, Jay Wynn's money card. Yeah. And Yao not liking it. It kind of stinks that it's a diamond for Jay Wynn, too. It's just like my hand just went so far down in value from the way I perceived it just two seconds ago. For sure. And I mean, as played, he's really at the top of his range. Wow, and, and Yao actually thinking about it here. Yeah, Yao is not feeling good about this situation. His instincts are spot on. Yeah, no doubt. He says he's putting Jaywin on 10s. Oh. Can he get away from this? It'd be tough to get away. Wow, this would be an epic fold right here. He's saying he beats Ace Jack. He's definitely reliving this line over and over again, trying to make up some hands he can beat. He does not want to fold trips. Who wants to fold trips in a 10K pot? This pot would balloon to over $14,000 if Yao makes the call here. This would, be, this would be an incredible fold here from Yao. No doubt. And you hear him running down the possibilities. He's definitely hand reading. Tens makes a lot of sense. Ace ten could also make sense. Feels like ace king and kings would probably go ahead and four bet a lot pre-flop after Kim cold calls. Yeah, I agree. We haven't really heard him mention Queen Jack. He's also unblocking diamonds too, so. He doesn't I 
Oh, there it is. He's got him in his hand. Four bumblebees. <laughs> Matt Professor saying he's got a call since his kicker plays. Oh my goodness. Wow, he is in agony. Look at Jay was like, please call, please call. Jay was like, why didn't I bet the turn? I know. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mad props to what Yao. A fold there from Yao. And, and Jay what was like, a fold. What a fold. I'm going to have to give him props for that one. Yeah, that's that's a props for Yao. That is what epic. Down. You know, you've been, make, been joking with him that he's been playing crazy, but that's a high level fold right oh, there. Yeah, that's a very high level fold. Changes gears right when he needs to. What a sick lay down by Yao. No doubt, dude. And the fact that he's stuck on the day, too, and like winning a pot like that would get him unstuck, and For he still sure. decides, nah, not this time. Yeah, max discipline there from Yao. Great lay down. Jay was like, really? You've been playing crazy all night, and you fold that hand to me? Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just didn't add up to him. I really feel like Jay one just. You've already taken the lead on the flop. Why not just keep betting to put your stack in? For sure. No need to be too fancy there, I don't think. Yeah, I think J1 potentially missing an opportunity there. I think he bets. Well, oh, he bet. Four, he bet 4K into like 6,500. Is that what he bet? Yeah. Yeah. What? I still think J1 has to be extremely surprised he didn't get paid on that river, given the action. Yeah, you could tell he's upset after when he folded. I don't know yet, Biggie. But I'm gonna I'm gonna say not quite because I would have got a signal. So I'm gonna check on that here in a second. And Yao lying. So Jay Wen saying yeah, King Ten. Yeah, he said King Ten. <laughs> That's funny. Could be a sign for Yao to read that one, though, that it took about two minutes to come up with that story. Yeah. <laughs> Jay Wynn caved. He, he admitted. Yeah, Did he? Yeah, okay. Yeah, he <laughs> like, no, I had a straight. Yeah, Yao with a nice looking hand here. Bumps it to 200. Kim snap folds the king nine offsuit in the small blind. Standard play for me, but I thought she might think about hanging around there. Yeah, the hand plays is pretty tough to play out of position. Yeah, for sure. I totally agree. Well, she's tougher and stickier than I am, I think. So she might look that one up. Good fold, though. She has OFC behind her with the ace 10 and bang, bang. Look at that yeah, flop. A flop. Surprised to see OFC not three about this hand versus Yao. Yeah, me too. Yeah, he's gonna have a very disguised, disguised hand here. Just calls. Just calls. Okay. Just to see what Kitty's gonna do. She makes a discipline fold. Yeah, there, I wow. think. Great fold. Yeah, I'll snap checking back to turn. Yeah, he after he straight. makes the straight. Yeah, really surprised to not see him bet there. And OFC thinking 
given that Yao Shikai the turn, definitely thinking his hand is good. Yeah, is Yao going to think about raising? I don't blame him. He definitely has a considerate. Mm -hmm. And he, he does, does raise. Nice. He min raises. Wow. Love the min click here. <laughs> I think we're going to see uh, OFC pay this off. Wow. Man, we have seen some crazy. And OFC says blue show one. That's a Lays fold. Wow. What a fold. What what first boss. the min raise? <laughs> oh my goodness. What a lay down from OFC. What a boss. Wow. Some above the rim plays tonight. For sure. High level poker. Man, we just cracked 120 viewers again, guys, and we are in overtime. Appreciate y'all being along for the ride. Yeah, thank you guys so much for being with us. Eddie just stepped out to see how much more we've got to go. Did you see Hayden if he said that they were still rolling? I think he just said it was the last hand. Okay. Recently, yeah. So we are nice. coming up on the end here. Yeah, 10 to 15 minutes left for you guys. So hang on tight. You can see these stack sizes up in the tens and twenty thousands. Those are real U.S. dollars. These guys are battling. And we're going to see Mustafa limping in from, they're calling it plus one. I would have to like get a, get an eye on like what these positions actually are. They're all. I think he was under the gun because there's a straddle. Mm -hmm. So I think it's the under the gun straddle and then the plus one. Yeah, and we're seven handed. Or Kitty eight -handed. coming in with the squeeze again, big sizing. King Jack suited. <laughs> and we're probably going to see Yao continue here, I'd imagine. Yeah, I wonder if he gets a little looser as we wind down towards the end of the night. Yeah, I'd be surprised to see him fold a handless strong. Mm -hmm. And he is in position. Yep. I'm interested to see if OFC is going to come along here. He definitely likes to play hands like these. Yeah. Feels like he's kind of squeezed into a tough position here. Yeah. Just one later. Go. Yeah. It's kind of Kitty and Yao. I've been impressed from everything I've seen from OFC tonight. For sure. Wow, what a flop here. Great flop for Kitty. Yao flopping the nut flush draw. And he tells him to be quiet. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I got top pair, guys. Be quiet. <laughs> Three by five. <laughs> she goes 17. Goes for a big size. Kind of charge those potential draws. Uh -huh. Yeah, try and get max value from a jack. Um, she's probably even thinking that if Yao has like an under, like a middling pair, that yeah. he, he might not give her credit for having a jack or, or an over pair. So for sure, she's really trying to get max value here. I like it a lot. Probably planning on jamming any non-spade turn. Yeah, and it's also just perfect against his actual holding here. Yeah. And given this big size, I wouldn't blame Yao at all for just uh, getting the money in on this flop. Yeah, no doubt, dude. He's doing well against over pairs. Uh, he has plenty of equity against almost every hand that she has. He, could yeah. he, he does, does just call. call. Yeah. Okay. Surprised to see that. Me too. Giving her credit. I think I want to rip it there because I don't want to face a turn for pot sure. bet. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. And what a turn for her. Now she turns diamond draw. Yeah, now this is going to be insanely awkward if she shoves. Is he? Yeah. What's he going to do? So just in case she was up against a hand like ace jack or like a sneakily play like pocket queens, she now has plenty of equity. Yeah, do you think she ever slows down and breaks her stack into two bets here because she turned all this equity? I don't think so because I think she still wants to... I don't think she wants to give spades like the correct right. price to peel. Yeah. The SPR is 0.8 right now, so it's like. Oh, look. She does. She bets 38. Whoa. Okay, which that's is strange. Really weird. Leaving her hat like 1,500. Yeah. So I think she wants to make sure that she like. Is it possible she, that's off? Because it, didn't she still have two monster green stacks behind yeah, her? Yeah, her stack could be off a little bit. I think her sizing puts like a spade draw in a difficult spot, and it also allows her to like um, <laughs> continue to get value from a worse jack. Mm -hmm. 
So she's trying to accomplish like multiple things with this bet side, right? Yeah, it's definitely interesting. I do like the idea of like breaking away from feeling like it's necessary to to bet in a way that the turn sizing is smaller than the river sizing. Right. When you're this close to your whole stack. <laughs> she says I need no. some money for a taxi. For a taxi. <laughs> <laughs> Love the table talk here. I'm pretty sure she's fine there in that area. Yeah, I thought Frankie was her taxi. Hiya. Hey. Hiya. <laughs> Chauffeur. Shout out to Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. Uber Frank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Next gen. <laughs> Shout out to Next Gen. <laughs> Showing the lady around Dallas. Yao in pain. Probably wishing he just shoved the flop so he could see this fifth card. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'd be thinking. Dang it, why didn't I just go all in when I could? Maybe she'd fold, and if she doesn't, at least I know I got a good chance. Now I'm sitting here possibly with 20, 25% equity. And yeah, now he's in a really rough spot. Yeah. Kind of interesting, too, how much he's giving away here. Yeah. That if he decides to call, she still has money behind. Right. She has to be feeling really comfortable about her hand at this point. Oh, yeah. All of this kind of makes me feel like he's going to fold. Yeah. Because if he acted like that when she was all in, okay, you know, but the fact there's still more play to go, I kind of feel like it's like posturing a little bit. Right. I'd be surprised if he folds here. I mean, he's in position. He's oh. Looks oh, like he has a nice call. Top pair no good. Mustafa <laughs> <laughs> just sticks his head in and says, top pair no good. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, and you were right, Hayden. He makes the call, and Kitty does have about, yeah, looks like the stats are right. Yep. Yeah. What a river for her. So do you think given that all this... He may, he may call here. Do you think given all this posturing that she might check this river? I don't know. It's so interesting. I, I mean, she, like, she I can't imagine has, he's going to bluff. She just really doesn't have anything left. Yeah, maybe she's just got a hope. Yeah, he's got like a pocket pair smaller than a jack. Think he's got jacks or he snap call? calls. He snap calls with the ace wow. high. Yeah. I mean, now he feels like he can chop with like some ace king or ace queen, maybe. That's true, yeah. Yeah. He's beating some hands like king queen of spades, king yeah. queen of diamonds. Um, yeah, there you go, king queen of diamonds. That's a good is, outside bet by Kitty on the turn because if she if she bet all in, I think I think Yao folds his hand. Yeah. So she made like she targeted a, the right size she exactly. She made like an extra like five thousand dollars by wow. betting thirty eight hundred on the turn versus ripping for yeah, like right? 5k. Sick. Pretty interesting. Yeah, and if she went with my idea, which was to go smaller on the turn, then she wouldn't have got called on the river. Exactly. Yeah. Or, what a bet. Wow. <laughs> Kitty's a what Jedi. Is, what, is a what do we know? What do we know in, a bo in the booth, right? <laughs> wow. Jedi Kitty. Hopefully Frankie gets some uh, poker lessons for these expensive dinners. <laughs> I think that's part of the long-term strategy. <laughs> for sure. Plus EV. Plus EV. So I was actually asked when I stepped out here to see what, what the status was. <laughs> they, they actually want to run this game back on Monday. Wow. Yeah. Two days from now, three days from yeah, now. Yeah, so game. I said I can definitely, you know, I don't know if we'll, in, either in the private room or, or streaming, and Eric and I are not doing anything. So <laughs> that would we, be epic. We could be running this back, probably going to be rotating out a couple of players at least. But you guys hit us in the chat. Let us know you want to see this lineup again on yeah, Monday. At least a majority of them. Show so. us some love. To get but 130 viewers in overtime. In overtime. Now, with that being said, 
Tune in Sunday. It's going to be 510 the next gen, boys. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And oh, then yeah, you got Bronx 510 this week. What was that? Five? Yeah, 510 this week. 510 this week. Bronx Bomber coming in town. Mm -hmm. Kitty's going to be playing that stream as well. Wow, and look at that pot with all that color yeah. in it, dude. That's so beautiful. Any um, other thing I should know about, about the any any other players? Um, I cannot remember any of the other names that were on the lineup. Let me look and see if maybe Frankie sent it out. Bow, I don't know if you heard what I said, but if we run this game back on Monday on the stream, I figured, I don't know if you want it in or not. You may want to go back and uh, watch this stream. So I don't know the answer. Pokemon, I don't know the answer to that question. You can probably text Eric. He's running all the tournaments. So again, a few more hands left. I think this is actually the last hand and then a flip. Okay, dude. We're going to have the boys. Okay, all three of them? Uh, Rosie and Frankie. Okay, Rosie and Frankie. And Jello's going to be in the booth with me, which is going to be great. This is going to be the first time that me and him have been in the booth together. We're going to have John Nock, who is normally in the booth with me, joining the game. You got Kitty. You got Bronx Bomber. We got Woodley, we got Tricky Fish, okay. and we got Hensley. So we got some repeat customers, a couple of newbies, and uh, the boys, of course. So looking forward to that one. That one's going to be a great stream as well. Yeah, it's going to be a very fun stream. It looks like Kim 3-bet here. Uh, Frankie Cole called and Jay one called as well. <laughs> Jay one's going to be in a tough spot here if Kim does. Decide to fire multiple barrels. Especially on this turn without a diamond in his hand. Yeah, Kim does slow down. Um, I think if she had a diamond in her hand, oh, she, she would gets have there. Yeah, she does mm -hmm. get here on this river. Yeah, but it's four diamonds. Four diamonds. It's just going to go. I wouldn't be surprised to see it go check check. Yeah. It's hard for her to get called by much worse. Boom. Nice, easy $1,200. Yeah, yeah J1 having a really rough night is down about 6K. I think continuing. If Yao would have made that hero call or, you know, that call with Ace King, that would have brought J1 close uh, about 1,000 down. Yeah, he's down. You want to pop those numbers up, actually? Yeah, let's do it. So let's take a look at this. There's our stacks, yeah. boys. OFC still sitting on top. He has just been kind of the the chip leader slash yep. table captain the entire night. Yeah, he's just had a steady uphill <laughs> climb the entire night. Yep. Nice performance from him. No Take doubt. Kitty and Jaywin, Texas Kim, all still sitting on huge stacks, guys. We still have 30K pots in the holster. And then there's our V-Pips. Yeah, I'll just rocking things with a 62%. I would love to just have it in me to play 60% VPIP, but. Gotta have a, yeah, it's got a lot of heart. Yeah, you gotta have a lot of heart, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You gotta have a heart and you gotta have the money that can handle the swings. Right. You play 60%, you're gonna have some monster wins and some monster losses. And tonight, yeah, stuck 12K. He was actually almost out of it. At one point, it was back to being stuck only three or 4,000, now back down 12,000. OFC up 17 grand tonight. What a night. What a night for OFC. Look at this board. Very interesting board. All club board. Not a club in sight. Jose Montez in the chat. Oh, saying OFC is God tier. Yeah. He has been tonight for sure. It feels like he's made all the right moves. I've seen him speed up and slow down several times. Yeah, I'm not afraid of the clubs out there. Four to ten, for that matter. Jay Wynn going to make the call with his open ender. Look 
for Jalen to just give up here. He does, he lets it go, and y'all gonna scoop one there. I mean, when every pot is $2,000, it just right. swings you back and forth so fast. All right, so this last minute flips, look at these PFRs and these final stats. This is the end? Yeah. That, oh, the, the that was the hand. last hand? Yeah, that was the last real hand. Let's actually, let's go take a look at these VPIPs. See, we kind of cut out, so let's take a look at that real quick. Are we going to be breaking here, or are they going to keep playing after the stream? I think they're bre they're breaking. Are they? Oh, okay, gotcha. All right, guys, checking that, down these hey, stats one more time. That's them asking me on Monday. Say it one more time. That's them. At, they want to play it on back on oh, Monday. Oh, they're trying to play Monday. Let's go. Let's, Let's go. go. Like everybody wants to play on Monday, or mo most players want to play Monday. That's sick, dude. I think I'm probably going to be back up at Choctaw on yeah. Monday. Would love to watch though. So if we're going to have if we're going to have overtime, it's going to be in the way of another stream. Me and you playing heads up. Let's go. Hayden, you want in? Three ways? Let's do it. <laughs> Sit and go style. Here's a PFR. <laughs> yeah, I'm not surprising. 30%. J1 picked up some steam towards the end with his PFR there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, I, Doug, I can't read. Come on, Dougie. <laughs> I can't <laughs> read. <laughs> We're laughing in the booth. He's a busy man. Hi, uh, oh, boy. Here we he go. go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, we're laughing just for the record. We're laughing with you. That's funny. All right, here's our cumulative wins. Oh, let's see. What a night, guys. What a night. I have really enjoyed watching this and being in the boy booth with you boys. As we peel off this last yeah, PLO flip. There's $1,600 in the middle here. They've yeah, they gone 200 a person. Yeah, 200. And let's um, see who's got a shot at this. Anyone with a jack? It's Joe. Joe fought the nuts. All right, Joe. Joe just scooped fourteen hundred dollars yeah. to end it. Nice hand, Joe. Let's go, oh, Joe. Boy. All right, guys, and I guess we are about ready to wrap this one up, huh? Yeah. Let's turn us back on here in yeah, the booth. Yeah. Pop us onto that cam. Let's do this. Let's get transitioned over, Max. Let's turn down this table chat for just a second. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Let's transition that. That's my fit. There we go. Hold on. There we go. That makes sense. All right. Oh. There. Transition. No transition. Let's go. Boys. All right. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Thank you again for tuning in the Poker House Dallas Poker House Live. First 5, 10, 25 stream here featuring Miss Kitty C Qua. <laughs> I'll, I'll get it right by Monday. <laughs> Kim Stone, OFC, Jaywin, Mustafa, Habib, Joe, and Frankie from Next Gen. I got Nick in the booth with me. Got Hayden. Final thoughts, gentlemen. Man, my final thoughts, I guess, are I can't wait for Monday. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm <laughs> More of this action. <laughs> I mean, several times tonight, we were at 5, 10, 25, 50, 100. Kind of crazy to think that the Poker House stream has come so far in such a short time right. where we were having 1-2 games and $100 tournaments turned into 2-5, turned into 5-10. Next thing you know, Kitty Kua is traveling across the country to battle in the 10-25 double straddle games. Just an epic lineup tonight. I had a great time watching it, great time commentating with you boys. Yeah, yeah me too. And uh, she wants to come back, so let's run it back on <laughs> let's Monday. Let's gonna run no it doubt, back dude. on Monday. And we got a stream tomorrow night. Uh, it's gonna be the final table. Final table uh, of the deep stack. But again, the Sunday next gen. Ten no five ten no ten twenty five five ten five ten for the boys. Five ten on Sunday. On Sunday. Uh, Bronx Bombers gonna be coming down. Kitty's gonna be playing again. A couple of the next gen guys. A couple of the other regulars from Sunday night. Monday night can look like we're going to run this back. We're going to confirm. So that's it for us here in the booth. We definitely will see you back tomorrow night and or Sunday, Monday. Thank you for tuning in. That's it for us here. All right. Good Thanks, night, guys. Everybody. See ya.